Hello friends. Welcome to Muse Fanfiction. How are you all? So in this video, we will see what if Naruto inherited the black blood and awakened the golden soul reaper bloodline. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. The sun has just set on the village hidden in the leaves, Konohagakure, it was the day of the genin selection exams. One young yellow-haired boy is in the middle of the woods trying his hardest for his makeup exam. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Shadow Clone Jutsu, screamed Naruto. Poof, a dozen clones of him came into existence, yada. Yelled Naruto. Hmm, the scroll said that these were solid clones. Better test one out to make sure so I don't fail the exam, he observed. Come here, he told one of the clones. As it walked over, Naruto suddenly charged said clone and kicked it in its face, leaving only enough time for him to see its slightly shocked face before it poofed once more out of existence. Strange, my face kind of tingles like something struck it. Maybe I'll ask Gigi about it later. Hum what should I do now? I've already mastered the jutsu, so I guess I could just rest. Murmured Naruto to himself as he sat on the ground to wait for a teacher to grade his work. About an hour later a man in black pants and shirt with a green flak jacket, his hair in a pineapple looking ponytail and a scar across his nose came into the clearing and found Naruto just napping on the ground. He steals a scroll of powerful and forbidden techniques, from the most important person in place in the village, and when I find him he's taking a nap in the middle of nowhere. He asked himself as he walked up to the young blonde. Coughing lightly into his fist, he gathered as much air into his lungs before shouting at Naruto his head somehow growing as he did so, you moron, what the hell are you doing? Naruto, scared out of his sleep was momentarily terrified, convinced that the village was under attack or something, before realizing he had company. Iruka sensei I found you, Datebeo, shouted Naruto. The now identified Iruka sighted as he pinched the bridge of his nose sighing before telling Naruto, no, I found you. Now what are you doing out here and why did you take the forbidden scroll? The blonde looked at Aruka with a rather confused expression on his face. What do you mean Aruka sensei Asked Naruto. I'm here training for the makeup exam. He said as if it were the most obvious thing in the world, like the color of the sky, or the awesomeness of ramen. He came out here to train. He's exhausted and was napping when I got here how long was he working? Wait. What? What do you mean makeup exam, Naruto? Asked the scarred man. Naruto smiled as he proudly hefted the large scroll. Mizuki sensei said that if I got this scroll from the Hokage and learned a jutsu from it, I could graduate since I failed the normal exam. That's strange. Why would Mizuki tell him that? Unless. All of a sudden the sound of shuriken and kanai being thrown reaches his ears, Naruto, get down, shouted Aruka as he tackled his student. Well done Aruka, I didn't think you had it in you, shouted someone in a tree on the edge of the clearing. He was a silver-haired man in the same outfit as Aruka, but with a pair of gigantic throwing stars on his back. Mizuki. What is the meaning of this? shouted Aruka at the silver-haired man. I've gotten rather bored here Aruka. This place has been holding me back from day one. So I found a new master, one that will give me power. All I needed was a little gift and all that I ever wanted would be mine. You're insane Mizuki. shouted Aruka, come Naruto let us leave this place and fulfill our every dream. Give me the scroll, screamed the demented silver haired man. Don't give it to him, Naruto, yelled Iruka. Cackling Mizuki simply asked, And why should he listen to you, the one who lied to and hated him all his life, hum? Do you want to know why you are hated, Naruto? Why no one loves you or ever will? Stop, Mizuki, yelled a desperate Iruka. It's because you are the nine tailed fox that attacked the village 14 years ago. It was you who killed the fourth Hokage. It was you who killed Iruka's parents. What thought Naruto, is that true? Am I just a monster? Did I kill all those people? Did I kill the Yandaimi and Iruka's parents? If that's true then I guess I deserve to be treated this way. No, he's not. Shouted Iruka, he's just a child who's had a burden no man should carry on his own thrust upon his shoulders. He is Naruto Uzumaki, shinobi of Konohagakure no Sato. Naruto then remembered all the people who made his lonely existence bearable. The Hokage, Aruka, and the family who ran his favorite ramen stand the Ichirakus, and he began to smile, thanks Aruka-sensei, I know who I am, 
I am Naruto Uzumaki, the next Hokage. Mizuki just stood there and smirked. How can you be a Hokage if you're dead? He asked as he grabbed several shuriken and kanai and threw them at Naruto. Shit. Thought Iruka as he tackled Naruto getting him out of the line of fire, thus making the kanai hit him instead and pinned him to a tree. With Iruka pinned to a tree by kanai, Mizuki wound up his one of his giant shuriken about to throw it, with Naruto watching from where Iruka knocked him down to. Say goodbye to your demon brat, Iruka. Screamed the insane Chunin, as he let fly with the shuriken. No, no, no. I can't let Iruka sensei die like this, but I'm not strong enough to beat him. Do you want power boy? What? He thought as he fell into the blackness. Inside Mindscape Naruto woke up groggily, before shortly realizing he was in a strange sewer, lying in the water. Ew. Why am I in a sewer? Wait, Iruka sensei. He started to panic slightly before realizing that before he could help his sensei, he had to find out where he was. Noticing the water was flowing like a river, he decided to go upstream to see where the source of the water was. Following the pipes, he soon came to a large chamber with an area sectioned of by gigantic metal bars closed with a paper with the kanji for seal on it. Feeling this was important, he walked up to the gate, only to jump back as a large pair of red eyes opened behind it as well as a large toothy disturbing looking grin appearing and a deep booming laugher being heard. So my warden finally graces me with his presence, said the same voice he heard in the forest. Where am I? asked Naruto. We are in your head kit. The place that represents your mind, said the voice. Why you're the fox aren't you? The Kyubi no Kitsune, asked a terrified Naruto. That I am kit. So do you want my power? asked the fox. I do want power, but not yours. I want my own power so I can protect my precious people. If it is not my own it would be a hollow victory, replied the young blonde. The Kyubi stared at Naruto for a few moments before bursting out into laughter, and saying, Good answer Kit, you're a warrior born. Tell you what. I think I'll give you a new power. Don't ask me how it works as I only understand the basics myself. So do you accept? That depends on what this power is, and what you want in return. Said Naruto, slightly suspicious of the giant fox. Once again the fox burst into laughter. This power is what I believe you mortals call a keke jenke, and all I want is a chance to see the outside world, before Naruto could protest such an arrangement. The fox cut him off and continued his speech, I don't expect you to open the doors right now or anything like that, that comes later when I eat you, right now I just want you to tear off a small part of the seal so that I can see through your eyes, smell through your nose, hear what you hear. After 14 odd years of being locked in a cage in the sewers, I've gotten rather bored. How large a part of the seal? Asked Naruto. About the size of your thumb, replied the Kyubi, an. Yes the, ripping off a part of the seal, thing is a cliché, but I don't care. Isn't a keke jenke something you get from your parents? If you're asking what I think you're asking then yes, if you have children then they could have this bloodline as well. What kind of keke jenke would I get? It is a power called black blood and it turns your blood black as well as allowing you complete control over it. Again I don't know what exactly you can do with it but I can think of a few things, such as forming weapons with it and making a type of armor are simply surrounding someone with it and crushing them to death, as well as increasing the amount of blood in your body by about triple the amount. Kayubi explained. What do you mean triple the amount? Questioned the confused blonde. The average human adult has 5 pints of blood within their body, little over a gallon, triple that and you get 15 pints, which is just shy of 4 gallons. You on the other hand are a 14 year old midget kit, so you don't even have that much. But how would I get it out of my body without cutting myself or getting hurt over and over and without killing myself due to blood loss? Asked Naruto, a little miffed about being called a midget. Well, you see when you use your powers, your skin will open up like a lid, an. Think Kimimaro, and when you're finished getting the blood you'd need, you'd simply close up without a trace, or I'd suggest you put as much into one of those sealing scrolls you mortals are so proud of as you can. As for dying from loss of blood, you'd only need the normal amount to live which means you essentially have two bodies worth of blood to go through before you enter the proverbial, danger zone. Hum. That does sound pretty awesome. All right I'll do it, Datebayo. Shouted Naruto, as he walked up to the gates. He reached up to one corner of the seal and slowly and meticulously, ripped of a piece no larger than the last digit of his thumb. All of a sudden, large amount of a red substance started to crawl towards and engulf Naruto. 
as it touched him it started to burn, and he began screaming from the pain. HMPH. Did I forget to mention this was going to hurt? Oh, how careless of me, said the fox, without a hint of remorse in his words. Naruto soon collapsed on the floor of his sewer, panting for breath as he glared at the fox. Is there anything else I should know? Hum, let's see. Well, since this isn't a dujutsu keke jenke, there are elements that combine to make it, in this case, along with whatever your natural affinity is, you now have an affinity for earth and wind. What do you mean? Asked the clueless blonde. Very well you idiot kit, I'll explain. Mortals usually have what are called affinities to certain elements, which means that using a jutsu from that element is not as taxing as another. Take you for example unless your natural affinity was already for fire. Now that you have that black blood a fire jutsu will always cost more than either an earth jutsu or a wind jutsu. Sugoi. So I have three affinities now? Asked a suddenly hyperactive Naruto. Silence. Screamed the fox, instantly getting Naruto to calm down. You might have three affinities kit, earth or wind might have already been your natural affinity. Scolded the fox, leaving a sheepish Naruto. So my blood is now black. You said I had complete control of it. How does that work? How do I control it? wondered Naruto. Yes, it is, and from my understanding, you simply have to channel chakra to your black blood and then it will bend to your will. Now I believe you have a teacher to save Kit. Aruka Sensei. Holy crap, I forgot all about him. How do I get out? How do I get out? screamed a now panicking Naruto as he ran around in circles, waving his arms around like a maniac. If you allow me to speak, I will answer you. If you wish to leave all you simply have to will it. But before you go, I don't suppose you could do something about this place could you? It is rather depressing. Said the fox. I'll do as much as I can when I have the time, promised Naruto even as he felt once again that he was falling into darkness. Real world Naruto came to just in time to see that the giant shuriken that Mizuki had let fly had moved perhaps a foot form where it had been before he had met with the fox. Thinking quickly he remembered the fox's words on how to control the blood and his idea of using it for armor, he jumped between Uruka and the shuriken, and held up a hand palm out. He then focused as much chakra as he could into the blood vessels in his forearm and hand and thought about the blood hardening. As Uruka watched in horror, and Mizuki watched in glee the shuriken got closer and closer and then struck Naruto's outstretched hand. But rather than cutting his hand off it barely cut him before it stopped. Mizuki and Aruka watched awestruck as Naruto tossed the shuriken to the side and growled at the silver-haired man. Just try to hurt Aruka sensei you piece of shit. I'll repay you anything you do to him a thousand times over. Naruto. How did you do that? Mumbled Aruka to himself. What can you do little fox? You're just a poor little abomination that needs to be put out of its misery. After I kill you I'm going to kill Aruka as well. Screamed Mizuki, cackling insanely. We'll see about that Teme. Yelled Naruto as he made a classic hand sign, Taju Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, multiple shadow clone Jutsu. A thousand Naruto's popped into existence and stared with utter hatred at Mizuki who was starting to sweat profusely. Bring it on little demon. You are nothing compared to my might. Suddenly a strange black substance came out of and covered every Naruto's cut right hand covering his arm up to the elbow. After every Naruto had his arm covered, they charged the silver haired man. One ass kicking later, a beaten and bloodied Mizuki lay on the ground as a sweaty and exhausted Naruto stood panting over him panting. He then walked over to Uruka and said, I did it, before pulling all the kanai out of his friend. Naruto can you sit down and close your eyes? Asked Uruka to a very surprised Naruto. Sure Uruka sensei, said Naruto. Soon he felt a strange weight on his head and had to resist the temptation to look. All right Naruto said Aruka causing the blonde to open his eyes. The first thing he noticed was that Aruka no longer had his Hite 8, which caused him to feel his forehead. He then started to tear up as he felt Aruka's Hite 8 on his head. Congratulations, Naruto. You passed this year's Genin selection exam, said Aruka with a proud smile towards his favorite student. He was then tackled to the ground by an ecstatic blonde blur, which was laughing merrily. Nay, Naruto, how did you do that anyways? The thing with the shuriken and your arm. Wondered the scar faced man. Oh, that's easy, Iruka sensei. It was a keke jenke that the fox gave me. You're damn right I did, said the fox, startling Naruto for a second, but he decided to worry about it later. 
Iruka wondered for a second if he had gone crazy or was sleeping, but he had always been sane and he was in too much pain to be asleep. I'm sorry. Asked a deeply confused Iruka. When Mizuki Teme threw that shuriken at you, the fox pulled me into my, um, I think he said, mindscape or something. Anyways, it asked me if I wanted power, and I told it only if it was my own power to protect my precious people, or else it would be a hollow victory. It then gave me a bloodline which allows me to freely control my blood as well as tripling the amount of blood in me. He then told me that if I didn't have it before then I have both an earth and a wind elemental affinity. It then said that I can give the ability to my kids if I had any. The new genin ecstatically explained to his sensei. Interesting Naruto. Well, now that this whole fiasco is over, how about we give the scroll back to Hokage-sama, and then go have some ramen to celebrate. Yada, ramen. Screamed the blonde while going to pick up the almost forgotten forbidden scroll. As they left for the Hokage's office neither one noticed nor cared that the Hokage's elite forces the Anbu showed up and took Mizuki away. At the Hokage's office Hiruzen Serutobi otherwise known as the Sandame Hokage, looked at the young man who he considered a grandson and his teacher as they explained the events of the night. And then Naruto picked up the scroll and we came here Hokage-sama. Finished Aruka, who was standing at attention in front of the Hokage's desk. Very well. Mizuki has been apprehended and been placed in a cell at the T&I department. As for you Naruto. I'm very proud you were able to beat Mizuki even if it was foolhardy and reckless of you. I'm going to approve Aruka's decision and make you a full genin. I'm also going to give you the mission pay for a B rank and put one on your record. Report tomorrow at the academy at 10 to receive your team assignments. But before you go, I'd like a sample of your blood so that we may run some tests on it to see what you can do. Said the Hokage. What do you mean sample Gigi, and didn't I already tell you what I can do? Asked a thoroughly confused whiskered genin. Well Naruto, some abilities have uses that can only become apparent after serious study and deliberation. I just want you to live up to your full potential. Explained the aged man. Alright Gigi, do you have something to keep the blood in? The Hokage thought for a minute before he called, Nako san After he called a young woman with purple hair and a cat mask appeared kneeling before the Hokage, and asked, What may I do for you Hokage-sama? Do you have some kind of container that we may use for a sample of Naruto's blood? Asked the Hokage. No I do not sir, but Tora is a medic, so he may have one. She replied as a man in a tiger mask appeared with a glass vial. Naruto, can you put some blood in the vial or do you need some sort of assistance? Asked Hiruzen. Thanks Gigi, but Kayubi told me how to do this, he said excitedly as he held out his left hand palm up. After about three seconds two bisecting lines appeared on his palm and the skin split and blood flowed out. The four adults in the room looked worryingly at Naruto only to see that he didn't look uncomfortable in the slightest. After an amount of blood had come out his hand closed without even so much as a scar. Fascinating, thought the Hokage and Tora. The blood then began to hover in the air in a sphere about three inches across, and Naruto started to sweat from the concentration needed to do this. The blood then began to flow into the vial. Naruto only got about three-fourths of it into the vial before his concentration broke and the rest fell onto the floor, the Hokage's desk, and Tora's gloved hand. Sorry Gigi, said Naruto as he looked at the floor and the desk where his blood had fallen, looking both mentally and physically exhausted. It's alright Naruto. Replied Hiruzen, it can be cleaned. Now how about you go home and rest? You have a big day tomorrow. But Gigi, whined Naruto, Aruka sensei promised me ramen. Smiling Aruka replied, Tell you what Naruto, I'll take you for ramen tomorrow. Right now you look dead on your feet. How about it? I'll hold you to that Aruka sensei, promised Naruto as he bid everyone goodbye, but just as he was about to leave he remembered something and turned to the Hokage much to the surprise of everyone present. Hey Gigi, is there something I should know about Cage Bunshin? Because I was testing it out and I kicked one in the face, and after it disappeared it seemed like I knew what it felt like to be kicked in the face. Everyone just looked surprised at his observation as Hiruzen decided to tell Naruto of the perks of the Cage Bunshin Jutsu. Well Naruto, the Cage Bunshin is a very special technique in that when a clone is dispelled, its memories are transferred back to the user and any other remaining clones. So anything that you the clones do you learn as well. Naruto scrunched his face up in thought, then asked, so if one of the clones memorized a book and then dispelled, I'd memorize the book as well. The others just looked surprised at his observation. 
Yes Naruto that is exactly correct, it also works with jutsu or chakra control exercises. If a clone masters something then you get the experience and you master it as well. Something that would take a 2 hours would only take one with a clone and something that takes a year would only take a month with 12. It is a great training tool and since you have such high chakra levels you could make hundreds of clones and you could master pretty much anything easily. At this point Naruto had sparkles in his eyes as he considered the possibilities of what his Gigi had said, and then he grew slightly confused, nay Gigi. What are chakra control exercises? The Hokage looked slightly exasperated and simply told Naruto that he would tell him next time Naruto came for a visit. After some grumbling on Naruto's part he left to go sleep. After Naruto had gone he turned to Tora and told him with the utmost seriousness and a tone that said, do not fuck this up. I need you to go to the hospital and have the leading hematologist run every single test imaginable twice on this sample, I don't care if he's sick with only hours to live. This power was born of the fox, and I don't want any unneeded complications. Do you understand me Tora? Hi, Hokage-sama, said Tora as he disappeared to do as the Hokage told him. After he left Hiruzen dismissed Nako, sighed and turned to Uruka, what do you think, can we trust Naruto's new powers? Uruka thought for a moment before replying, we may not be able to trust his new ability, but I place every trust imaginable in Naruto. I agree Uruka but it is better to be safe than sorry, I'm going to be putting a tail on Naruto for a while to make sure his new ability doesn't have drawbacks, said the now rather solemn Hokage. How long will this tail be on him? asked the Chunin. Hiruzen thought about it and said, until his first C rank mission. Uruka seemed to accept that and bid the Hokage good night. After he left, the Hokage swiveled his chair to face the window and sighed. It's going to be a long next few days. After Naruto had done all the things necessary to go to bed he crawled inside and just as he was about to drift into unconsciousness. Kit, we need to talk. Kit we need to talk, Mindscape. Naruto once again felt himself falling into the darkness, except this time he rather welcomed it. He again found himself in front of the cage. What do you want fur ball? Asked a tired Naruto. Screw you Kit I just wanted you to make good on your promise to fix this abysmal sewer retorted an annoyed fox demon. What do you want me to do? inquired the blonde. I don't give a damn as long as there's more green, grumbled the fox. Naruto thought for a moment and then closed his eyes. When he opened them up it was an improvement. They were now in a cave with the stalactites and stalagmites acting as the prison bars with sunlight pouring in through holes in the ceiling, which allowed moss to grow all over the place. One thing that was similar was the steady drip, drip, drip of water upon the small pools that were everywhere. All in all it was a rather beautiful place for those poetically inclined. Which sadly neither inhabitant was. What the hell is this? roared Kayubi. It's the best I could do on such short notice, and if you don't recall, I had a life or death struggle not two hours ago. I'm tired and I want to sleep. Also you said you didn't care as long as there was more green. Argued, whined Naruto pointing to the moss. The fox, realizing the blonde had a point as well as not liking his own words being used against him decided to remain quiet. So may I leave now? asked Naruto. Not yet Kit, I want to have a word with you about your conduct as a ninja. I want you to get your head in the game. Act serious, I have a reputation to uphold. What do you mean Kayubi? I do take being a ninja seriously. No you don't Kit. You treat it as if it were some big game. Well newsflash, it's not. It's a life filled with death and isolation. In your time you will have to kill and you will most likely also be killed. And before you say otherwise, look at your, Gigi. How many shinobi are his age? How many are half his age? Naruto sat there trying to think of a comeback. Listen to me and maintain my image and I will do all I can to help you, but know this. If I catch you slipping up, I will devour your soul in an instant. Do I make myself clear? Naruto after a moment's thought nodded. All right Kayubi, if you think you can help me, I will do as you say. But so help me, if you lead me down what I think is the wrong path I will not hesitate to turn around. Said Naruto to the fox, with eyes shining with determination. After a brief stare down both parties grinned, this was going to be an interesting relationship. The next day as Naruto awoke from his slumber he began to remember the events from last night. Man that was one crazy dream, he said as he began stretching. I agree with you Kit, I am too good to be true, said the Kitsune, startling Naruto enough where he fell out of bed. 
What the hell? yelled Naruto as the Kyubi laughed at him from inside his head. Wow Kit, you really are dumb as a brick, said the Kyubi ignoring the indignant, Oi, weren't you supposed to do something today? Hum, oh. I get assigned to my genin team today, shouted the ecstatic blonde ninja. As he started to get dressed he suddenly found himself flinching at the sharp reprimand coming from within his head. I swear to whichever god you believe in most that if after today you wear those disgusting orange eyesores I will follow my brother and give you such horrible nightmares you won't sleep for a month. What's wrong with my jumpsuits? shouted an indignant Naruto. They are abominations and to throw them out would do a disservice to the trash. As well as they are highly impractical in the field. You might as well just hold up a gigantic sign that says, Over here come kill me. Also you don't have to say your answers out loud. While it would be funny to see the villagers reactions to you talking to yourself, I'd hate for you to be in a room for crazy people. After a little more arguing Kyubi managed to convince Naruto to give up the jumpsuits. At the academy as Naruto was walking in to get assigned to his team he nearly bumped into another person. This boy was Kiba Inazuka another graduate who had fang tattoos on his face and what to Naruto seemed like a strange obsession with dogs. Hey Dobi what are you doing here? Only the people that graduated should be here. Asked Kiba, shouting for no real reason. As Naruto was opening his mouth to respond, he listened to what Kayubi told him to do, and so he just smirked, pointed to his Hite 8, and walked past the flabbergasted dog lover. Looking around for a seat he decided to take one near the middle of the class, in an empty row, and just observed the rest of the class. After a while, twin purple and red blurs shot into the classroom, one. As they stopped just inside the door you could tell it was two young girls, one a platinum blonde, the other a pinkette. As they went off on each other about Kami knows what Kayubi decided to strike up a conversation. What kind of kunoichi has pink hair? Shut up Kayubi, Sakura Cha. Silence Kit. Why do you even like her? All she does is hit you while fawning over duck ass over there. Come on Kayubi she's not that bad, for once Kit you're right, she's worse. As they had their silent argument Uruka walked in and saw that everybody was there, so he decided to start, all teams are canon, too lazy to do anything else. Team 7 had been waiting for over an hour and they had gotten bored. Sasuke was simply brooding in a corner. Sakura was fawning over him trying to strike up a conversation, and Naruto was hovering somewhere between states of consciousness. Naruto! yelled Kayubi startling Naruto out of his semi-conscious haze. Yeah. If you're bored why don't you practice with that gift I gave you? Because I, hum, I don't know. Eh, why not? Nothing else to do. What do you have in mind? Why not simply try to make shapes out of the blood? Shrugging. Naruto held out his right hand palm up, which didn't go unnoticed by his teammates, who were wondering both what he was doing and why he was even there. To their shock, Naruto's hand suddenly split open and some kind of black substance was pouring out. Neither could really look away from the spectacle, but for rather different reasons. I think I'm gonna be sick, thought Sakura, turning a little green. How is the Dobi doing that? wondered Sasuke, finding himself interested despite his self imposed aloofness. Then the liquid began to form shapes. It first turned into a slightly lopsided sphere, then a star, then a rectangle, a heart, a pyramid, switching to seemingly random shapes at seemingly random times, though as time passed, the shapes got less defined and he was starting to struggle. Dobi what are you doing and what is that, stuff? Sasuke asked rather awkwardly. Well Teme, I'm trying to control it and as for what it is, it's my blood. He said casually as if simply remarking on the weather, though his new comrades almost threw up. What the hell? Why is your blood black? I mean I've seen it before and it was red, and how the hell are you controlling it? Screeched the pink-haired Kunoichi, nearly deafening both of the males. Worse, shut up. After digging in his ear with a finger so he could hear again, he simply responded, It's my keke Jenke, I unlocked it last night. For his part he and Kayubi were holding their laughter in at their flabbergasted expressions. Sasuke was the first to come out of his stupor, and seemed to take it personally that the Dobi could have a bloodline and that he unlocked it before Sasuke himself unlocked his, so he once again retreating to a corner to brood. Sakura returned to the world of the living a few minutes later and decided not to believe him since him having a bloodline would put him somewhere near her Sasuke-kun, not at the same level, of course, but close enough. Naruto was simply content to, 
for the moment ignore his companions and focus on his new training, trying to keep his focus and make more and more complex shapes. But he could only keep his focus for at most a few minutes, and make the most basic of shapes. And then the fun of his teammates bickering over dating rights would begin again and would make it harder for him to do anything. This was the scene that Kakashi walked in on, another hour and a half later, a black haired one in a corner seeming angry for some reason, a pink haired Kunoichi, fawning all over him outrageously, and the third blonde one sitting near the windows, with a black mass hovering over his hand, forming shapes. Kakashi had been told of Naruto's new abilities, yes. But being told was one thing, seeing was another. While he was slightly intrigued, he hid it well behind his mask of indifference. Team 7. He lightly asked which apparently startled the new genin, as the brooder shot to his feet, the pink-haired one jumped so hard she fell out of her chair, and Blondie lost all concentration and the black liquid just fell to the desk. You know you're cleaning that right? Deadpanned the junin. After some mild cursing he continued with, meet me on the roof in five minutes, before vanishing in a swirl of leaves. So how about we introduce ourselves, you know likes, dislikes, plans for the future, dreams, things like that, said Kakashi lightly. Well sensei, how about you do it first and show us how it's done? Asked Sakura. Hum. All right, my name is Kakashi Hataki, I like many things, I dislike a few things, and I really don't have a dream. Now you pinky. Slightly miffed at the nickname and the lack of information Sakura said with some obvious strain in her voice. My name is Sakura Haruno, I'm the best kunoichi in the class. I like Sasuke, and hate Naruto, and my dream for the future. Well, she looked at Sasuke at this point and gave a squeal that sent a slight shiver down the spine of the three men. Pointing at Sasuke he said, you're up sunshine. Sasuke, HMPHED, and began. My name is Sasuke Uchiha and I don't have very many likes, which means I have a large number of dislikes. I don't have a dream but I do have an ambition. To kill a certain man and restore my clan. Kakashi sighed as Sakura blushed at both his ambition and how cool he was. All right Blondie, you're up, he said pointing to Naruto. Naruto paused for a moment, and then, once again following the advice of Kayubi, simply shrugged and said, Naruto Uzumaki. After a few moments of silence, Kakashi asked, Well, well what? Are you going to finish? I did, number you didn't, all you gave was your name. But isn't that the same amount of information you gave Kakashi sensei? Kakashi once again sighed, and decided to let it slide for a bit, as Sakura was berating Naruto for trying to be cooler than her Sasuke kun. So I have a brooding Avenger, an annoying fangirl, and a petty blonde. I'm screwed. Well now that we're introduced, at this point Sakura just, HMPHED, let me tell you about your next test. What do you mean Kakashi sensei? I thought we already passed our genin test, asked Sakura. Well Sakura, that was just to weed out the hopeless. This next test is to sift out those with actual potential, and has a 66% failure rate. This test will take place at training ground 7 at around 7 o'clock tomorrow, don't be late. Oh and you probably shouldn't eat breakfast or else you'll throw up. Ya nay, e. The silver-haired Junin then disappeared in a swirl of leaves with an evil chuckle, leaving the three of them with their own thoughts. HMPH, I'll no doubt pass this test. These losers probably won't and then I'll be apprenticed to a Junin and I'll get strong enough to kill him. I don't care if Naruto passes, I just want to be with my Sasuke-kun. I really hope I don't have to do all this crap again. Too many life or death struggles are bad for you. Speak for yourself. Somewhere in town walking around, Naruto was simply wondering how to pass the time. What do you think Kayubi? Well you could go shopping for clothes, or do that clone thing the decrepit old man was talking about. Hey Gigi is not a decrepit old man, Datbeo. Whatever just do something, you're boring me. Naruto then walked into a shop called, Higarashi's, considered by many to be the best place in town for ninja supplies. Hello, can I help you? Asked the girl behind the counter. Um, yeah. Can you direct me to the ninja clothing section? Not if that's what you're going to wear. It's in the back just past that rack of swords. If you need anything I'm Tenten. Naruto after grumbling about how no one appreciated the color orange, thought for a moment and just couldn't help himself. What's your name if I don't need anything? After dodging several kanai, he made it to the clothes section and started picking stuff out. 
After about 10 minutes he walked up to the counter and placed down several sets of the same outfit. Black shinobi pants, black shinobi sandals, with a dark green camo jacket, and an orange sash, he just couldn't completely give up the orange, along with a new set of kanai and shuriken. He didn't buy any shirts since the Kayubi decided that the black undershirts he usually wore would suffice. Is that all? asked Tenten. Unless you think there's something that could help me train, said Naruto. We have some weights if you'd like some. So Naruto picked some arm and leg weights as well as a vest, all of which were adjustable. Then after paying for everything, Naruto took the clothes to his apartment, changed, put on just enough weight to make it hard to move and went to go train for a bit, since it was only around noon. 2. Random training ground Naruto was wondering of what to do when Kayubi told him, why not send a clone or two to the old man and ask him for one of those exercises, and go send a couple to the library for some books. Ah, but books suck. They're boring. Hum, perhaps I phrased it wrong kit. Send about 10 clones to the library now. Although, you should probably henge them so nobody wonders why there are 10 of you at the library. Fine you stupid fox. About three hours later over 100 Naruto clones were lining up with their own separate trees, all had bruises and scratches, and all were panting. Another hundred clones were working on controlling the black blood. All the while that this was happening, the real Naruto was simply working on his body, push-ups, pull-ups, sit-ups, laps, punching and kicking a training log, and throwing kanai and shuriken. This was the scene that Aruka walked in on as he was about to take Naruto for some ramen. Wow. He only heard about it yesterday and he's already using the cage bunshin, shadow clone, to help him train. He's going to be terrifying in his prime. Hey Naruto. How about we get that ramen I promised you and you can tell me about your new sensei. Sure Aruka sensei just let me do something, he responded as he turned back to his clones. Alright, if you're almost out of chakra, dispel. The rest of you henge and go to the library and just read whatever. At this point most of the clones dispelled leaving only around 10 with the original Naruto and those at the library, giving them a massive case of memory overload and a huge headache. Ah. What the hell? Screamed the blonde. Well that's what happens when you get several weeks worth of memories in a single second. Explained Aruka. So dispel slowly next time, right? Yeah. Naruto's apartment next day. Naruto was about to leave, when Kayubi asked, Kit, why haven't you eaten anything? Well Kakashi sensei told us not to since we would puke. No, he suggested you not eat. There is a rather large difference. Besides if he is going to work you as hard as he said, then you're going to throw up regardless of whether or not you have something in your stomach, and if he's as late as he was yesterday then anything you eat now will have been mostly digested by then. I suppose you have a rather good point Kayubi. Do you think I should send some clones to the library now? Sure Kit. You should also leave a number here to practice wall walking and then ceiling walking. Training ground. Hello Sakura chan, Teme, said Naruto casually. Dobi, what are you wearing? asked Sasuke. Yeah, Naruto, stop trying to impress me. It's not going to work. Sasuke is my one and only, yelled Sakura. Why is the first thing you think when you see me doing something different is that I'm trying to impress you? Are you really that full of yourself? How could I not have noticed? Because you're a moron. Because that's the usual reason, replied Sakura smugly. Naruto shrugged, not able to deny the truth behind the words and simply said, I felt like a change. I'm a ninja now, so I should at least look the part. Whatever Dobi, new clothes or not, you're still going to fail this test. Once a loser always a loser. Naruto shrugged again and sat in the shade to work on his blood control, which with the work of his clones had increased dramatically. Three and a half hours later training ground, yo, said the silver-haired Junin. You're late. Screeched Sakura, hey, well my alarm clock was broken, he said as he pulled one out of his hip pouch which was working perfectly, and a pair of bells. Alright your job is to get these two bells from me before noon, which is an hour and a half away. If you can't get a bell in that time, you will be tied to a stump and I will eat your lunch in front of you. As Sakura and Sasuke's stomach growled, all three genin had the same thought. So that's why he didn't want us to eat, everyone noticed that Naruto's stomach hadn't growled and stared at him. Naruto, for the umpteenth time that day, shrugged and said, it was only a suggestion. You only have to get one bell. There are only two, so one of you will definitely be tied to the stump, and the person who doesn't take a bell fails. 
so at least one of you will be sent back to the academy. If you want, you can use shuriken and kanai, you won't succeed unless you're actively trying to kill me. Said the Junin much to the shock of the three genin. But, you'll be in danger. Shuriken and kanai are lethal weapons, shouted the smartest member of the team, Sakura. I highly doubt that, in fact, I'm pretty sure you're more in danger of hurting yourselves with those pointy objects than you are of hurting me, he replied cheerily. At this the three genin were seething and ready to attack the man. He let the statement hang in the air, just to get that extra juicy dose of weak killer intent from his genin. Now, begin. As he said this, all four of them jumped in different directions, with Kakashi going to the middle of the clearing. A rather nice breeze began to blow across the training field, the Junin looked towards the forest. Eh. Not bad. I can sense them of course, but they could probably hide from any Genin to low-level Chunin opponent. As he thought this he felt a presence behind him and turned to see Naruto just standing there nonchalantly. Or not. You know that you're supposed to be hiding, right? wondered the Junin. Something tells me that even if I tried to hide from you, I wouldn't be able to. I mean you are a Junin for a reason. If a Genin could sneak up on you, then you suck at your job, said the boy to the Junin. Thanks for bringing up that point Kyubi, thought the boy to his demon. No problem Kit, though I am going to have to stop spoon feeding you the answers, said the Kyubi. Oh, you caught that? asked Kakashi. There's also no way that a fresh from the Academy Genin could so much as touch you without a direct line to Lady Luck, so something else is going on. I don't know what that, something else, is, but there you go. Impressive, he figured about half of it out. I'll have to silence him before he can tell the others, thought Kakashi. As a Junin sensei, I am supposed to teach the three basic shinobi arts. Lesson 1, Taijutsu, he told Naruto as he placed one of his hands into his hip pouch. Isn't Taijutsu hand to hand combat? So why would you be reaching for a weapon? asked Naruto. A weapon? Aren't you cocky? You are nowhere near the level required for me to use a weapon on you, replied Kakashi as he pulled out an orange book with the title, Icha Icha Paradise. Um, sensei? Why do you have a book? asked the confused as all hell genin. Why, so that I can figure out what happens in the end, responded the silver haired cyclops. With this blatant disrespect, Naruto proceeded to pull out two kanai and shuriken and throw them at the man. He then pulled out another kanai and charged as Kakashi caught one of his kanai, blocked the rest of the projectiles with it, and then dropped it. When he reached the junin, Naruto quickly tried a horizontal slice to cut the man's head off, which was even more quickly ducked under. Naruto then twisted his body in order to heel kick the man, which Kakashi dodged by moving to his left. Naruto then took another swipe with the kanai only for the man to jump backwards. Naruto used the momentum for his swipe in order to spin full circle to increase the power when he threw his kanai. But no one was there. All of a sudden Sakura burst out of the bushes screaming, Naruto, behind you. At this Kakashi started saying, Tula, before getting interrupted by four black spikes shooting out of Naruto's back. Shit. He has way more control over it today than he did yesterday. Kakashi screamed in his mind. What were you saying Kakashi-sensei? Asked Naruto, before getting curb stomped into the river. Well that didn't go as planned. Thought Naruto to himself underneath the water. What the hell did you expect? You said it yourself, you wouldn't be able to lay a finger on that guy. So what am I supposed to do? Naruto thought back as he used chakra to stick to the bottom of the pond. Think about what he said, there are two bells but three of you which would be a 66% pass rate, but yesterday he said it was 9 out of 27, which is 33%. That means that either only one of each team will pass, or 3 out of 9 teams of 3 will pass. Now, what does that mean? How the hell should I know? The only thing I can think of is that we are supposed to work together. But, having only 2 bells would make it so that we would fight. Exactly Kit. What better way to defeat your enemies than to pit them against each other? You may have a point there responded the blonde as he ceased using chakra and started to swim to the surface. Did I, he drown Naruto? Was the combined thought of the three people above the water as Naruto hadn't surfaced in over a minute. All of a sudden a number of shuriken began to shoot out at Kakashi, which he simply caught. Hum, so you were simply trying to get me to lower my guard, thinking that you had drowned? Asked the man. Not really, I was just thinking, and I think I may have figured out the true nature of this test. 
Oh? And what's that? I really don't see the need to tell you, responded the whiskered Jenin as he charged the man with what appeared to be a staff made of his blood. As the two were having their conversation, a Naruto came up on Sasuke and Sakura at the same time and said the same thing. We need to work together. Whatever Dobi, I don't need dead weight, and you'll just hold me back, said Sasuke, as he went off to find a good place to fight Kakashi, leaving the clone to dispel itself. No way in hell Naruto. The only one I'll work with is Sasuke-kun, screeched Sakura as she went off into the forest to get away from another Naruto clone, who also dispelled itself. Well what do you know, he really did figure it out, thought Kakashi as he dispelled the clone that had been distracting him. What to do, what to do, what do you think Kayubi? asked Naruto from his position in a clearing. Maybe you should wait until they get their asses kicked, and then ask again, responded the fox. After having a rather pleasant discussion about which type of meat is the best, Naruto said pork while Kayubi said rabbit, they hear a scream. Looks like Sakura is out of the running, thought Naruto to the Kayubi. Probably, let's go wake her useless ass up, Kayubi commanded Naruto. Searching through the forest, Naruto felt a large flare of chakra, so Teme is fighting too ha. Huh? I'll find Sakura first and then go scrape him off the forest floor. Soon enough they come upon an unconscious Sakura, and began shaking her to get her awake. Sakura-chan, Sakura-chan, you need to get up, we need to work together. Soon enough, Sakura began to stir. As she was waking up she started to mumble and then without warning, pounced on Naruto, screaming, Sasuke-kun. After realizing what was going on, she immediately let go and slapped Naruto. Naruto, what are you doing you pervert? Stop trying to feel me up while I'm unconscious, she scolded. What did I do? I was shaking your shoulder trying to wake you up when you jumped on me, and indignant blonde shouted back. Whatev Sasuke-kun. Now look what you did, you distracted me so I would lose track of Sasuke-kun and he would die, so that you wouldn't have competition didn't you? She screeched, accused it, of him. I've heard blondes are stupid, but I guess they only hold second place when the pinkets are involved. I was trying to wake you up, Datbeo, insisted the blonde as Sakura ran off into the woods. Well that was a dud deal, he mused to himself, waiting for something to happen. Ah, Sasuke-kun is just ahead, sigh, let's go check it out Kayubi. Eh, hey, I say let them stew in their own filth. Naruto then proceeded to walk over to where he heard the voice from while arguing with the fox. When they reached the clearing, Naruto and Kayubi stared, and stared, and stared, and then burst out in hysterical laughter at the scene in front of them. 3. It's a good thing Pinky is wearing pants or duck ass would be getting one hell of a view. After Naruto had calmed down, he made a few clones to help him dig Sasuke out while they talked. Now do you believe me when I say we need to work together? asked Naruto. Whatever Dobi, I don't need you, responded Sasuke, free down to his sternum. Listen Teme, we need to work together. How many two-man teams have you ever heard of? The Sanin, the Ino Shika Cho trio, even the fourth had a team. Why would they stick us in a team of three just to tear us apart? Shouted the blonde as he dug up Sasuke's waist. Hum, I suppose Dobi. Responded Sasuke as got out of the hole after his teammate finished digging him up. Now let's wake up Sakura. After about ten minutes, the two of them succeeded in getting Sakura out of La La Land and after another five, they got her to stop crying and off Sasuke. It was at that point that Naruto explained his reasoning to Sakura. She at first didn't say anything, looked at Sasuke, nodded to herself, and attacked the blonde. What the hell are you doing? Screamed the blonde as he jumped into a tree. There's no way that Baka, Naruto, would ever think up something like that so that means you have to be Kakashi Sensei. If you're going to henge into someone you should at least act like them. She shouted as she started throwing kanai and shuriken at him. They've got a point you know, observed Kayubi, shush shut the hell up. Sakura-chan, relax, it's me, shouted Naruto as he dodged and swerved Sakura's attacks, only to be hit by a lucky shot. It was as Naruto was on the ground nursing a gash in his arm, when the bell went off. Five minutes later it was an awkward silence that the three genin potentials shared as Kakashi walked up to them, with Sakura tied to a post, Sasuke sitting there, and Naruto with his arm wrapped in bandages. What the hell was that? Kakashi near about screamed at the three of them, this was a total disaster. 
Sasuke, you decided that the others were worthless and would only bring you down, and then when Naruto was under attack, you did nothing to help him. Sakura, you did absolutely nothing but try to suck up to Sasuke, and Naruto, you tried to do everything by yourself. Naruto did figure out the test, but I need to see actual teamwork, not just talk. Let me ask you something, do you think this is a game? You make me ashamed to be called Shinobi. If I had my way, you would be dropped from the program, but I'll give you one more shot, and that's it. Eat your lunches, but Sakura doesn't get any. And with that the man left the three of them with an awkward silence. So what now? Asked Sakura. Here, Sakura-chan, I ate breakfast so I shouldn't be too affected by not eating, and we all need our strength. Responded the blonde as he held out his bento. Here. Sasuke said suddenly as he too offered some of his bento box to Sakura, saying, we can all share, that way we all get to eat some food. And besides, what better way to show teamwork than to feed a starving comrade. As the two males were taking turns feeding the girl, a huge cloud of smoke poofed into existence and out of it Kakashi appeared. You 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 you, he screamed effectively making the three genin crap themselves. You. Pass. Three. Kakashi finished with a smile, getting a WTF face from all of them. Huh? Was the combined intelligent response, you pass. You are the first to disobey me and feed their comrade, and a true ninja must see underneath the underneath. Said the silver-haired man as he walked to the stone in front of the posts. This stone has a list of heroes. It is a list of those who lost their lives in the line of duty. The names of all my friends are on this stone. Remember, those who disobey the rules are trash but those who don't care about and abandon their comrades are lower than that. As he was talking, the three children were hanging on every word like a lifeline. He's awesome. Now that concludes the training for today. Meet me here at 7 am, tomorrow we begin our duties as team 7. The Junin shouted as he gave the three a thumbs up. Yeah, screamed Sakura and Naruto. Hokage's office one month later. The past month became rather routine for Naruto. Wake up. Send several shadow clones to library, train with other shadow clones in control, meet up with team, do teamwork exercises for a few hours, eat, do a mission, train some more, go home, eat, go to bed, sleep, wash, rinse, and repeat. Naruto once more followed the fox's advice and started pumping as much blood as he could into a pair of sealing scrolls, which led to an incident where he had to go to the hospital from lack of blood. With his exercises in control of both his chakra and blood he is now able to make rather complex shapes for longer periods of time, however the more complex the less time he can control it. The third Hokage was sitting at his desk once again reading the report on Naruto's blood sample. Subject. Naruto Uzumaki full report. This new type of blood, while exactly like normal blood in most ways, has distinct differences to normal blood. The most obvious being that it is black, for, this is due to the fact that it has several times more iron than normal red blood cells, which given the subject's control over it could make it a very versatile and deadly weapon. It also has no discernible blood type. When placed with other samples of blood, the subjects, for lack of a better word, infects the normal blood, turning it into the black blood as well, meaning that the subject could make near infinite amounts by taking the blood of others. It is unknown what would happen if it were to be placed into a living host that with the aspect of control, it could have very interesting mission aspects. However when placed with other blood with a keke jenke, 5, it reacted in an extremely violent manner, injuring several of my assistants. When the blood infects another sample, the sample becomes like the black blood in every way. Report and Hiruzen sighed as he took a draw from his pipe. I should get Naruto a physical to see how his body has acclimated to the blood. Just then, a rather scratched up Team 7 walked in carrying, 6, a struggling brown cat with a red ribbon in its hair. Capture Tora mission complete, Hokage-sama. Reported a saluting Kakashi, who coincidentally didn't have a scratch on him. Acknowledged Kakashi. I'll have your team's pay when you walk in tomorrow. Said Hiruzen as he placed the demonic feline in a cage to be delivered to its owner. Alright, so what do you want to do next? We have painting a fence, carrying groceries, cleaning up lit. Hell no Gigi. I want a real mission, something that's an actual challenge, yelled Naruto. He does have a point Hokage-sama, said Sakura, while Kakashi just looked impassive, and Sasuke, as usual, brooded. Very well Naruto, I think I have the perfect C-ranked mission for you, 
he said as he pulled out a scroll. You will be escorting your client to his home in the wave country. You will protect him from things like bandits and thieves. He then raised his voice and said, send him in. After a few moments, seven, the door opened and in came an old man with gray hair, a huge backpack, a straw hat and a bottle of sake. This is my escort. I wanted ninja not a bunch of brats, he slurred. I assure you sir that I have the utmost faith in my team, said an inwardly annoyed Kakashi. Whatever, as long as I get home safe and sound, I don't care. My name is Tazuna, bridge builder extraordinaire, he said, puffing out his chest. You leave tomorrow at 7 for your mission. Good luck. Oh and Naruto, Kakashi, stay here I have something I want to give you, said the Hokage as he held up a couple of copies of the medical report. You leave tomorrow at 7 for your mission. Good luck. Oh and Naruto, Kakashi, stay here I have something I want to give you, said the Hokage as he held up a couple of copies of the medical report. As the others left for the day, the two walked up to the Hokage's desk and accepted the files. After a few minutes of reading Kakashi put his down and simply said, well that's interesting. So does that mean that I could control people with my blood? Asked the rather nervous Genin. In theory, yes, you could also halt all the blood flow in their bodies, or simply tear it out of them in an instant. Though that would be a little gruesome, said Kakashi. After a second's thought Naruto asked, Gigi, could I ask for a favor? Oh. And what would that be? When we are done with this mission, could we head to the ruins of Uzusiogakure? The tension in the room becoming immediately palpable, the Hokage activated the privacy seals, and urgently asked, How do you know of that place? Well about two weeks ago, one of my clones came across the term while reading a book on the elemental nations. Flashback no jutsu. Man, I'm bored, grumbled one of the Naruto clones disguised as a middle-aged man while he flipped through the glossary of a random geography book he pulled off the shelf. Let's see. Oni no kuni, interesting but no shimo no kuni, don't really like the cold. Tori no kuni, too many nobles. Tasuki no kuni, never really thought of the moon, always asleep when it comes out. Sume no kuni, nah, Kiba's mom is terrifying. Hum, Uzu no kuni, hey Uzumaki, Uzu no kuni, sounds interesting. He thought as he began to once again flip through the pages. Let's see what the book has to say. Uzu no Kuni located off the coast of Hai no Kuni, and home of Uzushiogakure and the infamous Uzumaki clan, known for their vibrant red hair and powerful chakra. Also known as the village of longevity, due to its inhabitants' notoriously long lives. The shinobi of this village were also notorious for their skills in fuinjutsu, which allowed them to do things with chakra thought impossible beforehand. The village was well known for its relationship with Konohagakure with the Uzumaki being one of the three clans which helped found it along with the Senju and the Uchiha, as well as for the Uzumaki clan's relationship with the Senju clan, with the first Hokage marrying one of its members. In fact this relationship between villages led to the Uzushiogakure symbol being put on the flak jackets worn by Chunin and Junin level shinobi of Konohagakure as a symbol of trust and friendship between the villages. Unfortunately. The village was destroyed and its people if not wiped out, then scattered to the winds, during the Second Shinobi War, which has had a major impact on the world of Shinobi and Fuinjutsu, which may never be recovered. My, my clan was famous. They had an entire village. Why has nobody told me about this? Is this why I don't have a family? So the spiral is the symbol of another village huh? Hum Fuinjutsu. Maybe I should give it a shot. I wonder if I could ever visit the place where my ancestors lived. The place which could have been my home. Thought the clone as he dispelled. Flashback no Jutsu Kai, after that, I decided to learn some more about Fuinjutsu and Uzushiogakure. I've actually been able to make some stuff, but this is it. Explained Naruto as he pulled out seven small sealing scrolls, two of which had his kaketsu sealed inside, and a mass of exploding notes. Naruto, how long have you been able to make those things? Inquired the Hokage. Well the notes are really easy to make, oddly enough, but I've only been able to make the sealing scrolls for a couple of days, said the blonde. If that's so, then how did you seal your kaketsu inside those two scrolls? Asked Kakashi as he pointed to the two in question. I bought them, explained Naruto, but they were really expensive, Gama-chan, one, was almost completely dead, and I didn't really seal all that much into them, only about seven liters each. Hum. Well I don't see why I shouldn't let you go, but I also don't see why I should either. 
Tell you what, if you promise to bring back everything you find for myself and a seal master to look at, as well as giving your teammates each one of your scrolls and some of the notes then you can go. I'll also make whatever you bring back an Uzumaki clan secret so you don't have to give it to the council. I also have some scrolls on Fuinjutsu if you'd like to have them, said Hirazan. I promise, and thanks Gigi, said Naruto as he headed for the door. When he was gone the Hokage called out, Neko, and the cat-masked woman appeared. Yes Hokage-sama. What have you observed about Naruto's new ability? He seems to have a high degree of control over it as I have seen him make some very inspired shapes. I have also watched him make several different weapons such as a claw, a katana, a tanto, a scythe, and an odachi. He also made a shield, and is apparently able to make his blood harden both over and under his skin to make a form of armor with which he was able to break one of his clone's hands. He can control the blood up to 30 yards though he can't make very complex shapes at that distance. Interesting, it would appear that he has been taking his training rather seriously, I wonder how he has been doing on his tree walking. Mused the Hokage. Naruto knows how to tree walk? Asked an incredulous Kakashi. Yes, I told him how the day after he graduated. Wait, how are you unaware of his abilities? What have you been teaching them? asked the now infuriated Hokage. Um, teamwork? Kakashi timidly responded, asked, Kakashi, I'm not disparaging you as a teacher but you need to actually teach them something, shouted the Anbu. They are my students, and I will decide what to teach them. What good or fancy jutsu if you don't have the teamwork to back up your squad mates? shouted a pissed off Kakashi, angry that his competence had been called into question. So says the man who copied over a thousand, what good is teamwork if you don't have the necessary skill to back it up? Honestly he does no jutsu, and if what you're saying is true then he learned them on his own. Scrolls are teaching him more than you are, shouted the equally furious Nako. Kakashi, you need to actually teach your students more than just how to be good squad mates. After they pass the chunin exams they may never be on the same squad again, said the Hokage in an even tone. Kakashi simply huffed and left. So what jutsu did you see Naruto performing? asked Hiruzen. Well he knows a few wind techniques such as futon, daitopa, wind style, great breakthrough, and futon, yuha sho, wind style, beast wave palm, as well as a few earth jutsu such as doden, ganshoro no jutsu, earth style, earth pillar prison, and doden, doryuso, earth style, rising stone spears. Interesting. Perhaps I should get Jiraiya teach Naruto a few things if Kakashi doesn't. Like what? A few more shadow clone techniques like Shuriken Cage Bunshin, Shuriken Shadow Clone, Kanai Cage Bunshin, Kanai Shadow Clone, and Bunshin Debakuha, Clone Great Explosion, some more seals, and how to control his tenant's chakra, responded the old man. I just hope Kakashi comes to his senses and actually decides to teach them. So do I, Nako. So do I, next day main gate 7 am. Hello to Zuna. Hey Sakura chan, Teme, I've got something for you, said Naruto as he walked up to the gate. What could you possibly have for us that would be of use Dobi, and where's your stuff? asked a skeptical Sasuke. This is going to be a long mission and I'm not letting you borrow anything. Yeah Naruto, yelled Sakura, agreeing with Sasuke for the sake of agreeing with Sasuke. Here said Naruto as he tossed them each a scroll. A scroll. Wow you want us to read. Thanks Naruto. Drawled Sakura, voice dripping with sarcasm only the biggest of morons wouldn't catch. It's a sealing scroll. Said Naruto, slightly irritated. You use it to store things so that you don't actually have to carry as much, allowing you to travel faster and without as much strain. I have a few others, one of which has all my stuff in it. Wow Naruto. Where did you get it? Asked Sakura Naruto shrugged and said, I made it. HMPH, yeah right Dobi, if you made this then it's not going to work. You probably just bought it somewhere and said you made it so you don't seem as useless, jabbed Sasuke. Yeah Naruto, shouted Sakura again. If you don't want them then give them back, said Naruto. No way Naruto, these things are valuable, shouted Sakura. They are, asked Naruto. I just thought the store where I got my first two was really overpriced. Well if you did make them you could sell them, said Sasuke. What about these? Asked Naruto, pulling out around 100 explosive tags. What the hell are you going to do with all of those? Screamed a panicking Sakura. I don't know. Set him off. Responded Naruto, 
Where? The Hokage Mountain. Sakura was now getting slightly hysterical. Do you guys want some? Asked Naruto, not really caring for the slight mental breakdown his teammate was going through. Sure, said Sakura, calming down in less than a second. Sasuke just shrugged and held out his hand after giving them each 30 tags. Naruto sat down near the gates to read one of the scrolls on Fuenjutsu the Hokage gave him. Main Gate 730, hello everyone, said Kakashi nonchalantly as he walked up to the gates. You're late, screamed Sakura. Sorry I was packing and I didn't notice the time, said Kakashi apologetically. Then you should have packed yesterday, said Naruto as Sasuke nodded. Is everybody ready to get going? asked the Junin, completely ignoring the blonde. No Kakashi sensei, I was waiting for you to show up so I could ask you to wait for a few minutes while I fed my fish. Deadpanned Naruto. Anyways do you want one? asked Naruto holding out a ceiling scroll. I don't see why not, said the silver-haired man after a moment's consideration. As he sealed his pack into the scroll, he turned to his team and client and said, All right if we leave now, we should only have to camp once and we'll be there by noon tomorrow. Sasuke, Sakura, we have an addendum to our mission. What is it Kakashi-sensei? Asked a nervous Sakura as Tazuna sweated in the background, something which did not go unnoticed by the three male shinobi. When we are finished with the mission we are going on a side trip to a place called Uzusi Hyogakure, which made Tazuna confusingly sigh with visible relief. We're going to an allied village? Asked the confused Pinket. No, we're going to its ruins. The village was destroyed in the early years of the Second Great Shinobi War. So why are we going there? Asked Sasuke finding the whole conversation pointless. Because I asked a favor of Gigi, explained Naruto. What do you mean Naruto? asked Sakura. I asked if we could go there after our mission was over with since it wouldn't be too far out of our way. Why would you want to go there? Because I want to see my home, said Naruto cryptically. What do you mean, your home, Dobi? Konoha is your home. I'll give you three guesses as to who said that. It's the village where my clan came from, said Naruto. What clan? You don't have a clan you're an orphan, said Sakura. Naruto sighed as he pulled out the book he found two weeks ago, turned to the pages on Uzu, and held it out to Sakura. As she read, with Sasuke reading over her shoulder, their faces went through several changes, not the same ones at the same time of course, confusion, shock, disbelief, disdain, anger, fear, and fascination being some of them. What? Naruto's clan helped found Konoha. Why weren't we taught this in class? If this is any indication then I seriously need to stop harassing him before he goes postal on me. HMPH, whatever. Couldn't have been that strong if they were wiped out. Well, now that that's settled, let's get on with the mission hum? Random location on the road about 5 hours later. Team 7 was on the road to Wave's border. Naruto took the lead with Sasuke, Sakura and Tazuna in the middle. Kakashi took the rear, making sure no one snuck up on them. Nay. Sensei, does Wave have shinobi or a cage like Konoha? Two, asked a curious Haruno. No Sakura. Wave is more of giant port than an actual village. They don't have a shinobi academy therefore no shinobi. Unfortunately, it also means that nuke nin tend to hide out there. Said Kakashi without a care in the world while reading his book. Sakura paled when she thought of fighting renegade ninja. Sasuke just smirked in anticipation. Only the five great nations are allowed to call their leader a cage or shadow. Ho no Kuni, the land of fire, has Konohagakure, the village hidden in the leaves, and the Hokage, or, fire shadow. Kaze no Kuni, the land of wind, has Sanagakure, the village hidden in the sand, and the Kaze cage, or, wind shadow. Kaminari no Kuni, the land of lightning, has Kumogakure, the village hidden in the clouds, and the Rakage, or, lightning shadow. Suchi no Kuni, the land of earth, has Iwagakure, the village hidden in the stones, and the Suchikage, or the, earth shadow, and finally there's Mizu no Kuni, the land of water, with Kirigakure, the village hidden in the mist, and the Mizukage, or the, water shadow, said Naruto who was also reading a book like his teacher, but it wasn't a smut one. Soon the group came across a puddle. That's weird. Why is there a puddle there? We haven't had rain in days, it's a hot dry day, and we're nowhere near a water source. Plus the ground is dry and dusty so it should be absorbed into the ground by now. 
Realizing that something must be up he looked back at Kakashi and made the slightest of motions with his head, gesturing towards the puddle. Kakashi, astounded that Naruto noticed, simply nodded his head almost imperceptibly. Let's see what you can do Blondie, suddenly two people with the scratched headbands that signified they were missing nins of Kirigakure came out of said puddle and wrapped Kakashi in an odd chain. One down, said the one with his right hand in a strange gauntlet, as they tore Kakashi to shreds. After they killed the Junin, Raidi went after Naruto as Lefty went after Tizuna and Sakura. With Naruto just as Raidi was about to impale Naruto he held up both his arms, elbows and wrists touching, forearms facing out with his palms pointing at himself, and said, Kaketsu Tate, Black Blood Shield, and with that a channels the length of his forearms opened on each of his arms spewing out black blood to make a circle that was around three feet wide and one inch thick. As Raidi's gauntlet bounced off the shield with a loud clang, Naruto put both palms on the black mass and said, Kaketsu Kusari, Black Blood Chain, making a large number of tendrils come off of it and wrapping around the missing nin. With Sakura and Tizuna with Lefty barreling down on her, she did the only thing she could think of doing and placed herself in between Tizuna and the left-handed missing nin. After she did this, Sasuke appeared out of nowhere and kicked the man in the head. As he was sent flying, the Uchiha Genin went through a series of hand seals and finished with Tiger and screamed the name of his jutsu, Katen. Gokaku no jutsu, fire style, grand fireball jutsu. After the fire died down Sasuke turned back to his companions and wondered why Sakura looked so horrified. Turning back he saw Lefty with his claw six inches away from his chest. Unable to react he could only stand there as his life flashed before his eyes. No I can't die here. I still need to revive my clan. I need to kill him. All of a sudden the attack looked to be in slow motion. As he was wondering this strange new occurrence, Kakashi came back from the apparent dead and caught Lefty in a headlock knocking the man out. Good work team. Said the cycloptic Junin. Sakura, I'm proud of you protecting the client. Naruto, I'm good work capturing Gozu. And Sasuke, it looks like you unlocked your Sharingan. Said Kakashi praising all of his students. The Dobi was able to capture one and I almost die. That's pathetic, I need to get stronger. With my new Sharingan, I can get strong enough to kill him so I guess it's not so bad a trade-off. Thought Sasuke as he glared at the missing nin writhing on the ground caught in Naruto's Kaketsu Kusari, Black Blood Chain. Kakashi Sensei? You're alive? Asked Sakura, of course Sakura. Something like that would never kill me. Said Kakashi playfully pointing at a pile of wood that signified a substitution. Three. But why pretend you weren't when those two attacked? I wanted to see who their target was, explained Kakashi. Ninjas attacking ninjas is one thing, ninjas attacking civilians is another. He said turning to Tizuna. We need to talk. As Kakashi and Tizuna were having their conversation Naruto was simply examining the prisoners. Those are some pretty interesting gauntlets, said the Kayubi. Perhaps. What about them? Why not take them? For. Why would I do that? If I want claws I'll just make them with the kaketsu. Oh. And if you're separated from it, if you're so low on chakra you can hardly stand, face it kit, you need a weapon. Isn't that what kanai and shuriken are for? They're not really weapons, more like basic tools. Very well I'll take them, said Naruto to the fox as he slipped the gauntlets off the missing nins and placed them into a ceiling scroll with the only one noticing being Kakashi. He then turned back to the others as they finished up the conversation. So what do you guys think? Asked Kakashi, we should continue the mission sensei, said Naruto. I agree with the dobi, it would look good on our records to have an A rank as a genin, said Sasuke. And I wouldn't feel right just leaving Tizuna to die, said Sakura. Well it looks like it's your lucky day Tizuna, said Ichiri Kakashi. Thank you. You have no idea what this means to me, said a relieved bridge builder. Just so you guys know, now that the Chunin level assassins failed, the nest will be stronger, possibly Junin. You will leave them to me and protect the client. Do you understand? Hi Kakashi Sensei, coursed the three Genin. Good, now let's be on our way. Shoreline as they came up to the beach, Tizuna walked up to a man in a boat and asked, Is everything ready? The man simply nodded and motioned for everyone to get into the boat. As they approached the other shore and saw the bridge, Naruto couldn't help but voice everyone's thoughts, albeit rather loudly. Damn, that's a big bridge, Datbeo. As Kakashi admonished the genin, 
The boat pulled up to the shores of Wave Country, signaling that their boat ride was over. This is where I leave you Tazuna San. Good luck. Wished the boat driver as he sailed away. Forest clearing Naruto had just mentally scarred a rabbit, when all of a sudden a huge Zanbato type blade cleaved through the air and embedded itself into a tree as Kakashi yelled for everyone to get down. Suddenly a man appeared on the handle of the blade balancing perfectly as he stared as the five people on the ground. Sharingan number Kakashi. No wonder the Demon Brothers lost. If you don't mind, I'm here to kill the old man, so just hand him over. He said as Tazuna paled. Zabuza Momochi, Demon of the Bloody Mist. Bloody Mist A. Eh? That gives me an idea. What are you doing here? He said as he pulled up his Hite 8 to reveal his Sharingan. I already get to see the Sharingan, I'm honored. I'm here to kill the old man. Said Zabuza as he and his sword disappeared, only to reappear on the surface of the water. Looks like I get to have a little fun. Kirigakir no Jutsu, hiding in the mist. All of a sudden the area was flooded with a thick white mist, with Kakashi yelling at his students to protect Tazuna and not to enter the fight. Then the voice of the demon rang out through the mist. Eight points. There are eight points on the human body which guarantee a kill. Larynx, spine, lungs, liver, jugular, subclavian artery, kidneys, and heart. Eight points and only five people. Which to choose, which to choose, said Zabuza as his killer intent flooded the area. I can't breathe, thought Sasuke as he unknowingly inched a kanai towards his own throat, so this is a real ninja. The waiting is worse than the actual confrontation. It almost makes you want to end it all just to make the feeling stop. Sasuke, relax. Said Kakashi, turning towards his student. I won't allow my comrades to die. I'll protect you with my life. Trust me. Well that's good enough for me. Said Zabuza as he stood in the middle of the group poised to strike. Shit. Thought Kakashi as he rushed Zabuza and stabbed him in the stomach, causing him to dissolve into water. Water clone. Exclaimed Kakashi, giving Naruto another great idea. You didn't think it would be that easy did you? Asked the demon sliding his own kanai into Kakashi's liver, causing him to burst into water as well as the cold edge of a kanai pressed against Zabuza's throat. It's over, said Kakashi. Zabuza just laughed as he dissolved into water with the real one appearing behind Kakashi, swinging his sword. Kakashi ducked a swing of the blade but couldn't get out of the way in time to stop himself from getting kicked into the lake. What's with this water? It's so heavy, almost as if it's crap. Suiro no jutsu, water prison jutsu, said Zabuza as he trapped Kakashi in a sphere of water, and several water clones appeared. What do we do? What do we do? screamed a frantic Sakura. We free Kakashi sensei, that's what we do. Sasuke, you get the clones, Sakura, you protect Tazuna, and I'll free Kakashi sensei, said Naruto as he unrolled two scrolls with the kanji for blood on them. Oh, what is the brat going to do? Wondered Zabuza. Fuinjutsu Kai. Kaketsu, sealing technique release. Black blood, shouted Naruto as 14 pints of blood shot out of the scrolls. What the hell? He has a bloodline. Oh, this is not good. Haku, you better come through for me here. Kaketsu Mori, black blood spear, said Naruto as the blood formed onto several lances which shot at Zabuza. Damn, thought the demon as he was forced to move to avoid getting skewered, freeing Kakashi. The blood then came back to Naruto, surrounding him in a cloud some of it forming into a pair of katanas. Hum, a swordsman. Not a lot of experience, but he's got latent talent. With Kakashi now free, he shot at Zabuza and they both used the Sweden. Swiryudan no Jutsu, Water Dragon Jutsu, another good idea, thought Naruto, on each other and then engaged in a fierce Kenjutsu battle, Zabuza with his Kabikari Bocho, and Kakashi with a Kanai. After it became obvious that neither would win, they each backed off and began performing the exact same hand seals. How is he doing this? thought Zabuza. It's like he can foretell. My every move. Right Zabuza. Taunted Kakashi. What? Can, he read my mind. You bastard. You are nothing but a monkey, copying everything I do. I am the original, the genuine article. Suddenly a spectral Zabuza appeared behind Kakashi doing the same motions as the two Junins. What? What is that? That's me, but how? Is this a genjutsu? Zabuza asked himself causing a brief moment of hesitation that allowed Kakashi to finish his jutsu. Sweden. Kaibakufu no Justu, Great Waterfall, 
then a swirling vortex appeared around Kakashi and shot at Zabuza with tremendous force, careening him into a tree, which Kakashi then pinned him to with Kanai, and landed on. How? Can you see the future? stammered the demon. Yes. And I see your death. said Kakashi. Then Zabuza's neck was suddenly pierced by a few senbon and he fell limp. What do you know? You were right. Thank you for helping me I've been hunting him for a while, said a masked person standing in a tree. After Kakashi checked that Zabuza was dead, he told the hunter, All right then. I guess our job is done here so let's go. As he put his hite aid over his eye again. Then the masked man took the body and the sword and left, something which Kakashi found strange. He wasn't able to comment on it though since he collapsed from exhaustion. Tizuna. Where's your house? Asked Sakura, about twenty minutes from here. Why? What's wrong with him? Asked a frantic bridge builder. He's exhausted and needs rest, replied Naruto as he picked up his sensei. Tizuna's house, ah! screamed Naruto and Sakura as Kakashi's eye shot open a foot from their own. Ah, my head. It feels like I went guys' night out with Van Wilder. Wait, who the hell is Van Wilder? Oh well. That hunter Nin. They took the body. Why would they do that? They're supposed to destroy it then and there. They could have been anxious around the children, but I doubt that. Also those weapons he used. Senbon. Oh crap, Zabuza's still alive isn't he? We need to up your training. Said Kakashi suddenly, catching his team off guard. What, why? Asked Naruto, because Zabuza is still alive. What? How do you know? The hunter Nin, they took the body instead of destroying it right then and there and they used Senbon, which can easily put someone into a near death state. One by itself could be a coincidence, but both at the same time is pushing it. We need to assume that Zabuza is alive and plan accordingly. Would a little training really help us? I mean you're an elite Junin and you barely beat him. Don't worry about it. Why are you trying so hard? Asked a little boy in a white hat. Inari. Give Gigi a hug. Shouted Tazuna as he threw open his arms. Hey Gigi, Inari. Say hello to the shinobi who helped me get home safe. But why Gigi? They're just gonna die soon. You little bastard. Shouted Naruto. It's true, you can't defeat Gato or his thugs, you're just gonna die. Deadpanned Inari. We're ninja boy, it'd be pretty embarrassing if we couldn't handle a couple of bandits said Kakashi as he helped Sakura and Sasuke hold back a fuming Naruto. Whatever, if you don't want to die I suggest you just leave, said Inari as he walked up the stairs to his room. Sorry about that. He's had a hard life, said Tazuna apologetically. It's alright, said Kakashi. Now, we have a big day tomorrow, so get some sleep. Next day random clearing in the woods, alright. The first thing I want to talk about is Chakra, said the silver-haired Junin. Why? asked Sasuke, we already know how to use chakra for ninjutsu and things like that. Perhaps, but you're not using it right, admonished Kakashi. What do you mean Kakashi sensei? asked Sakura. What I mean is you aren't using it efficiently. Even if you are able to release a high amount of chakra, unless you control it properly the jutsu will be weakened or not work in the first place. And by wasting energy, you won't be able to fight as long as you should be and you'll die. So what should we do? asked Sakura, learn to control it. And how do we do that? Tree climbing. Seriously. We're doing this now. Asked Naruto as he began calmly walking up a tree. How is the dobi doing that? Asked Sasuke, Chakra, my fine duck-haired friend, Chakra, said Naruto. What do you mean Naruto? Asked Sakura, you send Chakra to your feet and use it to adhere to the wood. Too much and you get blasted off, too little and you don't stick in the first place. All right then, since you already know how to do this Naruto you can do whatever you want today, said Kakashi. What? How does he already know how to do this? asked Sakura. I asked Gigi how the day we met Kakashi sensei, said Naruto. Why would he tell you? asked Sakura, because I asked. Explained Naruto, hey sensei, are we going to have to have a life or death struggle looming over the horizon before every actual lesson? Hmm, you say something? Asked Kakashi as somewhere in Konoha a man with a bowl cut and a green leotard face faulted for seemingly no reason. Kakashi sensei can you follow me? There's something I want to talk to you about, inquired Naruto. Random clearing in the woods. Let's see, 
From that battle I got the idea for three jutsu, the Kukutsu Bunshin, Back Blood Clone, the Kukutsu Kiri, Blood Mist, and the Kukutsu Ketsuryuden, Black Blood, Blood Dragon Jutsu. I've never made a jutsu before so I was wondering if you had any ideas. Explained Naruto to Kakashi. Well I would suggest you start with the clone jutsu, since you already know the non-elemental form of it. How do I do that? Wondered the blonde. Simple said Kakashi. Instead of making a clone out of nothing, you make one with the kukutsu. And how do I do that? The same way you would make any other type of clone. Perhaps I should teach you Doden Cage Bunshin first and then you can move on to making your Kukutsu clone. Said Kakashi. Thanks Kakashi Sensei. Exclaimed Naruto. But what about the other two? One at a time Naruto. One at a time. Said Kakashi as he pulled out a blank scroll and proceeded to copy down the instructions for the Jutsu. Forest clearing morning three days later. Naruto was passed out on the ground due to chakra exhaustion due to his working out his frustrations about what Inari said about him not knowing pain. After he had snapped he left to go practice his Doden Cage Bunshin, Earth's Sato clone, and could now do it effortlessly. He was about to try to use his Kukutsu instead when he collapsed. This was the scene Haku walked in on as the fake hunter Nin was looking for herbs in a pink kimono and hair down a passed out blonde not that much younger than the ice user, five with a leaf hit a eight and several small piles of mud and dirt surrounding him. As Haku knelt beside him and reached out to him, Haku thought, it would be so easy. You're going to catch cold if you sleep out here, said the young ninja, shaking Naruto awake. Naruto, still in his half-sleeping haze saw the most beautiful face that he had ever seen and with his heart pounding and his stomach feeling strange he whispered the first thing that came to his mind. Tenshi, 6. As Haku blushed, the fake hunter Nin asked, What are you doing out here? I'm training, said Naruto. Whatever for, you look strong enough already. I need to become stronger though. And why is that? So I can become the best in my village, and to make everyone acknowledge my strength, Dadbeo. Do you have someone precious to you? I have several. Why do you ask, miss? I believe fighting for someone who is precious to you can truly make you strong. And how would you know that? Asked a suddenly suspicious Naruto as he narrowed his eyes. Only years of training kept Haku from flinching at his question. Just something I've observed, said Haku nonchalantly. Hum, all right, conceded Naruto, not fully convinced. Well since you're here, can you help me pick some herbs? There for a friend of mine, asked Haku, changing the subject. All right, miss, as they picked the herbs a comfortable silence hung over them though neither really knew what to say to the other. After they picked the last of the herbs that Haku needed, Naruto said, Goodbye, I hope to see you again, and be careful times like these it's not safe to walk around alone miss. I'm sure we'll see each other again soon Naruto, oh and by the way I'm a boy. Said Haku as the disguised nin walked away. Holy crap he's hotter than Sakura. Finally found your mate kit. This one is at least acceptable. Sorry Kyubi I don't swing that way. Though I get the feeling he wasn't telling the whole truth about something. I better follow him. So using the skills that allowed him to paint the Hokage mountain in broad daylight, wearing orange, not get caught until after he was done, and then allowed him to outrun Abu, he followed Haku. Where is he going? There aren't any towns around here. Soon they both reached a dilapidated hut in the woods, which Haku entered after making sure that nobody was around. What could possibly be in there? His friend. But why would he check to see if the coast is clear? Naruto then snuck in after making a cage bunshin and ordering it to follow anyone who came out that wasn't him and found Zabuza lying in a bed with Haku standing next to it as an angry looking midget with two bandits yelled at him. What am I paying you for? You get the job done or I'll dispose of you and find someone who won't be beaten by a bunch of brats. Keep your panties on Gato I was unprepared last time. What with Sharingan Kakashi and some brat with a bloodline I've never seen before. Said Zabuza. I don't care if the Hokage himself showed up. You kill that bridge builder or our contract is finished. Screamed Gato as he walked out followed by his, samurai, bodyguards. How much longer do we have to keep working for that slime ball? He tends to look at me a little too much. Asked Haku. Until we kill the bridge builder or until something better comes up. He's keeping the hunter nin off our backs and if we kill him that'll make too much of a fuss. 
After giving a very feminine giggle, Haku asked, so which of those kids had the bloodline? That was kinda cute, thought Naruto. The blonde one, replied Zabuza, making Haku stiffen momentarily. Why, are you interested little girl? Little girl, Haku told me he was a guy. Unless she was lying to protect herself. A little bit. No, just wondering. Hum I need to report this to Kakashi Sensei. Thought Naruto as he left the shack. With the clone. Okay. Boss said to follow anyone who isn't him so I guess I'll follow the short guy. After a while the short man and his two bodyguards came to a small fortress and he followed them in thinking, who is this loser? Why would he have such a large and well defended place? Damn missing Nin, it's a good thing I never intended to pay the bastards anyways. Gato thought out loud to himself. And my men will have fun with the girl. Girl, does he mean Haku? Haku is a girl, but why would she tell me she's a guy? Unless she was protecting herself. Thought the clone. You all know your jobs right? Asked Gato to the shirtless thug. Yeah, yeah. When you go to kill Zabuza or anyone else that remains after the attack we go get to Zuna's family in order to get some leverage on him. Said the thug. Correct. I don't understand why that idiot, demon, actually thinks I'm going to pay him. So much cheaper to hire bandits, though no match for ninjas. Mused Gato. I need to tell the boss this thought the clone as it went to go find a safe place to dispel in. To Zuna's house. So let me get this straight. After you snapped at our client's grandson and made him cry. You went out into the woods alone and trained until it nearly killed you. And perfected the jutsu, then passed out, only to be awoken by a stranger. And immediately agreed to help them pick herbs, after which they told you they were a guy. Then you went into an enemy base, where you came across this same person with an alive Zabuza and Gato talking about the hit. And then you found out that this, Haku, is actually a girl while at the same time you had a clone follow Gato who revealed that when Zabuza attacked again he would have two of his thugs attack Sunai and Inari and then he would put all of us six feet under. Is that right? Have I missed anything? Asked an exasperated Cyclops. Um, no, said a sheepish Naruto. I don't know whether to be proud or worried. Both. Why not? How were you able to sneak into both Zabuza's base and Gato's fortress anyways? Asked Kakashi. I don't know I guess I'm just that good. I mean I've been sneaking past Anbu and Gigi and the various clans for years and nobody noticed beforehand. With those sneaking skills of his, and if those pranks of his are any indication, his trap making skills, I'm going to have to recommend him for special Junin or Anbu when he gets a little more experience and makes Chunin. Maybe by then he'll also be a seal master. Anyways good work Naruto, you may have won us the battle before we even started fighting. At the bridge day of the fight. Who did this to you? Tazuna frantically asked a dying worker. A demon, said the man as he passed away. Well, 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 it looks like we meet again. And all three of your brats are here. Excellent, I've been hoping for a rematch. Said Zabuza as he materialized in the mist with Haku next to him wearing her full hunter nin battle regalia. Zabuza wait, we are not your enemies. Said Kakashi. Oh and who is? Asked the swordsman. Gato is. He never planned on paying you. He's planning to wipe out the survivors after our fight to the death. And how do you know this? We have a trusted source on the inside, explained Kakashi. Hum, interesting. Well how about we give him what he wants? What do you mean? We spar a little and wait for the prick to show up with his army and then play a little game of, who's the better killer? I don't see why not, said Kakashi. So me and you. Haku and your brats. We won't go after the bridge builder since if what you say is true we have no need for him. Why don't you come with us to Konoha? Asked Naruto as he received the memories of the dozen or so clones he left to take care of Gato's bodyguards. What do you mean brat? Asked Zabuza. Why don't the two of you come to Konoha? You could teach people Kenjutsu and Haku could work at the hospital or as a shinobi with her skills. How do you know I'm female? I thought I told you I was a boy. Wondered Haku. I followed you and saw your conversation with Gato about the Hokage and stuff. Ah, after the various spars in which Kakashi defeated Zabuza once again and Sakura and Sasuke were taken down, non-lethal of course, and Naruto simply hardened his blood under his skin, 
making the needles just bounce off of him before destroying the mirrors with his Kukutsu Mori Black Blood Lance, Gato came out with his army and revealed his master plan of killing everyone there. He then noticed that no one actually looked all that hurt except for two people on the ground stuck full of needles, but he could see that they were breathing and he wondered what was going on here. Oh I already knew all that stuff, said Zabuza. What do you mean? These guys told me, now I suppose it's about time we play who's the better killer, break into your house, steal everything of value, burn the place to the ground and go on to Konoha. Actually before we go there we're going to the ruins of Uzushiogakur. Said Kakashi. Never heard of the place. Why are we going there? It was destroyed in the Second Shinobi War and it might have some of my blonde students' family scrolls and jutsus and things like that. The one with the bloodline. Yeah, but that's a different matter altogether. What do you mean? Hey, impending death, evil businessman, master plan, any of this ringing a bell? Yelled Gato. Oh yeah I forgot about him. Said Zabuza. Hum, looks like there are around 300 of them. Who's the better killer? My favorite game. The short slaughter, you couldn't really call it anything else. Except maybe Massacre consisted of Kakashi attacking a huge group of men with a few Cage Bunsen, Shadow Clones, while Zabuza and a few Mizu Bunsen, Water Clones, focused on Gato. Eventually killing him, which pissed off the bandits who started talking about killing all the men and taking the women, before a crossbow bolt hit the ground in front of them and Inari was shown to be there with around 100 of his fellow villagers, causing the bandits to cut and run before any more of them died. How many you get? asked Kakashi. 112, replied the mist demon. Damn, I only got 103. Naruto, do your thing. What do you mean Kakashi sensei? asked Naruto. Remember what your blood analysis said. Explained Kakashi as he pointed to the huge pool of blood. Oh, said an understanding blonde as he went around converting the normal blood to his kakutsu, though rather queasily as the thought was rather unsettling, which he then sealed evenly into his two scrolls. Hem we killed 215 of them, at 5 liters each that's 1075 liters, divided evenly between two scrolls, each of which already had 7 liters inside and you get 544 and a half liters inside each scroll. Nice haul Naruto, said Kakashi. Um, thanks, said the still rather green blonde. So what now Kakashi-san? Asked Haku. We protect Tazuna until the bridge is finished, during which I'll tell the Hokage about you too, then we'll go to Uzu, and see what we can find. Tazuna's house next day. Zabuza was currently keeping his promise to the late Gato and was ransacking the dead man's house for anything of value with a rather large ceiling scroll that Naruto made for him on the provision that he be given a 20% cut. After laughing at the audacity of the kid he accepted and left around noon, and he still hadn't come back yet. Naruto was talking to his sensei about what they might find in Uzu when he suddenly smelled himself and decided to take a bath. He had just opened the door, when suddenly he caught a face full of Haku clad only in a towel showing him that Haku was most definitely female. After staring at each other for a moment Haku went red as a beat and screamed. Hya, pervert, Naruto's last conscious thought of that day before he was sent into a wall by Haku's righteous fist of female fury, embarrassment was, Hya. That was kinda cute. Tazuna's house next day, what happened? Asked a bleary Naruto as he woke up propped upside down against a wall. You got knocked the fuck out, that's what happened, said Sasuke as he placed a bowl of cereal and a glass of orange juice on the floor next to Naruto. Why did that happen, asked a still slightly concussed blonde. Apparently you didn't knock on the bathroom door as Haku was taking a bath, explained Sasuke. Remembering the events of the night before, Naruto had to wipe a bit of blood from his nose as he got up to eat the breakfast Sasuke had brought him. So where is everybody? asked Naruto. Downstairs, Zabuza came back sometime last night covered in blood and drunk off his ass. A drunken demon, that's either the funniest thing you'll ever see or the most terrifying. Probably a little bit of both, said Sasuke as Naruto finished his breakfast and went downstairs for more. As he entered the kitchen both Sakura and Haku glared at him and chorused, morning pervert. After sighing and mumbling something about accidents, he got a piece of fruit from the bowl on the table and asked Zabuza, so, what did you get? A lot of money, some artifacts a few weapons, don't worry, you'll get your cut, damn brat. 
Hey Zabuza, can you teach me that hidden mist jutsu? I want to see if I can use my kukutsu instead of water. An interesting idea brat, what do I get out of it? So when will the bridge be finished? Asked Kakashi ignoring the two. In a few days now that no one is sure that Gato is going to kill us all. Said Tazuna. Good, unnamed bridge day of completion. Thank you for all your help, I couldn't have done it without you. Said Tazuna as he shook hands with all the leaf shinobi. It's no problem, said Kakashi. All right part one of this mission is done, now on to a part two, the escort of Naruto Uzumaki to the ruins of Uzushiogakure to assist in the retrieval of his clan's secrets. What? asked Sakura as Sasuke was also shocked. And Uzumaki, huh, interesting, mused Zabuza aloud. As the shinobi were walking away, Tazuna and his family and friends were watching them wondering what to name the bridge. The sexy Tazuna bridge of course, said Tazuna who was only half joking as he puffed out his chest. How about the great Naruto bridge? asked Inari. I like the sound of that, a symbol named after the man who gave us all hope for a better tomorrow. The six ninjas were tree jumping away from the country of wave when Zabuza asked the question that both he and Haku were wondering. All right then I'll bite. Why are we going to Uzu? It's to retrieve whatever we can of my clan's history and artifacts. Replied Naruto. Why would you go there now? I mean wouldn't whoever had destroyed the place have looted the place? Asked Haku. While that may have been true at the time, they didn't have an Uzumaki with them, and the village was known for its seal masters. Answered Kakashi. Where are we going then? Asked Haku. Well Haku-chan, we are going to the port nearest Uzu so we can charter passage. Said Naruto. Why don't we just water walk there? Asked Zabuza. These two don't know how. Said Naruto, indicating Sasuke and Sakura. And you do? Asked Kakashi, genuinely surprised. Yep. Said Naruto simply. Whatever Dobi, if you can do it then I can do it no problem said sasuke yeah you baka screamed sakura you deal with this every day naruto kun asked haku kun wondered everyone put the painfully oblivious blonde unfortunately said naruto with genuine emotion anyways we're here said kakashi as sakura and sasuke were glaring at naruto port town we need to find a man who will take us to uzu said kakashi as the group walked through the town Kakashi sensei, why are we going there anyways? Don't we have better things to do? Asked Sakura, who was honestly just tired of working at the moment and wanted to go home. Because Sakura, it is an order from the Hokage, beyond that, you don't need to know anything unless Naruto deems it necessary, as he is the client of this mission. Said Kakashi. What? Yelled both Sakura and Sasuke, surprised. Gigi funded this mission, but listed me as the client explained naruto since they are going there anyways i should see if there's anything of use so i can kill him it's not like the dobi should get anything if it's really important thought sasuke planning on taking whatever seemed of use for himself as if sensing this kakashi said to everyone when we get there i want every ceiling scroll but naruto's so that nobody can take what should be his everybody nodded as sasuke inwardly seethed does anybody have any ideas asked kakashi well kakashi sensei i think we should go to either a bar or the docks said naruto if you're going to be an alcoholic do it on your own time dobi insulted sasuke yeah drunky screamed sakura actually sasuke it's very easy to get information in places like bars brothels and marketplaces said kakashi as his students paled slightly as everybody waked to the closest bar kakashi asked naruto so how are you doing with those techniques you told me about? Well I've made a successful Kukutsu Bunshin, Black Blood Clone, and I've found that they are rather sturdier than my Cage Bunshin, Shadow Clone. Zabuza promised he'd teach me the Karigakur no Jutsu, hiding in the Mist Jutsu, and the Sweden. Swiryuden no Jutsu, Water Style. Water Dragon Jutsu, so that I can try and make my Kukutsu Mizu, Blood Mist, Kukutsu Ketsuryuden, Black Blood. Blood Dragon Jutsu. You got Zabuza to teach you a couple of jutsu. How and why on earth did you do that? Asked Kakashi. Well I figured it wouldn't really be good to ask you to teach me because I don't know if you know the Karigakur no jutsu, and considering it took you a month and a life or death struggle to teach us tree walking, 
I decided it wouldn't really be worth my wasted breath to ask. Said Naruto as the group entered the bar. As they went into the bar, Naruto continued to explain. As to how, I made a deal with him. A deal? What do you mean? Asked Sakura. At this Naruto smirked and Zabuza grumbled about, smartass blondes, to which Naruto responded, better a smartass than a dumbass. Before explaining, flashback no jutsu, an interesting idea brat, what do I get out of it? Asked Zabuza the night that Naruto proposed the idea. I'll reduce my cut to 15%, said Naruto. Are you kidding me? If you want those jutsu you have to do better than that. 5%, shot back the demon. I'll go to 12%. 8, 10, 8, 10, 8, 10, 8, 8, 10. 8, 8, 10. You drive a hard bargain Zabuza, all right then I'll take 10. Smirked Naruto as he shook the swordsman's hand as he tricked the man. 1. Good. Wait, what? You already agreed old man. Fine, you get a 10% cut. Complained the demon. Flashback no jutsu kai. Only you would have the stones to trick a man who's killed more people than you've had hot meals, said a slightly awestruck Kakashi. All right we should start asking around said a pissed Zabuza. Kakashi then moved to the counter and placed a bit of money on the counter. Can you give me some information? Asked the Cyclops, as the rest of the party looked on. That would depend on the information, Shinobi-san, replied the bartender, a greasy-looking man who had no hair on top of his head, but long stringy hair on the sides. He also had what looked like a stained dish rag over his right eye, and was wearing grey breeches and what was once a white tunic under a stained apron. We're looking for someone to take us to Uzu, explained the silver-haired man. Only one man who would do that. His name is Arashi, too. You can usually find him passed out on his boat at this time of day. Its name is the Blue Sun. 3, explained the bartender. Passed out. Why would he be passed out? Asked the concerned Junin. No idea since he doesn't drink said the barman as Kakashi went back to the group to go to the docks. Docks at the boat, here it is the blue sun, said Kakashi. It's a piece of shit, observed Sasuke. Well, let's go, said Haku. The group then walked up the gangplank and saw a man with snow white hair, blue canvas trousers, a gray sash and black shirt, passed out on the deck with two children standing over him, one girl, one boy, obviously twins with vibrant red hair. They both looked exactly alike except for the length of their hair, with the boys being an inch or two long and the girls being shoulder length, and their eyes, the boy having green and the girl having purple. They were dressed in all gray wearing trousers and tunics. WW who are you? Asked the girl. Hello, I am Hitaki Kakashi, this is Momochi Zabuza, and his daughter Haku. At this Zabuza raised his non-existent eyebrow, but didn't comment as Haku looked rather pleased. And these are my students, Haruno Sakura, Uchiha Sasuke, and Uzumaki Naruto. We were Hop, Aniki, screamed the two children as they tackled the blonde to the ground and proceeded to crush the life out of him in a hug. Aniki, questioned everybody but Naruto, because he couldn't breathe, and the white-haired guy since he was passed out. You said Uzumaki right, they chorused, yeah, said Kakashi as Naruto started to turn blue from the both of them hugging him. We're Uzumaki too, the twins exclaimed. This is Uzumaki Keihi, four, and he's eight years old, said the girl indicating the boy. And this is Uzumaki Asagao, five, and she's eight years old, said the now identified Keihi. And this is Arashi, they shouted together, striking a pose, gesturing towards the man which made it look as though they were showing off some sort of prize, making everyone there suspect that this was a practiced introduction. You are both Uzumakis asked Zabuza. Yeah, Arashi-san said he found us, started Keihi. When we were babies, abandoned and he raised us. Finished Asagao. Can you let go of our friend and wake Arashi up? Asked Kakashi. No, but he should be up soon. He always is, replied Asagao as they dropped Naruto unceremoniously. As if on cue, the man began to stir, oh, my head. Keihi, can you get me a glass of water? Shouted Arashi. Sure thing too San, shouted the boy as he ran off. We have guests too San, and this one is an Uzumaki. Shouted Asagao. Another one huh, mused Arashi. Excuse me Arashi San, but can we get to business? 
asked Kakashi as the others nodded. Oh, Shinobi huh, and Konoha nins too, all right then, what can I do for you? We'd like to go to the island of Uzushiogakur. Hmm, very well I was planning on taking the twins there soon anyways. I'll take you there, Asagao, Keihi, get ready to set sail. We leave in ten minutes. On the boat night, Naruto was sitting on the railing of the ship watching the full moon in the cloudless sky, listening to the waves, and feeling the gentle rock of the ship. Naruto was thinking about the next day when he was interrupted from his thoughts by a familiar voice. Are you alright Naruto-kun? He turned around and saw it was Haku. I'm alright Haku-chan, are you alright? You should get back to sleep, it's late and cold out here. Said Naruto. No, I'm fine, I was just worried about you, you didn't come to bed. Said Haku. I'm alright, said Naruto, I was just thinking. About what? Asked Haku as she sat on the rail next to him. The fact that I'm about to go home. That I'm about to go to the place where I once had a family. The fact that everything I should have known was destroyed long before I was even born. Said Naruto slightly bitterly. We are a lot alike Naruto-kun, said Haku as she unknowingly leaned her head on his shoulder. What do you mean Haku-chan? Asked Naruto, blushing at the intimate contact. Ah, blushing, I didn't know you had it in you. I had parents a long time ago. I was born in a small village of Inmizu no Kuni, land of water, in a place where it snowed every day. All we did was farm, and we were poor, but my mother and father were happy. I was happy, they were kind parents, but when I got older something happened, said Haku, staring at the moon, an absent expression, as though only half remembering that Naruto was there. What happened? asked Naruto, leaning against her like she was to him, not sure if she could actually hear him. My father killed my mother and tried to kill me, said the ice user, seemingly ignoring the blonde. Mizu has experienced many civil wars, and those who possess Keke Jenke, the genetic trait passed down from parent to child, from grandparent to grandchild, were hated. From what I understand, you have one too, so you should know what it's like. While I was hated by my village, but that was for a different reason. Konoha actually reveres Keke Jenke, when we get there you will be welcomed with open arms. It sounds wonderful. Now, because of the special abilities we possessed, these families were used in many disputes and the country itself feared us to be the harbingers of disasters and wars. After the wars, those families hid their abilities and lived on. Because if they revealed their secrets, they were instantly put to death. My mother possessed the Hyoden Keke Jenke. She kept it a secret and married my father and must have believed that an ordinary life would continue for a while, but, it was all too good to last. At this point Haku started to cry, and Naruto put his arm around her. My father found out our secret. Later, I watched as he and a few of our fellow villagers beat my mother to death and then turn on me. As they approached me, I did the only thing I could and killed them all with my ice abilities. And at the time, I thought of myself as, no, I had think of myself as being. I realized that that was the most painful thing a person could feel. The feeling that you are not needed by anyone in this world. That no one cares if you live or die. After all that, if someone were to appear who accepted you from the bottom of their heart, that person would immediately become the one most important to you. At she was remembering the day she met the demon on that snow-buried bridge. Zabuza Sama knew that I was from a family with a Keke Jenke and he still raised me. He wanted the ability that everybody else hated. I was happy, I was needed. I became his servant and his weapon. I had purpose. Now I am going to a ninja village. I will have a bigger purpose. I can go to the hospital and save lives instead of ending them. I still wish to be a ninja, but I want to do what I can for others. And for that, I will always be grateful. Naruto-kun, would you like to be my precious person? Of course I would Haku-chan. All my life I have been despised by my village for something I couldn't control, just like you. It wasn't for my ability, as I just recently awoke it. But like you, I found my precious people, who I bet would love to meet you. Would you like to be my precious person, Haku-chan? Of course Naruto-kun, and I can't wait to meet your precious people, said a heavily blushing. After that, they just sat there in each other's arms. After about an hour, Naruto asked Haku to go to bed and that he would go to his soon. When she was gone, 
Kakashi came up to him and told him to follow. They went to a section of the cargo hold that would make it almost impossible to be eavesdropped upon. Hello Naruto-kun, said a jovial Arashi. Hello Arashi-san, replied Naruto. I want to ask something of you that I don't know if I am allowed to ask. I will help if I can Arashi-san, replied the blonde Jinchuriki. I want you to take the twins with you when you go back to Konoha. At this point he held up his hand to stall any arguments the blonde had. They want to become shinobi and I can't bring them there because I'm dying. You are their blood and from what I understand you are eligible for clan head status due to your keke Genke and your shinobi status, although you need to be a chunin to be a full clan head. Explained the white-haired man. Hum, very well sir. I have a family and I will do all I can for them. I will apply for clan status in Konoha after I retrieve our secrets and equipment. Good, in that case I will rest easy knowing they will be taken care of when I pass. Said the relieved white-haired man. Before I go though, can I ask, how did you meet them? Wondered the blonde. Not much to tell really. I was walking in the woods, I smelled death, I followed, heard crying, came across a clearing in which a looted caravan sat, and found the two of them underneath what I assumed to be their mother due to the similar hair color. Hum, all right then, good night, Arashi-san. Said the blonde walked away to his room. Village of Uzushiogakur next day. Wow whispered naruto as the rest of the group which included team seven the kiri nins and the three sailors was speechless no kidding said kayubi they were standing on a ridge overlooking the village it was a beautiful sight there were three rivers running through it two flowing towards the middle causing a giant whirlpool with the third river being much larger than the rest and leading away from the center out of the village on the shore of the whirlpool between the two smaller rivers, there was a large tower which looked like the Hokage's tower back in Konoha sitting on a large cylindrical stone platform. Spreading out from the pool were beautiful houses that were all rectangular, spread throughout the city were beautiful, now overgrown, gardens with pillars, gazebos, and fountains. On every man-made object in the city was the Uzu symbol. Everywhere was the remnants of the invasion, bodies, destroyed buildings, bloodstains, and rusted weapons. 5. After they jumped down, Naruto immediately went to the closest body and examined the Hitai 8. It's the same as the symbol on your flak jacket, Kakashi Sensei. Stated Naruto. Are you okay? Asked Haku as she placed her hand on his shoulder. Yeah, it's just a little hard to realize this person was my clansman. He said as he dug around the person's belongings, looking for a form of identification. Uzumaki Atsushi, 7, 21 years old, a junin, married, no children, A rank in ninjutsu, A rank in taijutsu, and B rank in genjutsu, B rank with fuinjutsu. Said Naruto as he got up and put the card in his hip pouch. He then mad his signature hand seal and said, Cage Bunshin no jutsu, shadow clone jutsu, and around 100 clone popped into existence. Spread out, find all the bodies with the Uzu symbol on them. Collect any form of ID that you can and then give them a proper Uzu send-off. He shouted pointing to the huge whirlpool in the center of the village. After that bring me their IDs and then go search for anything that can be of use. Leave the rest where they fell. Hi boss, shouted the clones as they all went off in separate directions. All right Kakashi sensei, I think we should head to the central tower. I would also like to request that when we get to the village head's office, that I go in alone said a deceptively calm naruto all right naruto you're the mission client so we have to respect your wishes said kakashi the hell with that said sasuke if i want to go somewhere then i will do so i don't need your permission yeah naruto sasuke kun doesn't need your permission for anything he's better than you screeched sakura actually you too said an eye smiling kakashi since naruto is the mission client we need to do as he asks. If not then you too will not get paid in Naruto and I will get the reward for this B rank mission. B rank, for this pathetic place, asked a skeptical Sasuke. Well Tem, I'd like to see any village try to fight off a full invasion force from three of the major villages and still take out over two thirds of the combined forces. Said an increasingly irritated blonde. This is where our family lived, asked Keihi. Hi, Oto-kun said naruto why is it so smashed up asked asagao well emo udo chan 
Our people were so awesome that three of the five major villages were threatened by them, and decided to do whatever they could to not feel that way anymore. Said Naruto to the little girl, causing stars to go into the twins' eyes. H.N., whatever Dobi the Uchiha clan is better than yours ever was. Said Sasuke. Yeah, I'm not in the mood for a pissing contest. Said Naruto as the group reached the tower. Inside the Uzukage tower first floor. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Shadow Clone Jutsu. Shouted Naruto as they entered the reception area. All right guys, you know the drill. Find IDs, give the bodies a send off, go find something of use, and bring it all to me. He then brought out a storage scroll which he then unrolled to find a larger scroll. Kakashi Sensei, can you put everything but the IDs that my clones bring into this scroll, and place the IDs into this smaller one? Sure Naruto. All right team, we'll set up camp here. Naruto, you go on and explore the rest of the building, just be careful. Uzukage Tower top floor one hour later. So far Naruto hadn't really found anything of use, when he came across the most ornate door he had found so far. When he entered, he found a room that was a half circle that looked like it took up half of the floor with the entirety of the curved wall having windows. There were also several bookcases along the wall with the door in it, an ornate desk facing said was with a chair behind it and two comfy looking chairs facing the desk, as well as a couple of couches on either side of the desk facing away from the windows. As he approached the desk, he noticed there was a journal on it with the Uzumaki symbol on it. He picked it up and found that it belonged to the fourth Uzukage's son. What's this doing here? wondered Naruto as he tried to open the journal, only to be repelled by a seal. Maybe it's a blood seal, he thought as he bit his finger and spread some blood on the seal allowing him to open the journal. March 5th, 8. I wonder how Kashina is doing. I know she left to become the Kyubi's Jinchuriki, but that life is one of nothing but pain. I hope that Mito Sama is teaching her well. Anyways, we've received word that a new war is about to begin. I really wish we wouldn't have to do this, but if Konoha joins then my father will not hesitate to help them. The Jinchuriki of the Kyubi. Why didn't you tell me about this? You never asked Kit. I can't really tell you anything about her other than the fact that she kept me in a seal that is way more restrictive than yours. She was my second Jinchuriki after Mito Uzumaki, the wife of the first Hokage, passed away. I see, that's too bad, I'll ask Gigi about it. April 17th. It's war and we've already lost several men. I know we won't make it out of this unscathed, but we will do all we can to minimize losses. I know that Konoha will not let us down. June 3rd. We have heard word of an invasion by three separate villages, Kiri, Kumo, and Iwa. We've sent messages for aid to Konoha, but they don't think they can come in time, because they have their own problems. I hope we can come through this with as little damage as possible. Several of our civilians, women, and children were evacuated, just in case, so that our lineage does not die out. That means that I have more family to find. July 20th. The invasion force has arrived. We have already lost several men, including the head of the Uzumaki clan. The barrier seals are holding, so they haven't gotten into the city, but seals of that magnitude take up way too much chakra to be of use for long. We are stockpiling supplies and fortifying lines of defense for the final assault. Our first casualties will without a doubt be the barrier team as the enemies are camping as close as they can get, waiting to pounce. Well that's rather depressing. August 12th. Today is the day. We will send out one messenger to tell the SEAL teams to lower the barrier so they at least have a fighting chance. I know that Konoha didn't abandon us, but I am sad to know that we will all most likely die. If you are reading this, you are either now the head of the Uzumaki clan, or can take this to them. We have locked everything of vital importance inside the Uzumaki vault below, where this tower meets the shore of the whirlpool. Our greatest SEAL masters, for the last hundred years, have made sure that only living and willing Uzumaki clan member is able to enter. The only good thing that I can see about this event is that some of our kin have escaped. I must now leave so I can join my friends to take as many of those bastards as we can with us. Dot, 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 goodbye. As Naruto finished reading he put the journal back onto the desk. Wow, I know Kit, your kin seem to have been true warriors. I just think it's somewhat poetic that that's how they went. Yes, now, what's this about a vault? 
Well from what I understand of such things, that position should be open for whoever wants it, so if I state myself as the head of the clan, then that should be enough. Plus I opened this journal so that has to count for something. True enough, now seal up everything you want to in here, and go find that vault. All right Kayubi, I just need a moment. After about a minute, Naruto picked the journal back up, placed it in his pocket, searched the shelves, then the desk, and finally, went to leave, but as he did so, he noticed a shelf above the doorway with four pictures on it. Those must be the Uzukages like the pictures of the Hokages in Gigi's office. Mused Naruto as he pulled one of the chairs over to the shelf so that he could take the pictures, noticing that they all had the same weapons and armor, and placed them into the scroll he had carried in with him. He then made a clone, told it that the most important things were in the vault and dispelled it, then he left the office. Uzukage Tower First Floor, how much has been brought in? Asked Naruto as he walked into the lobby. Several hundred IDs and not much else. Sorry Naruto, explained Kakashi. It's no problem, Kakashi-sensei, I found a journal that said that all the good stuff was put into a vault, that only an alive and willing Uzumaki could enter. That's interesting, said Zabuza, I never knew a seal could do that. Neither did I, but the Uzumakis were world-renowned for their sealing abilities, so it's not that big a stretch. Mused the Cyclops. Here, you can check for yourself, said Naruto as he offered the journal. Kakashi then took it read for several minutes as the rest of the group looked on and then offered it to one of the twins, saying, Damn. You took the words right out of my mouth. Now, let's go hit that vault. HN, you should give anything you find to me, Dobi. It's not like you should get anything of use. In fact I should go into that vault and have first pick. Sneered Sasuke. Hell no Tem. Besides, only an Uzumaki can enter that vault. You will do as I say. I am an Uchiha, shouted Sasuke, as in true fangirl style, Sakura agreed. Yeah Naruto, giving you anything would automatically make it useless. Whatever, Kakashi, I'd like to report to my head ninja guard that his subordinates are being contentious. Of course Naruto, this will go on the mission report that will go directly to the Hokage. Replied the silver-haired Junin. Are they seriously like this all the time? Asked Zabuza. I kind of feel sorry for Kakashi-san and Naruto-kun, replied Haku as Arashi nodded and the twins whispered, poor Aniki. All right then let's go, said Naruto as he led the way to the location of the vault. Vault, when they got to the well-hidden entrance to the vault he immediately noticed the seals. Well this worked on the book, so let's see if it works now, said the blonde, as he made a cut on his hand and smeared it on the center of the door. Click. The door then swung inwards and as Naruto turned to the others to ask the twins to accompany him, Sasuke pushed him out of the way and tried to enter the vault, dead set on getting what he felt should have been rightfully his. The key word being, tried, because as soon as he took a step onto the threshold, he was blasted into a place somewhere between conscious and unconscious and thrown into the water. Ignoring Sakura's shout of, Sasuke-kun, and Kakashi starting to fish the emo out, Naruto turned to the twins and asked, would you like to come along? They both nodded their heads and followed the Jinchuriki into the dark opening. The first room they entered was a very large room, which looked to be about half the size of the rock formation that is in. Half of the room was completely dedicated to scrolls of various sizes and purposes. Some of them were on jutsu, some of them were on kenjutsu, some on forging, but at least 70% of them were on ceiling and there were at least two of each ceiling scroll. On the other side were weapons, tools, armors, and other various things. There was a wide assortment of weapons including, for some reason, a few instruments like a purple guitar, 9. Cool, shouted the two redheads as Kehi immediately went to the guitar and Asagao went to the scrolls that said, Medic Seals. After Naruto made the necessary clones to seal everything up into the four large sealing scrolls, he noticed another door opposite of the entrance that had the kanji for, Clan Head. I guess that's me, said Naruto to himself as he immediately went to the door. After he entered, he noticed that the room was significantly smaller, about the size of a walk-in closet. The first thing he noticed was a forest green Howry 10 on a mannequin. The next thing he noticed was a stand with the weapons he saw in those pictures of the Uzukages. They were about three and a half feet long in total with a foot-long curved foot-long bandage wrapped hilt, 
and a two and a half foot long blades that looked like a cross between a saber and a katana, neither of which had a suba. After that he saw another display with a storage scroll, and a scroll with the kanji for wolf, and one with the kanji for tiger, on it. Taking the haori off the mannequin, he noticed that it was way heavier than it should have been. He then saw a letter attached to the mannequin and decided to read it, putting the garment back for the moment. Dear Uzukage, I have finished that haori you wanted to your exact specifications. There are seven layers to it. The first two are a layer of my highest quality cotton on the outside and silk on the inside. Below those on the outside is a layer of fireproofing and waterproofing seals and on the inside a set of temperature regulators, apply chakra to the left chest area to lower the temperature and the right to raise it. Below those are two layers of my highest quality stainless steel fibers weaved life fabric and the final middle layer is a layer of overlapping shingle-like small metal plates, each about an inch in length and width. One again, all materials used in this construct were the highest grade one could possibly acquire. I have included several hidden inside pockets and pouches for weapons and sealing supplies and I have put that fitting seal you told me about between the shoulder blades. Just focus some chakra into it, and it will fit whoever is wearing it perfectly. This could very well be my masterpiece and I thank you for allowing me the opportunity to make it. I hope it serves you and the future heads of your clan well. Signed Higurushi Takumi 11. Hamits set two days before the journal said the Uzumaki clan had died, which means that he probably never actually wore it. This is the most awesome thing I have ever seen, thought Naruto, amazed at the sheer amount of care and consideration that went into the garment, as he placed the letter into his left hip pouch. Indeed Kit, the seals protect against fire and water jutsu and prevent you from dying from hypothermia or heat stroke. The steel weave offers slashing protection and the metal plates offer piercing protection. It is truly an impressive garment, and the silk and cotton give it comfort and aesthetic appeal. Observed the demon fox. Naruto then turned to the swords and drew one of them. It's a beautiful blade, maybe you don't need those claws after all. I bet Kiba would like them. Dog breath, yeah, he would probably like that. Maybe when you reinstate your clan you can give them to him as a way to try and make a clan alliance. A clan alliance? What do you mean? I mean that you need to get in good with the other clans so that if something untoward were to happen to you, you could have friends to bail you out. Interesting. What do you think I should do with those summoning scrolls? He asked as he sheathed the blade and strapped the two of them to his back, with the hilt sticking over his shoulders. Something tells me you should wait before you sign one, replied Kayubi. Naruto then took his jacket off his body and the haori off the mannequin again and put it on, noticing that currently, it was several sizes too large. He then focused chakra into the seal in between his shoulder blades and after a flash of bright light and he could feel the haori shifting on him. When it was finished, it looked the exact same just to his size. It was loose enough to be comfortable, but not enough to be hampering. The sleeves were long enough to cover half of his hands, but again loose enough that it wouldn't hamper his hands. A cursory examination found several hidden pockets in the sleeves, armpits, and even the lining of the garment. This thing is awesome, hey, that scroll said Higurushi, right, isn't that the place you got all your clothes and stuff? Asked the fox. Yeah, you're right, perhaps I should thank them. When we get back I'll have to find out what's in that ceiling scroll responded naruto he then sealed up the three scrolls and placed it in a pocket inside the haori and left the room empty but for a single mannequin when naruto made it back to the other room he found that the only things in the room were the twins one with a medical seals scroll and one with a purple guitar and what appeared to be a manual on how to use it a single clone a large box a single sealing scroll into which all the others were sealed 12 and several empty shelves and weapon and armor racks you gonna keep those? asked the blonde Uzumaki. The two of them simply nodded, too engrossed in the scrolls that they were holding. What's that? asked Naruto to his clone, indicating the box. The clone, for some reason, seemed nervous as he opened the box and pulled out a single object. It was an Uzushiogakur Hitai 8. Naruto hesitantly reached out a hand and took the headband. He then tied it around his neck like a collar and sealed the box with the rest of them into the scroll. He then dispelled the clone and placed the scroll in a pocket and gestured the twins to follow him. Outside, Haku was watching the entrance of the vault, and by this time Sasuke had been fished out, 
had tried to go in again, was fished out again, had sworn, sat down on the shore to dry off and spurn Sakura for a date, while all the others had just sat by the entrance. She saw the three of them, and immediately noticed Naruto's changed outfit. Blushing at how good he looked in his new haori, she called to them, Hello, Naruto-kun, Asagao-chan, Keihi-kun, it looks like your search was fruitful. Hi, Haku-chan, everything is all sealed up, me and Keihi have weapons, Asagao is studying scrolls, I got this awesome haori, and a few more things that are to say the least, badass. HN, you don't deserve anything Dobi, it should all go to me. I'm the last Uchiha, give me those swords, demanded Sasuke. Yeah Naruto, three guesses and the first two don't count. No, these are my clan's secrets and I am the client for this mission. Though based on this, I'll have to specifically request a different team should this ever happen again. Said Naruto. HN, all I want are the swords Dobi, seals are useless, the Haori looks like shit that hit I ate around your neck means you're a traitor, and a guitar is a stupid instrument. Actually Sasuke, the Yondaimi Hokage's Horishin, Flying Thunder God, was completely reliant on seals and is one of the greatest techniques ever made, the guitar is most likely more than it appears, the hit I ate is probably just something like the symbol of your clan on the back of your shirt, and I think the Haori looks nice. I also recommend that you don't demand things of the client, it leads to mission failure, little to no pay and marks on your record, responded Kakashi. Whatever, I doubt that anyone would do anything to me, the last Uchiha, in fact, I'd be surprised if they didn't support me. Said the Avenger arrogantly. Let's just make camp, said Arashi, who was showing Keihi how to wrap his new guitar in bandages. So you find anything particularly awesome? Asked Kakashi. Yeah, there was armor, and weapons, and tools, and lots and lots of scrolls. And I found this awesome guitar. This scroll says that if you channel, um, chalk, raw, into it, and play, it makes different things happen. It says here that someone actually made elemental wraiths with it, and that it, unfolds into a scythe. Shouted Keihi. At this point Sasuke was slightly interested and wanted it for himself, but couldn't do anything for fear of reprisal. Nay, Zabuza, I was wondering if you could help me figure out how to use these things. Asked the Haori wearing Genin, gesturing to the swords on his back. What do I get out of it? Asked Zabuza. I'll lower my cut to 5%, and I'll give you a few seals that help with training. What kind of seals? Asked Kakashi. Weight seals, responded Naruto. You can make them heavier or lighter by applying chakra to them. I thought you could only make explosive tags and sealing scrolls. Said Sakura. I haven't just been trying to make jutsu this whole time Sakura, I can now make the weight seals as well as minor barrier seals, won't stop anyone like Kakashi Sensei, but they might stop Uruka Sensei depending on how much chakra you put into them. You just need to either overpower them, or rewrite the actual seals. Explained Naruto. Amazing, seals are one of the most complicated form of ninja arts, and he's just soaking them up like a sponge. Thought Kakashi before asking if he could get a few weight seals as well. Sure thing Kakashi sensei, right now I have one on each of my wrists that are 20 pounds each, one on each of my ankles that are 30 pounds each, and one on my shirt that's 50 pounds 13, I plan on placing one on my new swords, and would my haori, but it's already weighted, due to it being reinforced. Reinforced? Asked Zabuza, yes. There are two layers of steel weaven in between those as a layer of overlapping steel plates, as well as fireproofing and waterproofing seals and temperature regulators. That's a high quality piece of clothing, remarked Urashi. Yep, it was ordered for the Uzumaki clan head, but he died before he could ever wear it, so for all I know, I'm the first one to ever wear it. Naruto said, examining one of the sleeves. Hum, fine I'll take that deal. All right. You should know that I can't place the seals directly on clothing so I will need to put them on some kind of arm leg band. Very well here you go, said Zabuza as he took his arm and leg warmers off 14 and handed them to Naruto. As he was applying the seal Kakashi asked if Naruto could make something like this for all of team 7, handing him his gloves. Sure Kakashi sensei, said a barely listening blonde, as he was busy placing the seals. Hey Dobi. Give me some of those seals. Demanded Emo Duck Ass. Naruto glanced at Kakashi, 
who simply nodded and told Sasuke to give him the arm warmers. As he was applying the seals he explained how they work. If you want to increase the weight then channel chakra into the seals and the weight will increase. If you just flare your chakra briefly, it will all go away. Each time you flare your chakra to get rid of the weight, you have to restart from zero. After Naruto had finished setting the weight seals, the group set camp for the night. Uzukage Tower, Base Camp Night Naruto was just starting to fall asleep when Haku appeared and asked to talk. Sure Haku-chan, what do you want to talk about? Asked the blonde. Do you really think that I'll be accepted in Konoha? Wondered a fearful Haku. Of course you will. And even if a lot of people don't accept you I know people who would accept you without hesitation. Zabuza, me, Kakashi-sensei, the Hokage, the Ichirakus, Uruka sensei and all my friends, responded Naruto, putting his arms around her. I suppose, I just don't want to be alone anymore, said Haku, basking in the warmth of his body. I promise that you will be accepted Haku-chan, even if it's only by me. Thank you Naruto-kun, you should probably watch out when we get to Konoha, because there will probably be several people who will want your ability for either breeding or research purposes, Gigi, Zabuza, and I will do all we can to prevent that but we can't be there all the time. I thank you for your concern, but I can take care of myself. If you say so, I just don't want anything to happen to you, you are my precious person. Thank you, said a blushing Haku. The two of them just sat there for the rest of the night until they fell asleep in each other's arms. Uzukage Tower Base Camp Morning Naruto was the first one of the two to wake up, noticing that he was held down by a very warm weight. Opening his eyes he noticed that it was Haku, sleeping on his chest. Blushing at how good she looked and the fact that she was that close, he lightly shook her awake. Haku-chan, you should wake up now. Um, I don't want a Naruto-kun, said a half-asleep Haku. Please wake up Haku-chan. Fine if you ask that nicely then I, she began only to stop halfway through, noticing their position, not even remotely sleepy anymore. SS sorry. And Naruto kun, she said, blushing a shade that a tomato might envy. It's all right, he started, before noticing something. Interesting. Um, Haku chan, did you be bind your ch chest? He asked, blushing. Yeah, how do you know? She asked suspiciously, because um, th they aren't anymore. He pointed out. Ah, she said. Then she stared at him for about three seconds, before blushing so red he was afraid she might pop, screamed, kya, punched him in the face and got off him. If you're going to do that to my daughter, I would appreciate if you did it somewhere where I can't reach out and poke you, and that you wear protection. Said a familiar voice. Naruto and Haku looked over and saw Zabuza Kakashi, and Arashi, just watching them, around a small fire. Zabuza Sama, nothing happened insisted a red-faced Haku, before she noticed what he had said, daughter. I don't see why not. If we're going to be living in a major ninja city, I want to be able to look out for you. Hi, T2-san, said the grinning ice user. Hi no Kuni Noon. After an uneventful boat ride it was time to say goodbye to Rashi. Why can't you come with us too san asked a Sagao. No, I can't, I'm sorry, I have things to do but Yuaniki has promised to take care of you and can put you in the academy so you can be ninjas. Said Arashi kindly. All right to San, we'll miss you, the twins chorused, hugging the man. All right Imo Udo-chan, Odo-kun, let's go, said Naruto as he placed his hands on their shoulders. Okay Aniki, the twins chorused once again, turning to hug Naruto. He then made a clone to carry Keihi as he carried a Sagao and the group took off at high speeds towards Konoha, leaving behind a waving man, who started coughing as soon as they were out of sight. Wow, shouted the twins, as they looked upon the massive stone and wood structure that were the gates of Konoha. If you think this is awesome, just wait until I show you the rest of the city! exclaimed Naruto as the group started to make its way to the Hokage Tower. This place is rather interesting, said a rather withdrawn Haku, but before Naruto could comment on her, to him, strange new behavior, Zabuza asked, where are we going? The Hokage Tower, in order to report on the mission, get the four of you situated, and to show what Naruto retrieved for his clan. Explained Kakashi. You mean our clan, 
shouted Keihi as he playfully bopped Kakashi on the head from his position on the Naruto clone. Yo Naruto, I didn't think you had it in you. Two kids, when do I get to meet the mother? shouted a familiar voice. As they all turned they saw that it was teammate and the one who had yelled was a boy named Kiba who had black slit-like pupils, no irises, red fang-shaped tattoos on his cheeks, and was for some reason wearing a fur-lined winter coat with a dog named Akamaru on top of his head, and wearing his leaf Hitai 8 on his forehead. Why do you humans love dogs so much? They may be loyal, but that's because they're stupid. Now if you had a fox clan, that I would understand. Commented the fox. Actually dog breath, this is my Ododo kun Uzumaki Keihi and my Imo Udo Chan Uzumaki Asagao. Said Naruto, trying to hold in his laughter at the Kyubi's remark, to the gobsmacked team, as Team 7 continued on to the Hokage Tower. Kiba, pulling out of his disbelief first, caught up to the team, put his hand on Keihi's shoulder and said, I feel your pain. Oi, shouted Naruto, just for that, I'm not going to give you the thing I was gonna. Oh, and what's that, an excuse for me to kick your ass again? No, I was going to give you something I found on our mission, but never mind. NN Naruto-kun, why you shouldn't judge Kei Kiba so harshly? Stuttered a girl named Hinata, she had blue hair, white pupil-less eyes, a fur-lined lavender jacket, and a perpetual blush, and was wearing her Hitai 8 around her neck like Naruto's Uzu 1. Hum, all right, grumbled the blonde as he put down a sagao. Here, I thought you might like these, he said, unsealing the demon brother's gauntlets. Holy shit, these things are awesome, shouted Kiba who had stars in his eyes. Dumbass, where did you get those? Asked their sensei, a woman named Kuranai. She had red eyes, black hair, and a dress that looked to be made out of bandages with a thorn plant stem pattern, with a single red sleeve, with her hitai eight like Kiba's. All right Kit. I gotta say that I approve of that one too. I got them off of the demon brothers, um, started Naruto. Kuranai, the woman offered. Kuranai sensei, Naruto finished. The demon brothers, how on earth did you get those from them? She asked. Spoils of war, Kuranai sensei, responded Naruto as he handed the gauntlets to Kiba, picked up a sagao again, and the group continued on to the tower. A little large, don't you think? Asked the last member on the team, a boy named Shino, with black sunglasses, slightly gravity-defying brown hair, and a large coat with the collar up covering everything up to his nose, wearing his Hitai 8 like Kiba's and Kuranai's. I know a place where you could probably get them fitted, said Naruto. Really, where? Asked Kiba, as the group entered the Hokage Tower. It's a place called Higurushi's. I know that place, it's supposed to be one of the best in the village said Sakura. I've also got a little personal business to take care of there. Commented Naruto. The three groups of ninja and two civilians, after waiting a little, entered the Hokage office to give their reports. Kurenai then gave her report for Team 8's a successful D-rank mission and went back in line to listen to Team 7's report with her genin. We met up at the gates at 7.30, started Kakashi. Hokage's office 10 minutes later. And then we left Arashi San behind and made our way here. Finished Kakashi to the dumbstruck Hokage. Holy shit, Naruto has a Kekkei Genke! Screamed a disbelieving Kiba. Yep, responded the blonde as he held up his hand to allow his blood to flow out to make a perfect model of Akamaru. Wow, due to the dangers and the effects of the C rank mission, I will be marking it down as an A-rank mission in each of your records, however, you will only be getting the standard C-rank fare. As for the B-rank, I'd like to have a word with Sasuke before I pass judgment. Stated the Hokage, he then turned to Zabuza and Haku, so you two would like to become citizens of Konoha. And why should I let two missing nins join my forces? Asked the old man. Haku here was never actually a shinobi, so she's just a civilian with the Hayauden Keke Genke so no one would care if she joined a village. As for me, Kiri is too embroiled in their civil war to really care if I join a village. Also I can teach Kenjutsu and things like that to anyone I deem fit. Responded the demon. Hum, what do you think Kakashi? Inquired the Hokage. I'd say give them a chance, said the Cyclops. Very well, Momochi Zabuza, you are hereby instated as a Junin of Kanahagakur, you will be given an apartment, 
a leaf hitai 8, and a junin flak jacket, and a dojo if you request it, but will be placed under a year's probation. Meaning no solo missions over AC rank, no traveling outside the village other than for missions, a tale of Anbu inside the village, and you will be spending the night in the TNI department. Yuki Haku, one, you will be given the rank of Chunin, with the same stipulations as Zabuza, but if you wish to work in the hospital you may, do either of you have a problem with this? Actually, I would be appreciative if my daughter could live with me. Replied Zabuza. Oh, daughter, all right then, thank you Hokage-sama, replied Haku. All right Naruto-kun, I'd like you to tell me exactly what you found inside that vault. Asked the Hokage. All right Gigi, but first, I'd like everyone but Kakashi-sensei, Asagao-chan, and Keihikun to leave. Kiba, wait outside and I'll take you to that armament store I was telling you about to get those claws fitted. Responded Naruto, shocking everybody there that he could call the most important and powerful man in the village, Gigi. What? It was just getting to the good part, complained Kiba as he and the rest of his team left. Why can't we stay? asked Sakura as Sasuke nodded. Because your mission client, your sensei, and your Hokage say so. Replied the third. HN, I want to see what he found, so I'm staying. Replied Sasuke. You will leave, now, said the Hokage. After a little bit of grumbling Sasuke finally left. All right Jiraiya, you can come out now. Hiruzen told a seemingly empty piece of wall. All right sensei, said a man who seemingly materialized out of thin air. He had long, spiky white hair, a horned hitai 8 with the kanji for oil, wooden geta, and green battle kimono with a red vest. Who are you? asked Naruto. Who am I? I am the man who makes other men shake in fear, the man who makes women swoon with just a look, the man with the never-ending charisma, the world-renowned author, one of the Densetsu no Sanin the legendary toad sage, Jiraiya. The man shouted doing a strange dance. Never heard of you, Naruto told the man who then face faulted, so what are you doing here? Your family were seal experts, and since I have the most knowledge of them, I'm here to make sure nothing explodes and kills us all. Replied the Sanin. You're a seal master. After Jiraiya nodded he asked, can you teach me to be one too? I want to do my family proud. Sorry Gaki. I only teach apprentices. Now first of all I'd like to see this journal you found. Asked the Hokage. Before that, I'd like to make a few requests Gigi. Asked Naruto. And what would those be? I would like to apply for clan status, adopt Keihikun and Asagao-chan as my siblings, and put them into the academy. I don't see why any of those things would be a problem. Your family was a clan once, just in a different village. You just need to be at least Chunin to be a clan head though. The children are your actual blood and flesh family so there aren't any legal loopholes to stop you from adopting them, and anyone can go into the academy if they so choose. They'll just have to wait until the beginning of the next academic year. He said as he took out several forms. Naruto nodded and then placed the journal, the letter regarding his new haori along with said garment, the two summoning contract scrolls, the sealing scrolls, and the swords on the desk. He then motioned his new siblings to do the same. Medical seals, I don't suppose you could let me see those could you Gaki? Asked an interested Sanin, as the third picked up the journal and began to read. Sorry, but only clan members can learn those. Replied a smug blonde as he filled out the paperwork and described everything his clones had found. Smartass, thought an amused Jiraiya as he started to read the letter regarding the Haori. After the two of them had both finished reading the journal and the letter, they looked at the summoning scrolls, finding them legitimate. They then asked what was in the scrolls. All the stuff in the initial chamber is in this one, the IDs are in this one, and this one I have no idea because it was just sitting there with the summoning contracts. Replied the blonde, indicating the scrolls one by one. Hum, all right Naruto, I will make the announcement about your clan tonight. Come here at around 7 for the meeting with the council. After that I'll show you to one of the empty compounds of the village set aside for new clans where you can show me the rest of what you found. Said Hiruzen. Gigi, I'd like to request that a shrine be erected in the compound so that I can place these IDs there and so that my future clan's men may remember the fallen. Of course Naruto, when we go there, I will bring a carpenter friend of mine and he will build one wherever you ask. All right Gigi, 
if that's all I'd like to show my now family and friends around the village. Said the Jinchuriki. Very well, dismissed, replied the Hokage. Naruto and his siblings then retrieved everything that they had put on the desk and left the office. After the three of them had left, Jiraiya turned to the Hokage and asked, Are you sure about this? I mean, the council is going to go ballistic if the Gaki tries to start a clan. I don't really care, he has all the right in the world to do so. All the members of his clan have innate understanding of seals, chakra that is more potent than normal, life forces that make it almost impossible to kill them unless you aim for the heart or the brain and even then sometimes they survive, as well as Naruto having his kukutsu. Did you see Asagao Chan? She was reading that scroll on medical seals, and she didn't even look phased. And the weapon that Kei Kun had sounded like a formidable tool. What if the council demands that he hands everything over to one of the other clans? Asked Kakashi. I'll tell them that if one of the clans wants something, they will have to give him something of equal value of theirs in return. Said Hiruzen. What of the girl, Haku? Wondered a concerned Jiraiya. I will place her under my protection, to keep her away from people like Danzo. Said the third sternly. Will you teach Naruto? Asked Kakashi of Jiraiya. I'll teach him seals, at least until you say it's all right to teach him other things, like the toad summon if he doesn't want to sign either of the ones he got in Uzu, and I'll teach him the Rasengan during the Chunin exams. I don't really mind, you can teach him anything you wish. But before that, Hokage-sama, I'd like to recommend Naruto for either Anbu, or Special Junin on the basis of his chakra reserves that are almost as high as yours, as well as his exceptional sneaking and trap-making skills, as well as his sealing capabilities. Said Kakashi. To say that both of the other men were shocked would have been an understatement of the century. Do you really think that he's ready for that kind of work? Asked the Hokage. He has been able to sneak around in, kill me, Orange, pranking people including yourself and every clan in this village, several of which are renowned for their censors. A testament of this is when he painted the Hokage Mountain in broad daylight. Wearing said orange, not get caught until after he started screaming at the village and banging paint cans together. And then outrun several Junin and Chunin, and only get caught by Uruka, who has proven time and time again to be the only one to catch him, as well as sneak into the Hokage Mansion and steal the Forbidden Scroll the night he became a genin. Not to mention that he was able to infiltrate both Zabaza's base and Gato's mansion, gathering intel which allowed us to complete the mission, save several lives, and bring a bloodline to this village. As for his seals, while we were on the mission, he was able to learn weight seals, as well as three types of barrier seals, one non-elemental, one doden, and one futon. He also learned the Kaden barrier seals while on the way, in, and from Uzu, two, three, and while they may have been rather weak barrier seals, they would be able to trap anyone of Chunin level skills. Very well Kakashi, if I believe he has done well enough in the Chunin exams, I will promote him accordingly. Responded the oldest man in the room. Hum, maybe I should teach the Gaki as soon as possible. Mused the self-proclaimed, super pervert, and the Uchiha. While he will have the B rank in his record, he will not receive pay, he will also be receiving a permanent mark on his record for insubordination. Responded the Hokage. Don't you think that's a little harsh? Asked Kakashi. No I don't, it is the same punishment that I would give anybody, including you and Jiraiya. Very well Hokage-sama. Said the Cyclops as he too left the office. Outside the Hokage's office. All right Naruto, where's this place you were telling me about? Asked Kiba. I'm going there now with the little ones, so you can just follow me. Zabuza-san, Haku-chan. I can show you around the village if you don't mind a little detour first. Said Naruto. I don't mind, said Haku as Zabuza simply shrugged. Great, so just follow me and I'll show you guys a good time, right guys? Asked Naruto to his siblings. Aye sir. 4. Higurushi's shop. Here we are, shouted the blonde. Higurushi's huh, I've heard of this place. Thought Zabuza as the group walked in. Welcome to Higuru, Naruto. How's it going? Haven't seen you in a while, what do you need? Said the girl behind the counter who turned out to be Tenten. Well Ten Chan I was on AC rank so I've been gone a while. I am showing my new family and a couple of friends around the village and Kiba here would like a new weapon of his fitted, and these two are about to enter the academy. 
I'd also like to talk to your old man about something. Responded Naruto. Hello there. What are your names? Asked Tenten of the twins. This is Keihi, said Asagao. This is Asagao, continued Keihi. And this is Araniki. They both finished, doing the same pose that they did when they introduced Arashi, making everybody who was their sweat drop. Nice to meet you, I'm Ten Ten, name's Kiba, and this is Akamaru, shouted Kiba as Akamaru barked from on top of his head. My name is Haku, Ten Ten San, and this is Zabuza Sama, said Haku, bowing to the girl. Um, okay, said Ten Ten, not really comfortable with the formality. I'll go get him Naruto. Thank you. After Ten Ten left, the group started going around the store just browsing. Once again, Keihi immediately headed for the weapons section along with Naruto, Asagao headed for a selection of battle kimonos, Kiba waited by the counter along with Haku and Zabuza. After about five minutes pass, Tenten came back with a man who they could only assume was her father. He was an average-sized man, well-muscled, had salt and pepper hair, and was completely covered in leather except for his head, which had a pair of black goggles on top. Hello there, I am the owner of this fine establishment, you can call me Higurushi, everyone does. Said the man rather cheerfully. Hello Higurushi-san, my name is Uzumaki Naruto, I'd like to talk matters both personal and professional with you, and my friend here would like to get something fitted for him. Said Naruto. Very well Uzumaki-san, I'll take your friend's measurements first and then we'll talk. Responded Higurushi, now completely business. Kiba then placed the gauntlets on the counter and allowed the man to take his measurements. After he was done he took the gauntlets away telling Kiba to come back in three days with the payment amount which, luckily, the genin could in fact pay. All right Uzumaki-san, follow me and we can talk. Naruto then followed the man down a hallway and into a small room with a desk and three chairs, one behind it and two in front. As Higurushi sat behind his desk, he motioned for Naruto to get comfortable. Now, what is it that I can do for you? He asked the genin. Instead of answering, Naruto took off his haori and put it on the desk along with the letter. He then took out his one remaining empty ceiling scroll, several explosive notes, and four of each barrier seal. This is all rather nice and I haven't seen barrier seals for years, but what do they have to do with me? Well Higurushi-san, I was hoping to thank you, while you may not have made this haori personally, it did come from here, Naruto replied, indicating the letter which Higurushi picked up and started reading, I was wondering if you could recreate and or repair it if asked to for me and my young siblings when they become genin. As for the scroll, tags and seals, I was wondering if I could sell them to you. And why would I be interested in buying your seals? Asked the man who had just finished the letter. Because I made them. I was hoping to make a deal with you. I provide you with seals, and you provide me with a cut, as well as the necessary materials with which to make them. And as I learn how to make new seals, I show them to you, and you decide whether or not you wish to sell them with the same conditions. Answered the blonde. Hum, very well. I'll give you a 20% cut since I'll be the one providing the materials to make them, you will come in once a week to maintain a number of tags and such which we will agree upon at a later date 5. As for the Howry, you provide me with the seals and yeah, I could make and maintain a few for you. But, before we do anything, I'd like to test the authenticity of your work. I'd like you to make each of these things in front of me, and activate it. For the barrier seals, I do know a clone jutsu or two. Actually Higurushi san, I know the cage bunch and jutsu, shadow clone technique, so I can use them to test the barrier seals. Is that right? Very well then, come out back and we can get started. Stated the store owner as he led Naruto out of the building. All right, Higurushi san, one moment please. Asked the genin as he pulled out his sealing supplies. The first thing that he made was an explosive tag. He then slapped it on a tree, walked back to the man, and activated it. The resulting explosion blew the tree in half. He then took a blank scroll and made a new seal on it, afterwards he dragged the top half of the tree on top of the scroll and with a, poof, it vanished. Next, he took a rather large rock and handed it to the older man. After the man held it in his hand for a few seconds to fell its weight, he gave it back to Naruto, who started to write a new seal directly on the stone. When he was finished, 
He handed it to Higurushi again who started pumping chakra into it, feeling it get heavier and heavier. He then flared his chakra twice in quick succession making the extra weight disappear, 6. Finally, he made 31 clones. 16 of the Naruto's then took out a piece of paper and wrote seals in four groups of four. They then separated into four groups of eight, each with four in a square pattern, seven, two inside the square, and two outside the square. The first group of Naruto's in a square then placed the seals on the ground with each of them inside the barrier facing out. One on the inside, and one on the outside then punched the barrier, showing that it was like punching a wall, they then threw Kanai at the barrier and they simply bounced off. The barrier was then lowered as the two Naruto's dispelled, and the four in the square position switched so that they were outside the barrier facing in. They then did the same round of tests with the same results. After the barrier had been proven effective, all eight Naruto's dispelled. The next group was the Doden Barrier group. They did the same rounds of tests, starting this time with the Kanai test. While the four in the square were facing out, the Kanai thrown from the inside simply bounced off while the ones on the outside simply fell with a dull thud, the reverse being true when the four were on the outside facing in. When the Naruto's punched the barrier, while it had the same effects it was simply isolated to each Naruto's arm. After that group had dispelled, the Kaden group was up. The group once again started with the Kanai test, with the ones on one side bouncing off, and the ones on the other side bursting into flames. With the punch test, the ones on one side simply hit while the clones on the other's arm burst into flames. Finally, there was the futon barrier. The group once again started with the kanai test, with the ones on one side bouncing off, and the ones on the other side being cut in half. With the punch test, the ones on one side simply hit while the clones on the other's arm got littered with little cuts, all the way to the elbow, that alone wouldn't really do anything, but together would quickly become a problem. 8. 9. After the whole display was finished, Higurushi stood there for about a minute and said, Hum, very well, I will sell your seals with the agreed upon conditions. Pleasure doing business with you Higurushi-san. A word of warning though, these seals are GHE basic elemental seals, and while they can capture anyone up to Chunin levels, anyone with adequate sealing abilities, which apparently no one, but no one does can rewrite the seals and those with high enough chakra levels can simply overload them. Also they can't cover a large amount of distance, so the seals can be at most 5 yards away from one another 10. Said Naruto as he shook the man's hand. I'll make sure to put that on the box, just make sure you come to me with any new seals you make. Come back tomorrow and we'll iron out the details. As Naruto turned back to leave, he realized that he had gotten an audience. Well done Gaki, I think I have just reconsidered teaching you seal work said Jiraiya as the group left the area. What changed your mind? asked the dubious blonde. Well, it was mostly the fact that you learned how to do all that in a couple of months, and books can only take you so far. You have a lot of potential, and I'll teach you other things besides sealing if you'd like. Answered the pervert as the three of them entered the main part of the shop to find that Kiba had left and the others were simply waiting for him to arrive. Aniki, can we go see the village now? asked an impatient Kehi. Sure Ododo-kun, answered the blonde as he led the child to the window. He then made a sweeping motion with his arm and asked, see. That's not funny Aniki, pouted the boy as his sister giggled. All right, is there any particular place you'd like to see first? Asked Naruto of the group. How about the academy? Asked Kehi. The hospital, said Haku. The training grounds, said Zabuza. A restaurant, asked a blushing Asagao as her stomach growled. How about we go get something to eat, I'll show you guys where the academy and the hospital are, since they are close together, and then I'll take you on a tour of a few training areas. After that, I'll show you some of my favorite spots, inquired Naruto. Sure Aniki, agreed the twins as Haku and Zabuza nodded. Hey Gaki, I'll leave you guys to it. I'll see you when you meet back up with Sarutobi sensei said Jiraiya. Sure thing Oyaji, I'm not old you little brat, shouted an irate toad sage. Oyaji's funny, chorused the twins, giggling causing Jiraiya to face fault. Whatever, he said as he left. Three hours later, the group had just one more place to go before they finished Naruto's tour of the city. 
With the only things that had really happened were the group leaving Zabuza behind at one of the training grounds for a spar with a man with a green jumpsuit and massive eyebrows, Eleven, who Zabuza claimed, offended my eyes, and Chuki at Ichiraku's going into the back room of his stand and shouting something that sounded like, I'm so proud of you, after Naruto introduced Haku, while his daughter Ayame fawned over the twins. Come on you guys, I want to show you my favorite place in the whole village. Shouted an ecstatic blonde. But Aniki, I thought you said the ramen stand was your favorite place. Pointed out Asagao. That's my second favorite, he amended as he led the group up a flight of stairs. After about five minutes of walking, the group came upon a platform on top of the Hokage mansion. Naruto then motioned the rest of them to follow him and sat down on top of the fourth Hokage's head with Asagao in his lap. Haku then sat down next to him with Keihi in her lap. This is beautiful Aniki, remarked an odd Asagao. No wonder you like this place so much Naruto-kun, mused Haku. Hey, Naruto-kun, you oblivious dumbass thought the fox. You guys should come here during dawn or dusk, Naruto told them. Then they just sat there until it was time for Naruto to meet with the Hokage and the council. Hokage's office. Hello Naruto-kun, how was the tour of the where is Zabuza-san? Asked the Hokage. The tour went great Gigi, Zabuza went off and started sparring with a guy with huge eyebrows. Responded Naruto. The Hokage then sighed and asked the Anbu in the room to go get him. Very well, I will take you to the council chambers. He then got up and led them out of the room. What is the council Gigi? Asked Keihi. Amused that there was another person who called him. Gigi, he answered the boy. The council is made up of the heads of all the shinobi clans, a few of my own advisors, and some of the more prominent civilians. Wow, responded an odd Keihi, does that mean that you'll be on the council one day Aniki? Asked Asagao. I guess so, responded Naruto as the group stopped just outside the council chambers, waiting for Zabuza to show up. Hey Gaki, said Jiraiya to Naruto, what do you want Oyaji? Stop calling me that, shouted the man. I wanted to talk about my teaching you. I was thinking that I could teach you in the afternoons after your team dismisses for the day. It was while they were discussing Naruto's training that Zabuza finally did showed up covered in bruises, cuts, and filth. Choosing not to comment at the moment, the Hokage opened the door, and allowed the five people with him to go into the chamber first, with Jiraiya staying out. As Hiruzen took his seat, the council was whispering among itself as to what the demon brat, two children, a girl, and the infamous Momochi Zabuza was doing in the council chambers. Allow me to start this meeting. I would first like to introduce these five. They are Uzumaki Naruto, Uzumaki Asagao, Uzumaki Keihi, Yuki Haku, and Momochi Zabuza. During a mission, Naruto encountered them and convinced them to come to Konoha. As of today, Yuki Haku is a chunin of Kanahagakur, and Momochi Zabuza is a junin. He then paused to ignore the obligatory shouting. Yuki-san, while having extensive training, is in fact a civilian, and Kiri is too embroiled in their civil war to protest Momochi-san's joining of our forces. Yuki-san is a carrier of the Hayauden Keke Genke, and Momochi-san is a master Kenjutsu specialist, something which we are sorely lacking in Konoha. Noticing one man in particular staring at Haku with a rather hungry look, he continued to say, and Yuki-san is to be placed under both my protection and the protection of the Serutobi clan so that nothing, untowards will happen to her. The Nara clan offers their protection as well, said a man with black hair tied in a pineapple-shaped ponytail and two scars on his face. As does the Yamanaka clan, said a man with blue eyes, and blonde hair tied into a ponytail. As does the Akamichi clan, chimed in a huge man with wild red hair, old-style armor, and what looked like paint on his face. At this the man looked rather annoyed, but quickly hid it in a mask of seeming indifference. You can't hide from me you old war hawk, thought the Hokage, before he continued with his announcements. May I ask what has happened to Zabuza-san? Asked a man with gravity-defying brown hair, a high-collared gray, silver coat, and what looked like a giant flask on his back. I found a man who offended most of my senses. Green jumpsuit-wearing bastard, screaming about Kami knows what. Huff the demon, causing many in the council to shudder, knowing of the eccentric Junin known as Guy. I would also like to announce the reformation of the Uzumaki clan in Konoha, 
with Uzumaki Naruto, Uzumaki Keihi, and Uzumaki Asagao as members. Stated the Hokage, pausing again for the civilian side of the council to express their outrage, while the shinobi side and the advisors looked apathetic. I would also like to announce that Genin Naruto will be instated as clan head once he becomes Chunin, and that he has gone, with my permission, to the ruins of Uzushiogakure where he found several clan artifacts and scrolls, including his Haori, swords, and young Keihi's guitar. As such, I will be giving him one of the empty districts set aside for when new clans are established within the village. You can't do that, shouted one of the civilian council members. And why not? asked a deceptively calm Hokage. You know what he is. He cannot be allowed to breed or be the head of a clan. I would have no problem if one of the children were to lead the Uzumaki clan, but not him. The man argued. Of course I know what he is, he is a shinobi of Konoha. If that's a reason he shouldn't be a clan head, I'd like to see you tell the rest of the clan heads that. Haruswin responded as the shinobi council stared at the man who was turning rather pale at the old man's statement. And as for your insistence that one of the children would be better suited to lead the Uzumaki clan, Naruto is the only one with ninja training, and he has both a keke genke and the highest amount of sealing expertise among them, which, as I'm sure you know, is what the Uzumakis were famous for. Hokage-sama, will the young Yuki be beginning a clan? Asked the man who had been staring at her. She has not applied for clan status, so no she will not Danzo. Then what will she be doing and where will she live? Asked Danzo, making Haku a little uncomfortable with his interest in her. She will be living with her father Zabuza, and will be working in the hospital, as a medic nin. Stated the Hokage. Very well, acquiesced Danzo. Now, is there anything that anyone would like to ask? Asked the Hokage. What did the Gaki find? Asked a woman with frizzy brown hair, slit-like pupils, and red marks on her cheeks asked. That is a matter you will have to ask of Naruto, Sum-san, stated the Hokage, if that is all, Jiraiya and I will now be showing Naruto, Asagao, Keihi, Haku, and Zabuza to their new homes. With the completion of the council meeting, the seven of them then went to an apartment complex where the Hokage presented both Haku and Zabuza with a key. As they were about to be led to T&I by a couple of Anbu, Haku asked, Is it all right if I come along to see Naruto-kun's compound? Sure Haku-chan, as long as Gigi says it's okay. Responded Naruto, as Jiraiya giggled in the background. I don't see why not. Five minutes later the group met up with a man wearing a tool belt outside a section of the village which was walled off with a gate in the center of each of the four walls. Naruto could see the obviously recent addition of the Uzumaki symbol lining the wall, each about a foot in diameter, about five feet from one other, and halfway up the wall twelve. Well, it looks impressive enough. I'd like to be the first to formally introduce you to the Uzumaki compound of Konoha, Naruto-kun, Keihi-kun, Asagao-chan said the Hokage as he opened the gates of the compound. The whole area was rather large, 13, there were several buildings, most of them being two-story houses, a few were single-story or simple sheds, there were even what looked to be stores or food stands. Here and there were empty plots of land for whatever one wanted to put there, as well as several ponds, gardens, training grounds, and even a couple of onsens. In the center of the complex was a two-story house that was easily the largest in the area, the three Uzumakis, for the first full minute, just stood there in awe of what would be theirs. Naruto-kun, as clan head, you will be living in the largest house in the compound. Asagao-chan, Keihi-kun, you will have to live with him at least until you become genin, at that point, you will be legal adults and can live on your own in one of these other houses. Or you may stay civilians, and wait until you are twenty. The Hokage told them, snapping them out of their reverie. Now. Naruto-kun, I'd like to introduce you to Daichi, he is the man who will be making the shrine for the IDs you found. All right Gaki, I haven't got all night, where do you want it? Daichi asked rather gruffly. After a brief tour, Naruto settled on a location. It was a medium-sized clearing on the shore of a large pond, and surrounded on three sides by Sakura trees, in the northeast corner of the compound. All right, it should only take a two maybe three weeks at the most kid. Said the man, who then proceeded to take measurements. What do you say we get you situated Gaki? Asked Jiraiya as the Hokage led the group, minus Daichi, to the clan head's house. 
The Hokage, along with Jiraiya, then showed the Uzumakis around their new home. When they entered, the first thing they noticed would be a staircase leading up to the second story. On the first floor there were several different rooms, including a large dining room that could seat ten comfortably, a fully equipped kitchen with a rather large pantry and several cabinets, two linen closets, each adjacent to one of the two three-quarters bathrooms, fourteen, a medium-sized onsen, a workroom, a small infirmary, a few empty rooms, a library, and an armory. At these last two, Naruto made several clones, gave them the sealing scrolls from the vault and told them to unpack. He also noticed that none of the rooms besides the dining room table and chairs, the equipment in the kitchen, the weapons racks in the armory, the infirmary, and the large number of shelves and bookcases, the house was completely empty, there was no furniture. After that the group made its way upstairs. There were eight doors on that floor one of which was a full bathroom, two of which were offices Naruto placed the summoning contract and the sealing scroll from the clan head section of the vault in the biggest one, as well as the pictures of the Uzukages and the rest were bedrooms, and unlike the rooms downstairs, they were furnished. Three of the bedrooms were the same size, with two windows each, a full-sized bed, and a closet. The last bedroom, was easily twice as large as the others, had a king-sized bed, two windows, a master bath, and a walk-in closet. It was at that point that a large amount of yelling was heard coming from downstairs in the armory and Naruto groaned and started mumbling about crazy people. What's wrong Aniki? asked a concerned Asagao. One of my clones had an accident, Imo Udo-chan. Apparently, one of our family members was psychotic, said Naruto, as the noises stopped. What do you mean Naruto-kun? asked Haku who was sitting on the bed causing Naruto to hold back a blush as the fox started making lewd comments about that particular fact. Well, one of my clones was putting away a set of Fuma shuriken, when he found what looked to be containment seals on each of the blades. He wanted to see what was in there, so he activated it. When he did, regular-sized shuriken clones popped out of the seal about for a second for about a minute 15. Everything's fine now, but several of my clones were dispelled. How do you know they were shuriken clones Aniki? asked Keihi. They disappeared when they hit a solid surface, responded the blonde. Sounds like a fearsome weapon Gaki, commented Jiraiya. Hum, that could be as harmful to you as it is to your enemies, you should be careful with such a thing, said the fox. Now that the tour is over, I must get back to work. Naruto-kun, good night, said the Hokage as he left. Later Gaki. Shizamanano, 16, Jiraiya told them as he jumped out the window. Bye Aniki, shouted the twins as they ran out of the room to theirs. It won't for about a minute, until Naruto and Haku realized they were the only ones in the room, each lost in their own thoughts. If I'm going to be clan head, I'm going to need to be strong enough to protect those precious to me. I wonder what the future will bring. It was at that point that Naruto noticed that he and Haku were the only ones in the room a fact that was not lost on the Kyubi either. You're alone, take her, take her now, shouted the giant fox. Naruto, holding down a huge blush, shook Haku out of her thoughts saying, Nay, Haku-chan, it's getting kind of late. I'll walk you to the T and I department. All right Naruto-kun, the two didn't say anything until they reached one of the most feared places in Konoha, at that point she gave him a hug and, blushing, she entered. Naruto simply stood there for a few minutes, then smiled and left. One month later, it had been a busy month for Naruto, even after the three Uzumakis got settled into their new home. It had also been rather routine for the Jinchuriki. In the mornings Naruto would make several clones to do various exercises while he trained with his team in the mornings and then do a D-ranked mission. After that he would eat lunch, sometimes with Haku, who would tell him stories of her work in the hospital or of how Zabuza would beat several Junins and Chunins into the ground, pretty much daily, for his lessons, with him telling her of his missions and training. Then he would go back to the Uzumaki district and do several exercises, mostly body conditioning and practice with a few of the weapons in the vault he had started carrying around two of what he had dubbed, the Uzumaki Shuriken. All the while, his clones again practiced Jutsu, Chakra Control, and elemental manipulation, which he learned from his family scrolls, as well as training Keihi and Asagao who, Jiraiya told him, both had more chakra than Sakura at the moment. 
After he was done with the physical aspect of his training, he would then sit down with the Jiraiya and learn seals. From the white-haired man, he had learned the Sweden and Raiden barrier seals, and a few others, as well as a jutsu which allowed him to us the effects of the barrier on anything inside, 17. Naruto had also learned a few seals by himself, and was currently learning from one of the scrolls on medical seals, and thinking about a rather insane idea which he hadn't event told Jiraiya of. He would go once a week to Higurushi's to renew their stock of seals, including his new ones. As for Jutsu, Jiraiya had also taught him the Bunshin Debakua, Great Clone Explosion, the Shuriken Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Shuriken Shadow Clone Jutsu, and the Kanai Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Kanai Shadow Clone Jutsu, which he was mastering with the help of his Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Shadow Clone technique. He had also developed a Jutsu for his bloodline where he controlled creatures he made with his blood, called Kukutsu Kaiga Kochiku no Jutsu, Black Blood, Blood Construct Jutsu. The form he used most often were foxes, shears to Yukayubi, and at the moment he could control three of them, with his eventual goal being ten. Jiraiya had even allowed Naruto to sign the Toad Summoning Scroll after the second week, giving Naruto a copy of the contract which he kept in his office with the others, and taught him to summon some of the smaller toads, the largest being the size of a horse, saying that he wasn't ready to meet the boss toad. As for his control, with liberal use of the Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Shadow Clone technique, he could cut about halfway through a leaf with Wind Chakra, and crumble half of another with his Earth Chakra 18, and could balance a Kanai on two fingers on each hand. The shrine had been completed after about three weeks, in which Naruto immediately placed the IDs. He would go there every other day with the twins to try and learn the names of all of them. Hey Gaki, we've got a B-ranked mission. Jiraiya told Naruto who was practicing his kenjutsu stances in one of the training grounds in the Uzumaki compound, surrounded by dozens of clones. What kind of mission, Aero Senen? asked a dubious blonde. Jiraiya, who had earned the nickname about three weeks ago after Naruto found out exactly what it was he wrote, handed him a photo and told him, it's a search and retrieval mission. We need to find my old teammate, Tsunade, the single greatest medic nin alive. And stop calling me that. Why would we need to look for her? Wondered a curious whiskered Jenin, thinking about asking the woman to train Haku, as he looked at the picture of a blonde woman with a diamond mark on her forehead and what looked like watermelons in her shirt. One of my spies gave me some information that made Sarutobi sensei and I feel as though it would be better if she was to come back to the village, and I specifically asked for you to accompany me. Why? And what about my teammates? Doesn't it mean they can't do a mission if I'm out of the village? Asked Naruto, feeling a migraine coming along just thinking about Sasuke and Sakura's reactions, knowing that Kakashi wouldn't really care. Eh, I don't care about them, replied the pervert, making Naruto face fault, they can latch onto another team for a time or temporarily get a reserve genin, one that doesn't have a team. So, why me? Asked Naruto again, is it so wrong to want to teach my apprentice something? He said as he pulled what looked to be a water balloon out of his hip pouch. Is it so wrong to want to teach my apprentice something? Jiraiya asked as he pulled what looked to be a water balloon out of his hip pouch. What is that for? Asked Naruto. I'll tell you when we hit the road, meet me at the main gate in one hour. Replied Jiraiya as he walked away. Two hours later, the two men were on the road after notifying Naruto's friends and teammates. He had gotten the Ichirakus to watch the twins for him while on the mission, and had gotten a rather interesting hug from Haku where she accidentally shoved his head into her cleavage, one which almost got him killed on behalf of Zabuza, and that his sensei had been teasing him mercilessly about for the last hour. All right, Aero Sanin, where are we going, and what was it you wanted to teach me? Asked Naruto, as the two shinobi walked the path. Tsunade Haim is a huge gambling addict so we're going to wherever has the best gambling at this point and time to find her. As for what I'm teaching you, it's a move the fourth created called the Rasengan, Spiraling Sphere, a devastating move that causes major damage to whatever you hit with it, though it's exclusively a close-range attack. Explained the huge man as he pulled the water balloon out of his hip pouch again and, for no real reason, smashed it on Naruto's head. What the hell was that for? Yelled the blonde. I thought you might still be all hot and bothered since your girlfriend let you motorboat her, and you needed to cool off. Responded Jiraiya with a grin. W w what w were n not like th that. 
Shish, she's J just a ff friend, stuttered Naruto with a blush that would make a tomato proud. Of course kid, whatever helps you sleep at night, said Jiraiya flippantly as he pulled another water balloon out of a seal on his wrist, now, the Rasengan has three stages that you need to complete in order to use it. The first stage is rotation. Watch and learn. It was at this point that the water balloon began to gain bumps that grew and grew before popping in a shower of water and thin plastic. Now I want you to do that, and we'll move on to stage two. You can do it on the road, said the Sanin as he pulled out another balloon before giving it to Naruto. Three hours later, the two shinobi were just walking into a bustling town full of cheerful people, bars, stands selling various merchandise, and gambling dens. All in all, as Jiraiya would say, it was a perfect place for Tsunade Senju. Naruto on the other hand, had made little to no progress in the jutsu, only making the balloon into a pancake made of water. Damn it, what am I doing wrong Kayubi? inquired the blonde to his tenant. I've already told you that I was going to stop spoon feeding you the answers. But knowing you, you'll keep bitching, so I'll give you some advice, and if you still haven't figured it out by the time you've left this village, I'll tell you the answer. Ask the pervert to show you how it's done again, and then compare your balloon to his, advised the fox as he lay down to take a nap. Sigh, I'll hold you to that. Nay, Aero Sanin, can you show me how to do this again? Asked Naruto as he offered up the balloon, halting their progress through the town. Why Gaki? Asked an annoyed Sanim, eager to visit a few houses of pleasure, in order to continue his research. I want to see what I'm doing wrong. Very well. Acquiesced the pervert as he pulled another water balloon out of the seal. Now watch closely, this is the last time I show you. As Naruto was watching, he tried to see what was different. The only thing I can think of is that his stays a sphere, and gets bumpy, while mine becomes a pancake. What does that mean? A-A-R-R-G-G-H-H. Raged Naruto inside his head. Shut the fuck up, I'm trying to sleep. Yelled the fox. Bastard. Insulted Naruto. Hairless ape. Shot back his prisoner. Stupid plush toy. Retorted the blonde. Incompetent jackass. Snapped Kayubi. After about five seconds of silence, in which the two of them were mentally glaring at each other, they both bust out into laughter, causing several people to question Naruto's sanity. What's so funny Gaki? inquired Jiraiya, who had been watching his changing facial expressions and was now wondering if the boy had finally cracked. Nothing, I was just thinking on our different methods, and I got sidetracked, responded Naruto after he had calmed down. Our different methods? asked the white-haired man, as he got the two of them moving again. Well, when you do it, it stays a sphere, it just gets bumpy. When I do it, it becomes a pancake. I'm trying to figure out why. Gaki, how many directions do you spin yours? Asked a curious Jiraiya, trying to see if Naruto would figure it out with a little push. I only spin it in the one direction, it's not like you. Dot can, spin, damn. Responded Naruto, cursing his own stupidity, which the Kayubi wholeheartedly agreed. After he made this epiphany Naruto began to spin the water in the balloon, but was having difficulty doing so in more than one direction. When he commented on it to Kayubi the fox told him he could try it with both hands, which he did, thus allowing him to pop the balloon. Hum, the gaki doesn't have the control to do it with one hand so he used two, interesting. Now that that's over, we can move on to the next stage. Jiraiya told his pupil, causing the boy to get stars in his eyes until the man beamed him in the head with a rubber ball. What the hell was that for? Demanded an irate blonde as he considered shoving the ball somewhere unpleasant for the older man. It's the next stage, the first stage was rotation, this stage is power. You simply have to pop the rubber ball like you did the water balloon, said Jiraiya as the two of them neared the hotel they were staying at. Before you go doing this half-assed, try putting as much as possible in the ball, don't hold back. If the pervert wants power, then let him have it, advised Kayubi, thinking this was going to be rather entertaining. Shrugging, Naruto complied and shoved as much chakra as he could into the ball and once he did, several things happened in very close succession. 1. Jiraiya sent chakra to his feet and covered his eyes with his arms and hands. 2. The rubber ball exploded. 3. Naruto was sent flying. 4. 
Several other people were sent flying. 5. A stand that sold takoyaki collapsed. 6. Kayubi burst into laughter. As the blonde genin recovered from his brief flight, Jiraiya was wondering if he was going to be able to complete the third stage due to the amount of power he had displayed. All right Gaki, I guess that you've completed the second stage, said the Sanin as he pulled out another balloon, though this one was empty. It was almost disturbing the way you did it, but it really shouldn't come as a surprise, considering who you are, I guess. Now on to the final stage, containment. He finished before blowing up the balloon. Nay, Aero Sanin, was the fourth a childish person? Asked Naruto. A little, why? Asked a curious super pervert. Balloons and rubber balls. Good point. Anyways, the third and final stage to complete the Rasengan is containment. This is what I want you to do. As Jiraiya said this he held up his hand with the balloon in it, thus confusing the blonde as nothing appeared to be happening. And what exactly is it that I'm supposed to be doing? Asked the blonde. Maybe this will help you figure it out. Said Jiraiya as he held out his other hand and formed a perfect Rasengan. Oh, you want me to make it a sphere instead of letting all the energy out at once? Dot why? Wondered the blonde. Maybe a demonstration is in order. Said Jiraiya as he approached a large stone that was in front of the hotel. This is what happens when you do the Rasengan with only the first two stages. He said, as he thrust the incomplete Rasengan into the stone, making several scar-like marks to appear on the stone, similar to his clan's symbol. And this, is what happens when you use all three stages. Finished the white-haired man as he shoved another of the jutsu into the stone, completely obliterating it. Whoa! Was the intelligent response of the blonde, awed at the magnitude to the attack. Now, you are not allowed to train within any towns that we pass through since I don't want you to destroy anyone's property, said Jiraiya rather sagely. This coming from the man who just destroyed someone's rock. Deadpan the blonde, causing the man to stagger slightly, but betray no other outward sign that he had heard the Jinchuriki. I'm sure I don't know what you mean, replied Jiraiya before he and Naruto got their room keys before going their separate ways, one to train, and one to gather information about their target and to do various other things I can't morally say. Two weeks later, it had been a rather interesting two weeks for the pair. First, Naruto had discovered his almost disturbing luck when it came to gambling, with Jiraiya immediately capitalized on, making the boy gamble, only to spend all his winnings on booze and whores. Second was the two of them going from gambling town to gambling town following, unsuccessfully, rumors of Tsunade's whereabouts and somehow staying one step behind the entire way, while Jiraiya tried to get Naruto to read his books. Finally, Naruto made at least 100 clones each day to train on the Rasengan, he was extremely grateful that every clone had on them what he had on him, or he'd have had to spend a fortune on balloons, not that he couldn't or anything. 3. Though he did stop using them after the first week, while he worked on his Taijutsu, Kenjutsu, and his, secret project, while making sure that it stayed a secret from Jiraiya. It was a rather pleasant day when the two men walked into town. Seeing that everybody was excited, Jiraiya decided to ask one of the passerbys what was happening. It's the Midsummer Festival, there's games, food, souvenirs, and there's the Midsummer Poker Tournament, our biggest tournament of the year. Anyone of age is allowed to play, and the grand prize is 100,000 Ryo. Replied the man. Thank you, said Jiraiya as he led Naruto a short ways away before finishing, biggest tournament of the year. Anyone allowed to play. 100,000 Ryo prize. This is a prime place to look for Tsunade. In fact, if you were to enter the tournament, you would be guaranteed to run into her if she enters. As he was talking, he was also thinking of what he could do with the money if Naruto won, insert nosebleed here, at this point he actually looked his young protege in the face, and frowned when he noticed Naruto glaring at him. What? Why should I enter a tournament? If I lose, I get nothing, and if I win, you're just going to take my winnings again, and once again I get nothing. It's a lose-lose situation, and I don't really like it. Responded the pissed off blonde. Sigh. I promise I won't take your money Gaki, I just want to find Tsunade. Said the white-haired man as he continued thinking of what he would do with the money. You better hope so, cause I'm telling Gigi about your thieving when we get back, and I'm also telling this Tsunade. Said a smug Naruto causing Jiraiya to pale whiter than a ghost. 
There's no need to doth asal pay you back just don't tell sunade I took your money. He shouted so quickly that it was rather hard for the genin to understand, but when he did, he realized he had prime blackmail material. I won't tell Tsunade, but I want my money by tonight. I'll enter the tournament to find Tsunade. That night, the festival was in full swing, children going from booth to booth playing games, winning prizes, parents following them, buying food, old men drinking sake on benches, and inside a large hall, the poker tournament was starting. There were ninjas, civilians, bums, company heads, and various other people, with everybody wearing formal clothing. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Midsummer Poker Tournament. We will first be holding elimination rounds of five people per table. After those are over, we will be holding semi-finals where the winners of those matches will once again play five per table, with the winners going to the final event and a chance to win the 100,000 Rio prize. Each dealer is a shinobi of Junin status to ensure that there is no cheating, but each of you is allowed one spectator to watch your back. Now, would all 125 contestants please line up for a number, and good luck. And with that, all of the contestants began to file off to their respective tables to begin, with Naruto getting some corporate fat cat with a thug with a katana behind him, a rather attractive young woman who was alone, a man who looked like a monk with what appeared to be his apprentice and an old man who looked like he was about to crumble into dust with a very young boy who kept calling him, Gigi. Hum, they're letting children play. What a disappointment, I was hoping taking everybody's money was going to be fun, grumbled the corporate man. You shouldn't discount him just because of his age, CEO San, said the monk, getting nods from the woman and the old man. Begin, one and a half hours later. It had been a rather interesting hour in which people did try to cheat and were disqualified, people accused others of cheating, people losing all their money, and people tried to get Naruto thrown out due to his age. It was the final round, and Naruto was taking his place. A child, what has the world come to where a child is in a poker tournament? Asked a blonde woman as she too took her place, with a rather attractive young woman with black eyes and hair, carrying a pig took her place behind her. Tsunade Haim, how are you? We should catch up when this is over, said Jiraiya, as he prayed that Naruto didn't do anything stupid. As long as you're buying the drinks, acquiesced the woman. If you're done yapping, I'd like to get on with the game, said an Iwa Junin, a man with straight black hair in a ponytail down his back, black eyes, leathery skin, and who was wearing the standard Iwa Junin attire, a red shirt with one long sleeve, black trousers, and brown flak jacket with a pouch on the front, with two long quivers with several kunai handles sticking out the end on each of his hips, and who was alone. I concur, said another businessman in a suit, who had what appeared to be his secretary behind him. The only response from the last player of the table, another woman with someone that looked like her husband behind her, was a nod. Final round, winner take all, five card draw, ace high, let's begin said the dealer as he cut the cards. Thirty minutes later, the first victim of the game had been the businessman getting cleaned out by Naruto, followed by the woman getting cleaned out by the Iwa ninja, before the two of them took Tsunade's chips. All right brat, you're pretty good at this, what do you say we make this interesting, sudden death, all in on the next hand? The Junin asked Naruto as he pushed all his chips in the middle. I don't see why not said Naruto as too he pushed all his chips in the middle. When it came time for the two of them to show their cards, the Iwa Junin went first. Read him and weep brat, ace of hearts, ace of diamonds, ace of clubs, king of hearts, and king of diamonds, aces over king's full house, I win. Said the Iwa Shinobi as he reached out for what he assumed was his winnings. Sorry, but no, I think I win, said Naruto as he showed his cards one by one. Ten of spades, said Tsunade at his first card. Jack of spades, continued the businessman. Queen of spades, said a very surprised woman. King of spades, said a paling Iwa nin. Ace of spades, finished Naruto as he grabbed his chips. Royal flush beats full house, winner is Uzumaki Naruto, said the dealer, causing the audience to erupt into various sounds of celebration and disbelief. As Naruto was celebrating Naruto's victory and he was accepting his prize, no one noticed the Iwa ninja slinking off into the shadows, a dark look in his eyes. I don't know how you did it, and I don't care. 
But you will pay for this humiliation you brat. I will make sure of that. Ten minutes later. Random bar. Well Sunade Haim. Let's get right down to business. Sarutobi sensei wants you to come back to the village. Said Jiraiya in a serious tone that was immediately contradicted by him downing a shot in one go. No. I promised myself I would never go back there. I've lost too much. Said Tsunade as she too downed a shot. Come on Tsunade Haim. Serutobi sensei is offering you everything you ever wanted before you left, full reign of the hospital, a slew of med nins to train, money to pay off your debt collectors, you know, all that good stuff. But before she could tell him to shove his, good stuff, somewhere, bad place, Naruto spoke up. You should listen to him Ba-chan, it sounds like a good deal. He said, unaware of his impending doom. What did you just call me? Asked Tsunade who had her eyes shadowed by her hair. Ba Chan, but I don't see, he started before he was interrupted, aka punched through a wall by an angry woman. That's it you brat, it's not bad enough you steal my money, now you have to insult me. I'm going to destroy you, shouted an irate blonde as she followed a confused and slightly concussed Naruto through the hole. All right brat, since you're just a gaki, I'll take it easy on you and destroy you with just one finger said Tsunade as she held up said appendage. Da datbeo, Naruto said confusedly, go on Gaki, kick her ass, shouted Jiraiya from his position on the other side of the hole, as Tsunade's apprentice started panicking, talking about death and destruction of property, and worst of all, more debts that needed to be paid off. What the hell just happened Kayubi? Naruto asked his tenant as he sweat dropped at the behavior of the adults. Who the hell cares Kit? Just kick her ass and be done with it, answered the Kayubi, thinking it would be hilarious getting his container pounded into the ground by an old woman. I have no idea what's going on, but let's do this, shouted the blonde Genin as he made that oh so classic hand sign. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, shadow clone technique, causing five copies of himself to appear, startling his impromptu opponent, four of whom rushed her with their swords drawn as the original and the final clone began to run through hand signs which they completed just as Tsunade dispelled the last of the four clones without so much as a scratch. Futon. Daitapa, wind style, great breakthrough. Kaden. Gokaku no jutsu, fire style, grand fireball technique. As the two unleashed their attacks, they combined and created an explosion which engulfed Tsunade for a full ten seconds before they cut off the chakra supply. Is she okay boss? Asked the clone before he and the original were sent flying from behind, dispelling the clone and revealing a slightly singed Tsunade. Congratulations brat, you managed to singe my clothes, but now I'm going to end this. At this Naruto made a few more clones who charged while Naruto prepared his next attack. As the clones began to attack her, he held his right arm out with his palm up, with his left hand holding his wrist, unknowingly copying his copying sensei focusing chakra into a spherical shape when he was finished, he charged the surprised woman with the technique. However, it was not meant to be, as Tsunade used her Herculean strength to shatter the ground, causing Naruto to stumble and accidentally hit the ground with the technique, making the marks that showed it was incomplete. She then flicked his forehead, making his leaf Hitai 8 fly off, before flicking him again, only this time in the stomach making him fly off, thus ending the fight. What the hell are you doing? teaching him that move Jiraiya. Giving him false hope, you know he'll never master it. I mean it took you a year to learn it and the fourth three to make it, and the two of you have, and had, talent. This no-name kid could never be able to do what you do. Shouted Tsunade to a cowering Jiraiya. What do you mean? Never master it. I could definitely do it. I bet you I could do it in three days. I have to be able to do the impossible if I want to be Hokage, Dadbeo shouted Naruto, causing Tsunade to zone out for a second on flashbacks, before snapping out of it. Oh, is that so brat? She asked, getting a devious idea, tell you what, I'll make a bet with you, you master the jutsu in three days, and I'll come back to Konoha, and I'll even throw in this necklace. And if you lose, I get all of your winnings for tonight. Why would I want a stupid necklace? Asked the blonde, caught up in the moment. It was owned by the Shodime Hokage and is worth so much you could buy three mountains with gold mines in them if you sold it, said Jiraiya from his position on the other side of the hole. Deal, Naruto instantly shouted, 
causing everyone else to sweat drop, before adding a stipulation of his own, surprising the female Sanin, if I win, you also have to teach me and my friend Haku medical jutsu. But if I lose, I'll also give you this. He finished, holding up the scroll that said, Medical Seals. Medical Seals, what are those? Asked Tsunade's companion. They are a set of seals that do things like convert regular chakra to medical chakra, permanently sterilize a room, or increase the potency of any medical chakra within a certain area. Explained Jiraiya, myth that Naruto was willing to give Tsunade the medical seals scroll and not him. HMPH, fine brat, if that's the way you want to play, then deal. If you win, I'll come back to Konoha, give you my necklace, and teach you and your friend medical jutsu. But if I win, I get your 100,000 ryo and that medical seals scroll. It's a deal, see you in three days, said Tsunade as she walked off with her companion hurrying after her. HMPH, I'll show her, I'll, wait. What the hell just happened? shouted Naruto, once again confused as all hell. Dumbass, shut up. You sure you can do that gaki? Asked Jiraiya, understandably concerned. I already can do it, Aero Sanin. Responded the blonde, startling the man, who couldn't believe that the boy had done it in just two weeks. What do you mean gaki? I saw it, you failed the jutsu, how can you know it? I've been able to do it for a couple of days now, I just have to use a clone to do so. Said Naruto as he began walking to the hotel. I just need to up my training from a few dozen to a few hundred in order to do it one-handed. I hope for your sake you're right Gaki, said Jiraiya as he watched his young protege walk off to prepare for the next day of training, before realizing that he was now stuck with the repair bill for the bar's wall. Next day, 9 o'clock at night, Naruto had made good on his promise to Jiraiya about his training regimen and had increased his clones to 250. It had been a full 14 hours of non-stop work, and he was mentally and physically exhausted. However, just as he was about to go to bed, he heard a knock on the door. When he opened it, it was revealed to be Tsunade's young companion who had knocked. May I come in? asked the woman. Sure. Um, replied Naruto, not actually certain of his visitor's name. Oh, how rude of me. My name is Shizune, she said, holding out her hand. Ah, Naruto, he said back as he gave her hand a firm shake, what can I do for you? You need to call off the bet, said Shizune seriously. What? asked a confused Naruto. You need to call off the bet, she repeated, louder than last time, you have no idea what's at stake here. I don't know what caused Tsunade-sama to bet that necklace, but you can't take it. It will only accept her wearing it, and if you take it, it will kill you. She already gave it to two others who were the most important people in the world to her, and they died the next day. She stated, shouting at this point. I don't care, I will win that bet, and Ba-chan will be coming with us to Konoha. Something like a cursed necklace won't kill me, I still have to become Hokage. You don't understand, you can't, started Shizune, before getting interrupted by Naruto. I don't really care, if she knew the risks and still bet the thing then I'm going to take it when I win. If she didn't want to let it go, then Ba-chan shouldn't have bet it. I guess I can't convince you to give this up huh? Asked Shizune, getting a shake of the head from the boy. Very well, just answer me one thing. Why do you keep calling her Ba-chan? Because she is, Naruto replied simply, then held up his hand, stalling any objection she might have. She is Senju Tsunade right? Granddaughter of Senju Hashirama, Right. That means that she is the granddaughter of Uzumaki Mito, the first Hokage's wife. That means she is part Uzumaki, which means that, in some way, shape, or form, we are related. He finished, ecstatic that he had another person to call family. It was at that point that Naruto pulled out a photo and handed it to Shizune. As she looked at it, it was revealed to be a picture of him on his knees with an arm each around Keihi and a Sagao in front of their home. That's my Ododo kun Keihi, and that's my Imoudo chan Asagao. I found them on a recovery mission to Uzugakur. They were being raised by a man named Arashi who asked me to take them to Konoha because they wanted to be ninjas and he couldn't go because he was dying, which is weird, because if he was so sick, then he shouldn't have been able to take us to Uzu. Anyways, he asked me to take care of them and to do everything I could for them. 
That's the reason I applied for clan status in Konoha. The moment I become Chunin, I become the head of the Uzumaki clan in Konoha, and if she wants, she's more than welcome to be a part of it. Said Naruto with a tone that spoke the utmost certainty. It was at this point that Shizune got up and made to leave, saying, I see. I hope you win your bet then. Tsunade-sama, has been so sad since my uncle and her brother died, maybe being a part of a new family will let her move on, she deserves happiness. Oh, Naruto, I also wanted to ask, who is this Haku? She asked him, turning back, and was then surprised when her answer was a blush and another picture. This picture, while it had the three Uzumakis, it also had an old man in red robes, another man with gravity-defying silver hair and a mask, and a beautiful young girl around Naruto's age, who had straight black hair down to her waist, black eyes, and a light blue battle kimono with snowflakes on it. The old man is Gigi, he began, before getting interrupted. You call the Hokage, Gigi? Asked an incredulous Shizun. Yep, anyways, the masked man is Kakashi Sensei, and the black haired girl is Haku chan, he said, making Shizun raise an eyebrow, before a devious smirk appeared on her face. Oh, Haku, chan, does somebody have a girlfriend? She asked, making Naruto splutter and poorly deny the accusation. This is your sensei, if he's there, where are your squad mates? Asked Shizun, whose response was a rather sad smile. They didn't want to come, he answered, causing her to drop the subject. They then spent a little time trading stories of their respective sonim, and then said their goodbyes, preparing for the day of the bet, neither realizing that two people had heard the entire conversation, each with very different mindsets. Final night of the bet. It was the day to put up or shut up, the day that determined the fate of two individuals, it was the day for Naruto to demonstrate that he could use the Rasengan, and it was just Naruto and Tsunade that day as they walked out of the town. Jiraiya was still sleeping, and Shizune was cleaning her and Tsunade's room. Tsunade was acting rather strange in Naruto's opinion, and when he asked about it, she gave him the last answer he would have ever expected. I it's just, I, I heard you talking to Shizun. She said, getting wide eyes from Naruto, I had never really thought about the Uzumaki side of my family, only really paying attention to my Senju heritage, so I thought I was all alone in this world. I if I do come back, can I really live in the Uzumaki district? I'd like to meet the rest of my family. She asked to which Naruto nodded his head before pulling out the same picture he showed Shizune of him and the twins. That's Keihikun, and that's Asagao-chan, I bet they'd love to meet you, especially Asagao-chan, you do seem to have that effect on Kunoichi and those aspiring to be one. He joked, causing her to bop him on the head. That's good to know you little fucker, I'll be sure to visit them. Said a voice from behind them. As they turned around, it was revealed to be the Iwa Shinobi from the other night, except this time he had a scratch through his hit I ate, symbolizing he was a rouge nin. After of course, I kill you tree huggers, loot your corpses, find my money, and maybe have a little fun with that black haired whore. It was just going to go on their names from that conversation with the girl, but a picture will be so much easier, I'll also have to visit that girlfriend of yours. He finished as many more people surrounded the two of them. Conversation, you were listening. Asked Naruto as he got into a ready stance along with Tsunade. The first to kill one gets a reward. He shouted, causing several of his thugs to believing them to be a helpless woman and child rush them and what few civilians were in the area to flee. It was when the first man got to them, however, that a problem occurred. The man had foolishly attacked them from the front, going for a jumping vertical slash. That is, until Tsunade instinctually punched him hard enough in the stomach to liquefy his organs, forcing a large amount of blood out of his mouth, and onto Tsunade. Holy shit, shouted everybody there except for Tsunade and, of course, the guy she just punched, staring at his prone form before looking at a trembling Tsunade, who had collapsed and was staring at the blood on her hands. I don't know what just happened, but I guess it was just a fluke. Kill them, the Iwa Shinobi shouted again, once more prompting his goons to attack. It was as Naruto was defending the two of them when his shinobi instincts kicked in, he traded blow for blow with the bandits, knocking them out one by one, only getting a scratch or two, before they got smart and started going after Tsunade, making it difficult for him to defend, 
as they seemed to suddenly know the importance of coordinated attacks, not letting him have a moment to retaliate. However, even the most proficient of fighters make mistakes, and these were just a bunch of random a-holes. When a man stumbled on a rock on the path, it allowed Naruto to whip out one of his swords and, without thinking, slash it across his enemy's throat, making the rest of them back off. Incompetent bastards, I'll take care of this, shouted the Iwa leader as he stepped forwards drawing a pair kunai, each with a meter long blade, two from a quiver of them on each of his hips, one in each hand. Prepare to die you little tree hugger bastard, he screamed as he charged the young genin, who drew his swords and ran to intercept the man. When he was within reach the Iwa nin thrust the kunai in his left hand, which Naruto knocked out of the way with a thrust of his own, which the Iwa nin dodged by jumping back around 20 feet. He then immediately threw his kunai at Naruto drew two more, stabbed them into the ground to the handle, and started doing hand signs. As Naruto blocked the kunai, the Iwa Nin finished and shouted Doden, second earth style, stone swords before pulling on the kunai, bringing them up, along with a coating of stone, making them a few inches longer, thicker, twice as heavy, sharper, and charged with chakra. He then charged at Naruto again, who also sent chakra to his own blades to counter. It was just not to be however, as the Iwa Shinobi was a Junin for a reason as he simply overpowered and outran the blonde and started to simply slash at him without remorse. Some were blocked by Naruto's blades, and some by his Haori, but he still got several severe slash wounds on his body, legs, hands, and a few on his face before getting kicked away. Dumbass, take off the weight, and kick this bastard's ass. Whatever you damn fox, Naruto mentally screamed as he put his hands in the Taurus seal and flared his chakra twice, making all 150 pounds that his seals placed on him disappear before shifting to the cross seal and made a few cage bunchen before once again focusing chakra into making a Rasengan before charging the man, who had made a clone of his own and was destroying Naruto's. As he rushed the two of them, the clone noticed Naruto coming and placed itself between him and his master and took the attack, and while it was destroyed, it only got the spiral scarring, indicating that it was an incomplete technique. What was that supposed to be brat? was that the Rasengan. The fourth must have just been very lucky and fought nothing but Genin and Chunin if that was one of the jutsu that ended the war. Shouted the Rouge Nin as he destroyed the last of Naruto's clones, before charging him, causing Naruto to clap his hands together and thrust them at his opponent shouting Futon. Yuha Sho, wind style. Beast wave palm knocking the man back, giving him room to prepare his next jutsu as he skipped backwards. Futon. Kei's no Yeba, wind style blade of wind he shouted before firing off the near invisible jutsu. However the black haired man dodged it, but not quickly enough, as he was cut on his left arm, causing it to become useless, and making him drop the blade. You little bastard, that's it, I'm going to kill you, but first I'm going to slit that whore's throat in front of you. Screamed Naruto's foe as he dashed towards Tsunade's still trembling form, drawing back his blade to end her life. Letting out a victory cry and closed eyes, the nin thrust with his weapon, and heard the satisfying sound of pierced flesh, before feeling something wrap around his hand. Opening his eyes, he saw Naruto standing over Tsunade with the rock-enhanced kunai buried in his left palm with his fingers wrapped around the mon's hand keeping him there. He was about to simply pull out of the boy's grip when two hands suddenly burst out of the ground along with a clone, the hands wrapping around his ankles, and the clone jumping on his back, and putting him in a triangle choke, preventing him from moving. The original then held out his right hand, gathering chakra once more into his newest jutsu. Ha, huh, if that's what you're going to use, then I have nothing to worry about. Come on you little tree hugger fuck. The Iwa man taunted, causing Naruto to get so pissed he actually skipped the irrational thinking stage and became extremely focused. Naruto then shoved the spinning ball of chakra into the enemy's chest. At first however, it didn't look like it was doing anything, before the leathery skinned man gained an expression of pain, before vomiting blood and shooting off through a kiosk, leaving the kunai in the blonde boy's hand, and into a wall, where he fell to the ground in a lifeless heap. Naruto then pulled the kunai out of his hand dropping it on the ground with a clang, before turning to Tsunade, who was once again having flashbacks. I win, Bachan, he said with a smile, which Tsunade returned before Naruto was sent flying by a blow to the chest from a man who looked like a boulder with limbs, 
carrying a hammer that probably weighed more than Kei he did. You little bastard, you killed the boss, let's get him, he shouted, making the others cheer as well. It also seemed to make something snap in Tsunade, as, with a loud scream, she immediately forgot the blood that covered her and punched the fat man, instantly killing him, before turning on his colleagues. It was at that point that Jiraiya and Shizun appeared, the latter going to check on the boy, and the former to join the blonde woman. It didn't even take a cursory glance for the young medic to see that there was a serious problem with the blonde. Tsunade-sama, his chest cavity is completely caved in, three, I can't heal this. Shouted the black-haired woman, making her master break off the slaughter, to join her. Shit, he's losing too much blood, he's not going to make it at this rate said the Sanin, as she shoved a few hemoglobin pills into his mouth and then continued treatment. Come on brat, get up, she shouted as she saw her brother's and her lover's face overlap his. Damn it, damn it, damn it, Tsunade mentally screamed as she noticed the seal on Naruto's stomach start to shimmer. What is this darkness, are you dying Kit, I'm afraid I can't let that happen, you need to live if I'm going to kill that Uchiha bastard, said the fox, as he pumped as much chakra as he could into the boy to heal his injuries, not realizing how lucky he was that Naruto hadn't heard him. Don't die, don't die, don't die damn it, you can't die, was the mantra in Tsunade's head as she continued to pump as much medical chakra as she could into the boy in front of her, pulling every trick she knew to keep him alive, some that only she knew, before pausing at a tugging feeling around her neck. When she looked down, it was revealed to be Naruto's hand around her necklace, as he smiled at her and said, this is cough mine now, Ba-chan, before once again going into unconsciousness. He's okay, sighed Shizun, glad that they had gotten Naruto out of immediate danger, though the two women continued treating him, as he could easily slip back. Being Hokage is your dream, huh? One more time, for the last time, I want to believe in someone. Become a great shinobi gaki, become one that's even better than the person you are now thought a smiling Tsunade, as she took off her necklace and put it on Naruto. Hospital next day 4 p.m. The first thing that Naruto ended up doing when he regained consciousness was the one thing he hated doing more than any other. Dot, dot, he stared at the bland white selling of what he assumed was a hospital room, judging by the smell of bleach and antibiotics wafting through the air. Why is it always white? Why can't it just be an awesome shade of orange or something? He asked the heir, startling the person on his left, before he was glomped by Tsunade, almost causing his wounds to open up. Don't you ever do that again, do you hear me? She asked, getting a pained groan from the boy. You dumbass, Kit, you almost killed me, screamed the Kyubi from his prison. Almost killed you, what about me, demanded an indignant Naruto. What about you, Yudo, Naruto, Naruto, shouted a voice preventing the blonde from making a scathing comment to answer Tsunade. I'm sorry, I zoned out, what did you say? I just wanted you to know that when you're completely healed up, we're heading back to Konoha. Oh, okay. He said, nodding, before her words actually registered in his head, wait, we. Yes, we, you won the bet, said Tsunade, pointing at the necklace Naruto was now wearing before continuing, Shizuna's packing for us as we speak and I also have to keep an eye on those siblings of yours, Kami forbid Jiraiya has an actual influence on them. That's true, Naruto told her, nodding, before a thought occurred to him, wait what about that guy the first was fighting? He asked, but before Tsunade could answer, someone else did it for him. You killed him Gaki, congratulations, that was Yoshida Nobo, a high B rank missing nin from Iowa. I sealed his body into a scroll so that you could get the his bounty when we returned to the village, said the voice, revealed to be Jiraiya sitting on the windowsill. I I killed him, asked a trembling Naruto as he looked at this hands. Yes you did, Jiraiya told him with the most serious expression Naruto had ever seen on his face, while he was your first kill, he will not be your last. Murder, torture, theft, blackmail extortion, and many more things that would send any normal civilian to jail or daily occurrences for shinobi, and if you can't take it then you need to find a new line of work gaki. Do you ever get used to it? asked Naruto. No, no you don't. While you may be able to suppress the guilt, you will never fully get used to it, I haven't. And if ever you do, quit, 
If you ever stop feeling guilty at death, you have been doing this job for way too long. I, I understand Aero Sanin, said Naruto, making Jiraiya fall out the window and Tsunade laugh at the name. Damn it brat, I told you to stop calling me that, shouted the man, regaining his place on the sill. Nay, Aero Sanin, Naruto continued, making the man fall onto the floor on his hands and knees mumbling about, disrespectful brats, you know those kanai nobo had, and the things they came in. They're called holsters dumbass, the kanai and their holsters. Why would you want those? You already have your swords, those, at this point the man made the, air quote bunny ears signs with his hands, Uzumaki shuriken, your sealing supplies, and the standard kanai and shuriken, why would you need anything else? Are you trying to be a weapons master? No, of course not. But just because I want to use them, doesn't mean that no one else will. I want to put them in the armory when we get back. He said with a smile, causing Jiraiya to do the same. Sure Gaki, I'll put them into a scroll for you. Now, on to more important business, why didn't you use those shuriken of yours, summons, or your kakatsu? I. Well, um, I forgot said naruto sheepishly causing three voices to say the same thing at the same time dumbass 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 two days later road to konoha naruto had been fully healed it made a bit of a difference when you had a friend that could help you regenerate a gene pool that made you almost impossible to kill and the single greatest medic in the world on your side and it was finally time for the group to go home with most of them being very excited jiraiya was excited because of future research, prospects, and because Naruto had told him that he would finally be able to see his experiment, if it went right. Naruto was excited to go home to see Haku, Asagao, and Keihi, as well as to see if his experiment went right. Shizune was eager to get going because she and Tsunade were finally able to stop roaming Hai no Kuni. Tsunade was excited because she would be able to run the hospital as she saw fit and to visit her new family and Tun Tun was being carried by Shizune. About an hour after they had left, something with several descriptions happened, depending on the viewpoint. Naruto had found it awesome, Jiraiya and Tsunade had found it surprising and got into battle-ready stances, Shizune and Tun Tun had found it terrifying, a couple of spandex-wearing males would have found it youthful, in some manner or another, and a certain bun-haired girl would have found it highly erotic for. It was a massive explosion, large enough to form a mushroom cloud. Yes SSS, it's beautiful, Databeo, screamed an ecstatic Naruto as he fell to his knees, lifted his arms so they were parallel to the ground, and cried. What the fuck was that? Screamed a terrified Shizune as Tun Tun buried her head into Shizune's clothes. It was my newest invention, responded the crying blonde. And what would that be? Asked Jiraiya extremely worried about the blonde and his intentions with whatever it was he had made. Well, I like the explosions from tags, and I found it surprising that such a large blast could come from something so small, so I thought, what would happen if one were to make an exploding scroll? Said Naruto from his place on the tear-stained ground. Naruto, four things are going to happen. One, you are going to teach me how to make that. Two, you are going to hand over all of the exploding scrolls you have now. Three, you are going to tell Serutobi sensei about this, and four, I'm going to buy you all the ramen you can stuff into your face, you fucking genius. Jiraiya told him, the volume of his voice increasing until he was shouting. Kanahagakur no Sato, Hokage Tower. And after Naruto's explanation, we proceeded home without complication, Serutobi sensei. Finished Jiraiya as he stood in front of the Hokage's desk. Very well Jiraiya, Naruto-kun. You may pick up your pay first thing tomorrow morning. Now, Naruto kun, I'd like to see this exploding scroll of yours, and I request that you teach it to a few people whom I choose. As long as it's not Sakura or the Tem, I really don't care who you want me to teach it to. Though I would prefer that as few people as possible know about this Gigi. Responded the blonde. Very well, Anbu, please bring Nara Shikaku. The Anbu commander, five, and my advisors here please. Asked Hiruzen as Nako appeared. Wait, Nako-san, could you also bring Higurushi and my younger siblings here as well? Asked Naruto. Please do so Nako, said the Hokage as the female Anbu looked at him for confirmation. 
About ten minutes later, the seven people sent for arrived in the office along with Shimura Danzo, as he had been having a conversation with the advisors when they had been sent for. What is it you wish to discuss, Hokage-sama? Asked Mitokado Homura, one of the advisors and apparent spokesperson for the group asked. As the Hokage was about to answer, there was a rather shrill shout of, Aniki. As twin red blurs shot towards Naruto, knocking him over. After a tearful reunion, and introduction of the twins and Tsunade where she almost killed them both via suffocation with her massive breasts, the group was led by the Hokage to an isolated cliff overlooking a section of the forest. Would you please explain now, Hokage-sama? Asked Homura once more. If you would Naruto-kun. He indicated the blonde, instead of answering. Well, I'm not sure what you're here to do, but I'm here to blow something up. Higurushi-san is here to witness it, and tell me if he wants to sell it in his shop. My siblings are here to meet Ba-chan, and Ba-chan is here to meet the twins. He responded. Hum, interesting. And why would we be here to witness an explosion? Asked Yudatane Kaharu, the second advisor. Instead of answering, Naruto made five clones, gave one a scroll, and sent him off. After about five minutes of conversation, Naruto stood up along with two of his clones and each shouted, one at a time. Fire in the hole, shouted the original, facing off to the left. Fire in the hole, shouted clone one, facing forwards. Fire in the hole, shouted clone two, facing right. Three, shouted the original again, facing the same direction. Two, shouted clone one again, also facing the same direction. One, shouted clone two, who was facing the same direction as well. Six, it was at that point that Naruto punched his final clone in the head, dispelling it. Then, after a brief delay, a massive explosion once again tore through the woodlands, forming a mushroom cloud. At this point, the shared thought in everyone's head, including those who had already seen it except for Naruto, was, holy shit. It took about five minutes to get everybody back to the world of the living, and after they did, Naruto had a discussion with the Hokage on who to teach. Naruto only wanted to teach Jiraiya, but the third asked him to also teach himself, Shikakao, Tsunade, and the Anbu commander as well, and that it would be listed as another B-rank mission, with pay, for him if he did. When that was settled Naruto and Higurushi began to talk about selling the scroll, and eventually came to an agreement. Higurushi would sell it in his store, but customers would have to special order them, as the man didn't want something like that in his store for any extended period of time. One week later, it had been a busy week for pretty much everyone in the village, but none more so than five of the six residents of the Uzumaki district, and one ice user, Naruto, Keihi, Asagao, Tsunade, Shizun, Haku. Naruto was training pretty much non-stop on his chakra control in order to learn even the least effective of medical jutsu Tsunade had promised to teach him, 7. He had also learned and taught Tsunade and Shizun the seals that could convert regular chakra to medical chakra, that little fact pissed off Jiraiya to no end, and was moving on to various other medical seals though he had slowed down with them for the moment. He would also train with both the twins and Jiraiya. The twins were placed into the academy, which was an extremely proud day for the three Uzumakis and lead to the three of them being placed in the hospital for overeating at Ichiraku's as Tsunade and Shizun teased them while Tun Tun comforted them. For Tsunade and Shizun, they had moved into one of the houses in the Uzumaki district. Tsunade had then turned the hospital on its ass with the help of Shizun, training several medics to enhance their abilities, and training new ones, including, and in this story, most importantly, Haku. Tsunade would also attend meetings with Jiraiya and the third Hokage, in which no one knew what happened. Haku would spend most of her days with Tenten, who helped her with her weapon skills, in the hospital, working on her medical skills, and working directly under Tsunade, for whom she had become a second apprentice, or with Naruto. It was a rather nice day and Naruto and Haku were eating together on a bench after getting some onigiri, eight when two square rocks with eye holes walked up to them. After the two of them stared at the boxes and vice versa for a few minutes, Naruto finally couldn't handle it anymore. What are you doing? I've repeatedly told you that rocks aren't rectangular. That's just like you to figure it out, just what I'd expect from my rival, said one of the rocks, as they began to flash a bright white before exploding in a massive amount of smoke. Cough, 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 too much smoke, 
said a voice as the smoke cleared, revealing six children, five of whom were wearing goggles on their foreheads. I am the future Hokage, Konohamaru, said a boy with brown hair and eyes, a long blue scarf, and a skull cap, as he struck a pose. I am the sassiest Kunoichi in Konoha, Moegi, said a little girl with orange hair done up in two gravity-defying pigtails and blush marks on her cheeks, as she too struck a pose, but behind and to the left of Konohamaru. I'm the smartest boy in Konoha, Udon, said a boy with his black hair in a bowl cut, snot coming out of his nose, and glasses, as he struck a pose behind and to the right of Konohamaru. I'm annoying, Naruto interrupted the boy, who turned out to be Keihi. That's not fair Aniki, you should have let him finish, said Asagao, who had her hands on Keihi's shoulders as he crouched in the dirt with a rain cloud over him. Can I go now? asked the only one who wasn't wearing goggles, a girl that was a Hyuga based off her eyes. Sure Hanabi, sighed Konohamaru, prompting the girl to leave. You said you were gonna play ninja with us today, Aniki, said a recovered Keihi. I find it cute, but why would you play ninja, Naruto-kun? asked Haku. She likes him, was the combined thought of the five children. Because they want to be ninjas, explained Naruto. It helps with things like evasion, kanai and shuriken throwing skills, hiding, detection, trap making, and other things, explained Naruto to a nodding Haku. Is this your girlfriend boss? asked a smirking Konohamaru, making the two teenagers blush. I like this one more than that bitch with the huge forehead, he remarked, causing the other four children to nod their heads. Then, an aura of death enveloped the area, making Konohamaru, Moegi, and Udon slowly turn and see a demonic Sakura. Keihi and Asagao were concerned as well, but only for the other three's safety, since while Naruto was around, his natural, Aniki instincts, pretty much made them untouchable, as demonstrated when Sakura ate dirt the first time she had tried to hit Keihi for in his presence for being, rude. You brat, screamed Sakura, at this, the, Konohamaru ninja squad, ran away screaming, followed by a furious Sakura. Let's go make sure Sakura doesn't kill them, sighed Naruto, prompting the other three to follow him. As they neared the corner, they heard a voice say, Hey you little shit, that hurt. Well, that's that, now here's an omake. Omake, Jiraiya's teaching methods. It was an average day in Konoha, the birds were chirping, the trees were green, several individuals were leaving to go shed the blood of people they didn't know and somewhere a blonde-haired boy and a white-haired man were having their first lesson. Why am I supposed to wear this? asked Naruto as he fiddled with a collar with a rather large black box on it that Jiraiya had made him put on, cookie if you know what it is. Just a little incentive to get the seals right, responded the pervert, as he fiddled with a small black cylinder with a red circle on top that fit in the palm of his hand. All right, I want you to write the most perfect Raiden barrier tag I showed you that you can. I don't care about speed, I just want quality. At this Naruto nodded and took out his sealing supplies, a brush, an empty paper tag, and a bottle of ink made with his blood. Naruto slowly drew the seal for the tag as well as he could. After about a minute, he was finished. Blowing on it to dry the ink he then handed it to Jiraiya for quality inspection. Two minutes of examination later, Jiraiya had a solemn expression on his face. Sorry Gaki this isn't up to snuff, I'm going to have to punish you. He finally said. What do you mea? Z z z a a a p p p. Get up you big baby, it was only 25,000 volts, scolded the toad Sanin as he glared at the twitching form of his apprentice. What the hell was that? Screamed Naruto, still having muscle spasms on the ground. A shock collar, replied Jiraiya nonchalantly. What, why would you give me a shock collar? asked the blonde. So you'll get it right, and it's funny as all hell. Said the Sanin as he pushed the button again. Ah, now man up and write that tag again. How about you put this damn thing on, see how much of a, man, you are. Grumbled Naruto. Unfortunately for Naruto though, the Sanin had heard him. Are you kidding me, that crap hurts, there's no way I'm putting that thing on. He said as he once again pressed the button. Ah, yep. Just another average day in Konoha. You brat, screamed Sakura. At this, the Konohamaru ninja squad ran away screaming, followed by a furious Sakura. 
Let's go make sure Sakura doesn't kill them, sighed Naruto, prompting the other three to follow him. As they neared the corner, they heard a voice say, Hey you little shit, that hurt. This voice was honestly of no concern to the three Uzumakis and Haku. That is until they heard Moegi scream, Hey you big jerk. Let him go, causing them to rush even more to make sure that they weren't hurt. As they turned the corner, they saw a group of six people in the alley, the Konohamaru ninja squad, Sakura, and two strangers, one of whom was holding Konohamaru into the air, with Sakura begging the boy to leave him alone. Hey, what are you doing? asked Haku, making the boy, who was wearing a full black bodysuit with a Suna Hitai 8 on his head, purple war paint, and a wrapped package on his back, look at her for a moment, before a lecherous grin appeared on his face. Well hello there beautiful, how about you and me have a little fun sometime? He asked. Hell no you tem. Aniki, get em, shouted Keihi, turning to Naruto, only to realize that he was no longer there. Well, it looks like, Aniki, abandoned you, chuckled the black clad boy, still holding a struggling Konohamaru. Come on Konkuro, if he finds out about this, he's going to get angry. Said the boy's companion, a young blonde girl, with a white battle kimono, a giant fan on her back, and her hitai eight around her neck, symbolizing her Suna Shinobi status. Oh lighten up to Mari, he's probably finding his latest, prey. He won't bother us for a while, and I've been bored for a while. And besides, impolite brats need to be taught manners. He reasoned, before turning back to Haku, so how about it? You up for a date with an awesome ninja like me? Sorry, I don't go out with guys who wear more makeup than I do. She said, constantly, but before he could make a scathing comment, an arm wrapped around his and the Tamari girl's necks like a friendly hug, except that each hand had a sword at one of the two Suna Nin's throats, making the black clad boy flinch and drop his prisoner. It's not nice to deny a lady her right to choose, is it? Asked a voice in between the two terrified foreign ninjas. When the two looked in between them, it was revealed to be a blonde boy around their age, wearing a green green haori, two hidai atesh, his left arm around Konkuro's neck, holding the sword to Temeri's, and his right arm around Temeri's neck, holding the blade to Konkuro's. Thank you Naruto-kun, replied the ice-wielding Kunoichi with a giggle. You bitch, it's war paint, shouted Naruto's male captive, before immediately shutting up as the blade pressed harder against his throat. Now, what would two Suna nins be doing here? asked their captor, prompting the girl to explain. We are here for the Chunin exams, and we decided to walk around to relieve the boredom, when that kid bumped into my brother. Naruto then looked at Konkuro, taking in his appearance, before turning back to Tamari. Isn't Suna in the middle of the desert? He asked her, getting a nod, and does he wear this frequently? He continued, getting another nod. Turning back to Konkuro, he asked, rather incredulously, so, you wear a full black bodysuit in the middle of the desert. Getting a giggle from his right and the people in front of him and a glare from his left. Naruto then let them go, sheathing his blades, he then walked to his friends, turning his back to his one-time captives, making Konkuro fume at his attitude, and take the wrapped bundle off his back. I'll teach you to disrespect me, you bastard. He shouted, getting a panicked look from his sister. Are you seriously going to use that here? She asked, but before he could reply, a stone came flying out of nowhere and hit him on the hand, making him release the bundle. Careful Kit, there's one of my kind in that tree. That's just Sasuke, I know he's evil, but he's not a biju. Wrong branch, Kit, you can both come down now, shouted Naruto, interrupting Sasuke, making him scoff at Naruto's stupidity. What are you talking about Dobi? I'm the only, Konkuro, what are you doing? You're an embarrassment to our village. Came a monotonous voice fro the opposite side of the tree from Sasuke. What? I didn't sense him at all, but the Dobi could. Then there was an eruption of sand in front of Konkuro, making the black clad boy splutter a half assed excuse before the person in front of him said, Shut up or I'll kill you. He then turned to Naruto, ignoring the muttered apologies, revealing himself to be a red headed boy, with brown and black clothes, and a large gourd on his back and told the blonde boy, I apologize for my squad mate's behavior, and I guarantee it won't happen again. My name is Subaku no Gara. may I ask yours? I am Uzumaki Naruto, he replied simply, 
making the girl widen her eyes a little before walking away with her team one. My name is, started Sasuke, before once again being interrupted, this time by Gara. I don't care what your name is weakling, he stated before walking off, making Sasuke fume, and Sakura screech about how Sasuke was better than the red head. Come on, we need to meet with Kakashi Sensei, sighed Naruto, walking off in the opposite direction of the Suna team, ignoring Sasuke's glare and Sakura's yell about how he couldn't order them around because he was the dead last. Junin meeting, same time, Hiruzen Serutobi stood before various Jonin, special Jonin, and Chunin in a large meeting room. Clearing his throat, he said, I am sure that the reason for which you have been called here is obvious, given the time of the year. Realization seemed to dawn among many of the men and women present at that moment, making it clear that they had forgotten anything at all was happening at that time of the year. It is time for the Chunin selection exams, and we will be hosting them, Hiruzen said as he looked amongst the crowd. The Sunagakar has submitted applications for 10 teams, Omegakar has done so for 8 teams, Kusagakar has done so for 5 teams, Takigakar has done so for 4 teams. Karigakar has done so for two teams, and the newly established Otogakar has done so for a single team. This brings the total number of foreign genin competing to 90, Hiruzen said with a puff of his pipe. All 90 of these genin and their Jonin sensei will be arriving within the next week. You're being informed of this now because some of them will be arriving as early as today. Quite a few people were stunned by the suddenness. When does it begin? Kakashi asked, remaining calm as expected. The Chunin exams will begin on the first day of July, Hiruzen answered. Now, I would like Hitaki Kakashi, Yuhi Kuranai, and Serutobi Asuma to step forward. As you are the three Jonin in charge of the teams of rookie Genin, I give you the choice of whether or not you would like to nominate any of your Genin first. Keep in mind that the only requirement to nominating them is that they have completed at least eight missions. It is generally recommended that they have done twice that. Kakashi Hitaki stepped forward appearing to form the seal of confrontation as he spoke. I, Hitaki Kakashi, am the Jonin in charge of Team 7, composed of Uchiha Sasuke, Haruno Sakura, and Uzumaki Naruto. I nominate all three of my students for the Chunin selection exams. Naturally, his words shocked nearly everyone as he took a step back, returning to the line that he formed with the other Jonin sensei. Then, Kurinai stepped forward and formed the seal of confrontation before she spoke. I, Yuhi Kuranai, am the Jonin in charge of Team 8, composed of Abarame Shino, Hayuga Hanada, and Inazuka Kiba. I nominate all three of my students for the Chunin selection exams. Even more people were shocked by her nominations than Kakashi. After all, they had mostly been surprised by Kakashi's nomination because Naruto Uzumaki was on his team. They expected the last Uchiha to be very skilled, after all. And then, Asuma stepped forward and formed the seal of confrontation before he spoke. I, Serutobi Asuma, am the Jonin in charge of Team 10, composed of Yamanaka Ino, Nara Shikamaru, and Akamichi Choji. I nominate all three of my students for the Chunin selection exams. The nomination of three rookie Genin teams back to back had everyone present shocked. Even the Hokage was a little surprised. Hold on a second, Yumino Uruka said, Yes, Uruka. Hiruzen asked calmly. I was the sensei of all nine of those genin four months ago, Uruka said, trying to remain calm. I will agree that they are all skilled shinobi, but they're not ready. They've only been genin for a little bit. No matter how far they've come, there is no way that they are ready for this. The chunin exams can be deadly. I cannot understand what these three jonin are thinking. I was a chunin when I was less than half as old as Naruto, Kakashi said with a shake of his head and I was not a genin for too much longer than Naruto has been either. He'll be fine. Naruto isn't like you, Uruka said, nearly yelling. None of them are like you. They are not ready for this. We'll be the judge of that, Kakashi said sternly. Naruto and the others are not your students any longer. They are soldiers under our command. It is not your place to question our decisions. Perhaps you should listen to him, my eternal rival. Guy said as he walked up and placed a hand on Aruka's shoulder. I can understand the youthful drive to have your genin compete with my own, but maybe it would be for the best if you had them wait a year like I did. Hum, did you say something? Kakashi asked as he looked at Guy as though he had just seen him. 
Before Guy could rant about Kakashi being cool, Hiruzen cleared his throat. That is enough. I will let the nominations stand. As Jonan, I trust their word. I will now begin taking nominations for the older teams of Genin. Uruka grimaced at that, but he could not say anything. The Hokage had spoken, after all. Team 7. Three hours later, yo, said a jovial Kakashi from his place from the top of a pole. You're late, screeched Sakura, making Naruto and Sasuke wince. Sorry about that, I was almost here before I had to go back to my house to make sure my stove wasn't on. He explained. Of course Kakashi-sensei, it wouldn't be very good if your home burned down, the fire might have spread to the rest of the village. Said Naruto, nodding, making his comrades face fault, including Kakashi, who had never actually had someone agree with one of his excuses. Anyways, I signed you guys up for the Chunin selection exams, along with the other two rookie teams. It will happen on the 1st of July in the academy in room 301 by 1 o'clock. It was at that point that he disappeared in a puff of smoke, and another person appeared, revealed to be the Andu Neko. Oh, hello, Neko-san, said Naruto, startling his squad mates who were wondering how he was so familiar with an Andu member. Hello Uzumaki-san, the Hokage requests your presence as soon as possible. She said before vanishing in a puff of smoke. Hum, I wonder what Gigi wants. Later Tem, Sakura, said Naruto before he placed his hands in the ram sign before he too vanished. How did the dobi do that? I have to make his other sensei teach me, I bet they would be ecstatic to teach me, the last Uchiha. He he didn't call me Sakura-chan. What happened to him? And why do I care so much? Hokage's office. When the smoke cleared, Naruto saw that he was one of only three people in the room, with the other two being the Hokage and a young girl with a Kusagakar Hitai 8 and crimson hair. Oh, welcome Naruto-kun. Sit down, sit down, I'd like you to meet Karen. Said the Hokage jovially. Hello Karen-chan, I'm guessing from your red hair that you're an Uzumaki. He said, making the girl blush at the suffix and nod. Karen here has asked to be transferred here so that she could be part of the Uzumaki clan. We have already done the tests, and now I'd like you to take her to the Uzumaki district to get her settled in. After the Chunin exams are finished, she will be a full Konoha shinobi, and a member of your clan. That is, if, as head of your clan, you allow it. Of course I'd allow it, Gigi. Come on Karen-chan, let's get you home. Stated the boy, grabbing her by the hand and leading her out of the office. As they walked, Karen used her sensor abilities to find out what she could about the boy. His chakra, it's so, so warm and bright, it's like the sun. She thought, before noticing something else, wh what's this? He has another chakra, but, it's so dark, so, evil. I'm starting to panic just thinking about it. Shinobi Academy, day of Chunin exams noon. Naruto and his teammates were walking through the halls of the academy when the sounds of a scuffle greeted them. They looked to see a group of people surrounding a doorway with two people guarding it one with a backpack and one with a pair of giant kanai, with a familiar bun-haired brunette in front of it. Please, just let us in, shouted the girl, who was holding on to a boy with a bowl cut, perfectly round eyes, huge, eyebrows, and was wearing mostly green, they'd just knocked down. Whatever little girl, brats shouldn't be here, if you can't even pass us then you'll be destroyed in the Chunin exams. How horrible, said one of the bystanders, making the, guard, with the kanai laugh. Horrible, this is our kindness. The Chunin exams aren't easy, even we failed three straight times. We've seen it all, teams that quit as shinobi, teams that die during the exams. Not to mention Chunins often become squad captains. The failure of the mission can mean the death of a comrade or themselves, and it would be all your fault. And you still think you can pass. Don't make me laugh, we're just thinning out the herd, those who will fail anyways, is that so wrong? Now go and play with your doll's little girl, and don't ever waste my time again. I may agree with you, but, I'm taking the exams. Oh and while you're at it, take down this pathetic genjutsu, I'm going to the third floor. Said Sasuke, when, Kanai, had finished. What's he talking about? I don't know, this is the third floor isn't it? So you noticed, asked, backpack. 
Of course, responded the Uchiha, before turning to Sakura, you must have noticed it first right. Sasuke-kun, of course, I noticed a while ago, she said, before Naruto said. We've only gone up one set of stairs after all, it'd be impossible for us to be at the third floor, unless we started at the second floor. Finished Naruto, as the sign above the door turned from 201 to 301. Hum. Dot not bad. Dot but all you did was. See through it, shouted. Kanai, as he rushed Sasuke, making to kick the boy while, backpack, did the same for Naruto. As Sasuke went to kick, Kanai, both were stopped by the boy wearing green, his bruises somehow completely gone. He's fast, he was able to see both kicks and slide himself in between. Amazing. He's completely different from that weakling that was getting knocked around earlier. Thought Sakura, who was amazed at the boy's strength. Catching my kick with his hand, what kind of training lets him do something like that? Mentally wondered Sasuke, before a frantic shout made him look at Naruto and, backpack. Arg, let go, let go, you're gonna break it, shouted the other genin, as Naruto held on to his shin, squeezing tighter and tire. Naruto, what the hell are you doing? Let him go, screeched Sakura, making Naruto, as well as everyone else there hold their ears from the volume. Hey, what happened to the plan? You're the one who said we shouldn't draw attention to ourselves, said another person, with straight black hair and pale white eyes, to the green-clad nin, who simply shook his head and walked towards Sakura. So you are Haruno Sakura. My name is Rock Lee, let's go out together. I'll protect you till I die, he said, giving her a sparkly smile and a thumbs up. No way, you're weird, deadpanned the pink-haired Kunoichi, making Lee slump to the ground with a thundercloud above him. She said I'm weird. As this was happening, the white-eyed boy walked up to Sasuke, and their female teammates started talking to Naruto. Hey you, what is your name? Questioned the genin. When you want to learn someone's name, it's polite to give yours first. Replied Sasuke smugly as he started walking away. Hello Naruto, how are you? Asked the girl, revealed to be Tenten. Not bad Tenten-chan, how is the store doing? We've actually doubled our profits thanks to your seals, they're the cheapest in town thanks to you being our supplier, and that makes everybody want to visit our store. Apparently seals are very popular, it's just that no one wants to pay such high prices for them, and the art is too complicated to do it themselves. She stated, making Naruto gape a little before replying. That's wonderful news, well, we should be going now Tenten-chan, I'll catch you later. Said the blonde leading his companions off to the second story. Tenten Chan, why does he call her that? Why not me? What does that bitch have that I don't? It was as Team 7 entered a large foyer with a balcony, that a now familiar voice rang out. Hey you, with the attitude, I wish to fight you, stated the voice, revealed to be Lee. You want to fight right now? Asked Sasuke with a disgusted expression on his face. Yes I do, said the boy, jumping down to their level, too, my name is Rock Lee. When you want to learn a person's name, you introduce yourself first, right? Uchiha Sasuke. So you do know who I am? Asked the scowling brooder. I want to fight you, stated Lee, as he got into a combat stance, I want to test my abilities against the offspring of the genius ninja clan. Plus, he finished, before winking at Sakura. Eu, those lower eyelashes are so you. Hair is lame, eyebrows, she stated, starting out at volume, ear rape, and finishing at a mumble. You are an angel, shouted Lee, blowing a heart that came out of nowhere at the pinket. Kya, screeched Sakura, dodging the heart, slamming the back of her head into the ground by bending backwards, making it hit a pillar behind her with a squishing noise. That was too close, she thought from her place on the ground, before popping up and yelling at Lee. Hey! Don't throw weird things. I barely escaped with my life. You don't have to be so that mean, said the emotionally hurt boy. Challenging me knowing the Uchiha name. Frankly you're a fool, you're about to learn. What this name means, thick brows, stated Sasuke with a dark look in his eyes. Please, stated the confident boy. I'm lucky to already get to face the number one rookie, and I'll prove myself to you, Gai-sensei. Doesn't Uchiha mean? Fan, 
asked Naruto, making everyone face fault. I'll say this now. Started Lee, ignoring what just happened, you cannot defeat me. Because I am the strongest genin in Konoha. He stopped my kick with his hand. That wasn't something a human could do, I don't know what kind of jutsu he used but, started Sasuke in his head, before finishing out loud. Quote dot dot dot, sounds fun, I'll do it. Oh, gasped Sakura, looking at the clock, Sasuke, don't. We only have 30 minutes to the meeting. I'll be done in five, stated the Uchiha genin, rushing Lee, prompting Sakura to scream his name. He's coming, I'm sorry guy sensei, I may need to break your rules. I may need to use that move, thought the boy with the massive eyebrows as he blurred out of existence, only to appear above Sasuke in the middle of a kick. Sasuke dodged it, and then immediately had to dodge several more attacks. Damn, I can't dodge it, I'll have to block, thought the Uchiha, before he was kicked in the face, getting another scream from Sakura. What, what's going on, he slipped through my guard. Dot was that ninjutsu or genjutsu? Hey, whatever, this gives me a chance to practice it, he thought before closing his eyes for a second, and then opening them. Sasuke-kun, what, that's, dot the Sharingan. Hey, Sasuke-kun is incredible. If he can do with that eye half of what Kakashi-sensei can do, this guy is going down. She thought, before watching as Sasuke rushed Lee again, before he was kicked into the air by his opponent three. What, my Sharingan couldn't read that. This can't be. Yes, my techniques are neither ninjutsu or genjutsu. Started the boy, jumping up behind Sasuke and continuing. Yes, my techniques are simple Tai Judas, Sasuke-kun. You may not believe it to be something so basic, but they say the Sharingan has the ability to reveal and copy Nin, Gen, and Taijutsu. While it may be true that reading the hand seals needed for Nin and Genjutsu, which need chakra to be performed, will give you an advantage in battle, but Taijutsu is a little bit different. Hey Kaiubi, how do you think they've stayed in the air so long? I have no idea Kit. You think they're filled with helium or something? What do you mean? Asked the Uchiha unable to move. Even if you can read my movements with your eyes, it doesn't mean anything unless you have the speed and strength to counter me. Basically, even if you can see it, if your body can't move, then it's useless. Explained Lee as he undid the bandages around his wrists. Do you know this? A mob strong people, exists genius types and hardworking types. If your Sharingan makes you a genius type from the Uchiha blood, I am simply a hardworking type who has only mastered Taijutsu. You could say that I am the worst possible opponent for you, and I'll prove with this technique that hard work surpasses genius. Holy crap, are they still up there? But before Lee could do whatever it was that he was going to do, a pinwheel flew out like a kanai, and pinned the bandage to a wall. That's enough Lee, shouted a voice, making everybody turn to look as Lee landed on his feet, and Sasuke simply fell, revealing a, a turtle. Lee, that technique is forbidden, shouted the turtle making Lee mumble ineligible apologies, you fool. You think you can get away with a half-assed apology like that? You know what it means for a shinobi to reveal his abilities. Are you prepared to take your punishment? Yes. Then here comes Gai-sensei, shouted a voice as a burst of smoke appeared on the turtle's back, revealing a man who looked like a large version of Lee, in a disturbing pose. How are you kids doing in your springtime of youth? screamed the large man, getting horrified faces from Team 7. Now Lee, it is time for your punishment, stated the man, but before Lee could respond, he was punched in the face. I'm sorry sensei, shouted Lee from his place on the ground, I won't ever do that without permission ever again. And if I do, I'll run from here to Suna and back in less than a day. And if I can't do that, I'll do 5,000 push-ups underwater. And if I can't do that, I'll climb the Hokage mountain with only my teeth. Yash, screamed the boy, standing up with a salute. Lee, Gai Sensei, Lee, Gai Sensei, Lee, Gai Sensei. It was at that point that the two identical males hugged and suddenly, the scenery changed to a sunset beach. Horror overload, brain shutting down, brain rebooting, memory repressed, brain working at full capacity. I lost to that, I'm going to have to kill everyone in the bingo book to regain my family's honor. Ah. Kayubi, wipe the memory. Get rid of it, get rid of it. I'm trying kit, I'm trying. 
Now Li, say goodbye to your friends and head to the examination room, said Guy, getting a nod from the green genin, before the man vanished once more. Goodbye Sakura-chan, Sasuke-kun, Naruto-kun, shouted the mini-me, as he jumped back up to the balcony and disappeared down the hallway. Let's go, Naruto, Sakura, said Sasuke, as he started walking to the exam room. When they got there, they were surprised to see Kakashi standing there. Oh, so Sakura, came here too, eh? Now you can properly take the exam, he said, getting a confused expression from Sakura. What do you mean Kakashi-sensei? The truth is that this test can only be taken by teams of three. If I had told the truth, one of the boys might have pressured you to take the exam, but now they can take it. Now, no matter what happens, know that I'm proud of you, now go. He said, before vanishing in a swirl of leaves, prompting his team to open the doors to the room and begin their exam. The first thing the trio noticed was the sheer number of people there. The second thing they noticed was the killer intent that was being leveled at them. Now, while Sakura, and to an extent Sasuke were scared, Naruto, was actually laughing on the inside, due to his tenant having blasted easily over a hundred times that in his sleep. What do you say we show them how it's really done? Asked the fox, getting a sadistic grin from Naruto, making the people in the room a little wary of him. How cute, this is how you do it, said Naruto in a rather loud and condescending tone, before blasting the room in a five second burst of a watered down version of the Kyuubi's killer intent, actually making three teams leave, a couple people vomit, and one team from Kiri actually applaud him for. H how did the Dobi do that? That was worse than what came from Itachi on that night. H how D did N Naruto D do that? That W was worse than Z Zabuza. Sasuke kun, came a screeching voice from behind Sasuke, before a purple blur tackled Sasuke from behind, getting a screech from Sakura. You're troublesome as always, Shikamaru Nara said as he walked up to them alongside Choji Akamichi, who was eating a bag of chips as always. And you're lazy as always, Naruto said with a light smile. I figured your lazy ass would be sleeping or watching the clouds. What brings you here? Troublesome women, Shikamaru muttered under his breath. Ino and his mom, Choji clarified, getting a glare from Ino at that. I guess everyone made it, a rather loud voice said. Naruto's attention turned to an approaching Kiba Inazuka, who was grinning. His teammates, Shino Aburame and Hinata Hayuga were close behind. Wow, they let you in. Naruto asked with a grin. I guess anyone can get in here. Kiba grinned back at Naruto. I was thinking the same thing when I saw you here. Don't make me kick your ass, Naruto said as he jabbed his chest with his thumb. 5. Maybe you guys should keep it down, a white-haired leaf genin with glasses and a set of purple clothes on said as he approached them. I suppose you are the nine rookies that the village has been talking about. I guess I can't blame rookies for being ignorant of the situation. Naruto frowned as he looked at the genin. He knew that all of his comrades were looking at him too. This guy smell like snakes. I don't like snakes, they take way too much energy to catch, and the venom is annoying. I can't smell anything, really, oh man, I'm going to have to start upgrading those senses of yours. I never did understand why you humans depend on your eyes, when the nose and ears are so much better. This isn't a picnic. The Chunin exams are a dangerous event, and you're not helping matters by talking loudly amongst yourselves. Many of the other contestants are tense enough as it is, especially with that little display of yours, Kabuto said with a sigh. Since you guys are new, maybe I can help you out a bit. My name's Yakushi Kabuto, and I guess you could call me a veteran at this. You've taken the Chunin exams before? Choji asked. Kabuto rubbed the back of his head sheepishly. This is my seventh attempt. Wow, they must be tough, Sakura said, seeing that Kiba was about to insult him. I bet you've learned plenty of things in your time in the exams. Indeed, I have, Kabuto said as he removed a deck of cards from his hip pouch. I've obtained a great deal of information through the Chunin exams. To better keep the information sorted, I've imprinted them on these, my ninja info cards. They appear blank at a first glance but my chakra reveals the information hidden on them. What kind of information do you have on them? Sakura asked. Oh, I have plenty, Kabuto replied. For instance, 
Did you know that there are 24 teams from the Konoha, 10 teams from Suna, 8 teams from AIM, 5 teams from Kusa, 4 teams from the Take, 2 teams from Kiri, and 1 team from Odo here. I have information on all 159 contestants, though my information on the Odo Ninja isn't very good. Their village is new and small, after all. And if we wanted information on a specific ninja, could we get it from you? Sasuke asked. Kabuto grinned at that. If you have a name, I'll look the person up. It's easier if you have the name, at least. What do you have on Gara of Suna, Rock Lee of Konoha, and Uzumaki Naruto of Konoha? Sasuke immediately asked, making Naruto scowl, and the other seven to wonder why he would want information on his own teammate. That won't be a problem, Kabuto said as he channeled Chakra into four of the cards and the information showed up on them. First off, you have Rock Lee. He graduated a year before you guys. He's done 20 D rank missions and 11 C rank missions. His sensei is Might Guy, and his teammates are Tenten and Hayuga Neji. His taijutsu skills have increased dramatically over the past year to Lo Junin, but his other skills are virtually non-existent. Like you guys, this is his first attempt at the Chunin exams. As everyone processed that information, Kabuto readied the next card. Because Gara is a foreign ninja, my information on him isn't great, but I do have some interesting information on him. To begin with, he has completed 8 C rank missions and 1 B rank mission. What's truly impressive? However, is that he has returned from all of his missions unharmed. His sensei is Baki, and his teammates are Konkuro and Tamari. Wow, this is interesting. Apparently, he and his teammates are the children of the fourth case cage. This is also his first time taking the Chunin exams, Kabuto explained. That had the attention of all nine rookies. It was unheard of for a genin to go on a B rank mission and come out unharmed. And finally, we have Uzumaki Naruto. He has completed 7D rank missions, F4B rank missions, A and O1C rank T turned A rank. He said, startling everyone in the room, as it had gone deathly silent when Kabuto had started talking. His sensei is Hitaki Kakashi, and his teammates are Haruno Sakura and Uchiha Sasuke. He is also getting private tutoring from Jiraiya of the Densetsu no Sanin. He is the heir to the Uzumaki clan, and as soon as he becomes a chunin, he will become the head of the clan. He killed Yoshida Nobo, a high B rank missing nin from Iowa, on a mission with Jiraiya to bring Senju Tsunade, who is now residing in the new Uzumaki clan district, back to the village. He has high chunin, low junin level ninjutsu, mid chunin level taijutsu, civilian level genjutsu, low chunin level kenjutsu, cage level chakra reserves, knows the shadow clone jutsu, as well as its variants, several earth and wind jutsu and he is one of the best Fuinjutsu experts in the village behind only the Hokage, Jiraiya, and his own sensei, though that might be due to the fact that Fuinjutsu isn't very popular to use other than sealing scrolls and explosive tags. He also has a Keke Genke called Kukutsu that allows him to freely control his blood. This is his first time taking the Chunin exams. By the time Kabuto was finished, another team had left and the rest were simply staring at the blonde in awe and fear and in the case of a few of his fellow rookies disbelief. So that's how the Dobi got so strong, he had one of the Sanin teaching him. Well, if that man would be willing to teach the dead last, he'd probably be ecstatic to teach a true elite like me. Why would Tsunade Sam alive in the same district as Yunaruto? Asked Sakura. She has her reasons, stated the shrugging blonde. You do realize that with pretty much every word said in this conversation, the target on your back keeps getting bigger and bigger, right? It's more fun that way. Hmm, maybe we should teach the pedigree and the silver one not to disrespect Odo. Said one of the genin in the room who was wrapped in bandages, had his hands hidden in his sleeves, and a bale of hay on his back. Sounds fun. Said one of his companions, a boy with spiky brown hair strange headgear, and the kanji for death on his shirt three times. Can I teach the beauty queens a lesson? Asked their final member, a girl with straight black hair, and camouflage. They then streaked across the room towards the group. When they got there, the bandaged one went after Kabuto, but stopped after one swing. Death's shirt went after Naruto, but was stopped as the blonde disappeared and the boy's swords wrapped around DS's neck. The female went after Sakura, 
and succeeded in punching her in the stomach, before whirling around and kicking Eno in the solar plexus. Hum, two out of three ain't bad, stated the bandaged boy, who had an Odo Hidaiate on his forehead. What do you mean too, you only, started Kabuto, before he fell to his knees and vomited. But before anyone could say anything, a huge burst of smoke appeared at the front of the room, revealing several people, the foremost one a scarred man in a black trench coat and with his Hittite worn as a bandana around his head. All right you little shits, settle down or you'll be disqualified before the test even begins. I am Morino Ibiki, in this room, I am your examiner, your judge, your jury, your executioner, and your god, shouted the man, prompting an obviously fake apology from the genin. Now it's time for you to be subjected to the most evil thing in all of existence. He said, grinning. Why you don't mean? Asked Naruto with wide eyes. That's right brats, a written test. No, after explaining all the rules, six Naruto found himself sitting in the front row on the far right side with one of the Kiri Genin who had applauded him on his left. Well Kit, you can't answer any of these questions, so what are you going to do? To hell with it then. I'm going to do something constructive with my time. Naruto mentally shouted, as he pulled out a deck of cards and made that oh so classic hand sign. Cage Bunshin no Jutsu, Shadow Clone Jutsu, he said, making three copies of himself appear, prompting a scandalized look from the proctor. Uzumaki, what the hell are you doing? He shouted, getting a shrug from Naruto. Five card draw, you want in? Asked the boy, getting a shrug and a nod from Ibiki and, Surprisingly, the Kiri Genin next to him, making him dispel two of his clones. Fifty minutes later, everybody in the room but a select few were sweating at the massive killer intent being exuded from Morino Ibiki and the Kiri Genin, who were now sweating, since Naruto had taken everything but their pants, shirts, Hitayates, and Ibiki's gloves. You um, Morino san, started one of the chunin before getting interrupted by an irate Ibiki. What? I'm busy here he shouted, prompting the Chunin to babble about the time and the tenth question. Hum, all right you worthless brats, it's time for the tenth question. This one, however, has a twist to it. You are allowed to choose whether or not you want to take it. What do you mean choose? Asked a now standing Sakura, what happens if we choose no to take the question? Then both you and your team fail, shouted the Junin making a few of the participants shout about how it was obvious as to what the right decision was in that case. And now, the other rule, Ibiki said ominously, making several people swallow a lump that had suddenly appeared in their throats, if you choose to take the test, and fail the question, you lose the right to take the Chunin exams ever again. That's bullshit man, there's lots of people here who've taken the test before now. Shouted an irate Kiba, making Ibiki chuckle before responding. Perhaps, but I've never been the proctor before. But since I'm such a nice guy, I'm giving you a way out. If you don't feel confident, you can simply choose not to take the test and try again next year. Now, those who don't want to take the question, raise your hand now. Your number will be noted, and you and your team may leave. I I won't take it, shouted a random Konoha Genin, who looked to be about 20. I'm so sorry, Genai, Inaho. After that, the floodgates opened, as team after team quit. After about five minutes, the room was substantially emptied. Is that it? Does anyone else want to quit? Asked Ibiki, who then looked at Naruto. What about you brat? Do you think just because of your connections, I'll pass you if you get it wrong? Or do you think that luck of yours makes you invincible? Neither. I can't shy away from danger if I'm a shinobi. I have to do my duty and shut the hell up. And if I do fail I can just get a field promotion, or go straight to Junin. You think this will stop me? Hell no, I'm the future Hokage, and I say do your worst. Shouted the blonde, standing and slamming his hands down on the desk in front of him. Hum, it looks like that little speech has given the rest of them some guts. Damn brat, he's got some charisma. All right then, if you're all sure about this, the proctor said, looking around to make sure, then, Congratulations on passing the first test. He finished, the killer intent disappearing, making all the genin look at him like he was insane. What do you mean, we passed the test? What about the tenth question? Asked an incredulous Sakura. There was no tenth question. 
or rather the option to take it was the tenth question. Answered man. Then what the hell was the purpose of the first nine questions? Were they pointless? Asked an irate Tamari. Of course not. They were to determine your ability to gather information in, hostile, circumstances. Those were questions that even some Junin would have trouble answering. I'm pretty sure most of you figured that out within the first five minutes, and thought, if I want to pass, I'll have to cheat. Of course, if no one knew the answers, there would be no way to gain the information, so we planted two Chunin in the ranks who already knew the answers to get that domino effect. And those who couldn't cheat well, failed. He said, as he pulled off his hit I ate, showing the genin his scarred and mutilated scalp, because in times, information is more important than life. And on missions in the battlefield, people risk their lives to get their hands on it. Horrible. Burns. Screw holes. Scars. Dot the after effects of torture. Marveled Sasuke. Ha <laughs> ha. It must be even worse under those gloves of his. Of course, I wouldn't make the mistake of becoming a prisoner. Thought the bandaged Odo Genin. But, I don't understand the final question. Stated a still confused Tamari, getting a smile from Ibiki. Question 10, is the true purpose of this test? Let me explain. Dot the tenth question, the, take it, or, not take it, decision. Obviously these were painful choices. Those who choose the latter fail along with their teammates. Those who choose to take it, could lose the chance to ever take the test again. A true leap of faith. Say you are Chunin, and you have a mission to steal a secret document. The amount of opposition, their abilities, etc., is all uncount to you, and of course, there could be dozens of traps in the area, waiting for a poor unsuspecting idiot to trip them. Now, do you accept, or not accept? Because you don't want to die, because you don't want your comrades hurt, can you avoid the dangerous mission? No, like Blondie here said, you do your duty and you shut the hell up. There are some missions you can't avoid. The ability to be courageous, and to survive any hardship, this is the ability needed to become Chunin. Those who cling to, there's always next year, will forever walk away like the pathetic trash they are. Now, I'd like to wish you guys. Smash. As Ibiki was talking, a large dark mass suddenly came through the window, interrupting the man. The mass then spread open to reveal that as was actually a banner that read, the sexy and single Mitarashi Anko, and there was a woman inside. All right you brats, no time for celebration. I am Mitarashi Anko, proctor of the second exam. Let's go, follow me, she shouted, striking a pose, making everyone question her sanity. Great, more snakes, you're early again, Anko, stated Ibiki, making the woman sag a little before she got right back up. Never mind that, follow me to training ground 44, she shouted again, jumping out of one of the unbroken windows. Hell yeah, sounds like fun shouted naruto as he too jumped out an unbroken window making everybody wonder what the hell just happened training ground 44 front entrance welcome to training ground 44 otherwise known as the forest of death and my personal playground this is also the site of the second stage of the exams stated the proctor still shouting at the assembled crowd of genin the forest in question being a giant monstrosity of disturbing noises and shadows Hey, it doesn't look that tough, boasted Kiba, before a kanai whizzed past his face, and Anko appeared behind him, licking the blood from the wound. It's loud brats like you who always die first, spilling all that crimson liquid I love so much. She said, making Naruto sigh, knowing he was safe from her, 7. I'll make an exception for you though, man your blood tastes bad. But before he could respond the proctor quickly armed herself with another kanai holding it to Akusanin's stomach who was behind her with the kunai she threw in his tongue. Are these people trying to piss me off? What the hell is with the snakes? Here you go Proctor San, I thought you'd like this back. Thank you, but, for future reference, don't ever stand behind me if you want to live. She threatened. Sorry, I saw the blood and I got a little, excited. Stated the genin, making Anko nod. Now, in this test, I guarantee that at least half of you won't make it. She said with a grin, holding up two scrolls, one that was white with the kanji for heaven on it, and one that was black with the kanji for earth on it, 
This test is a genin battle royal for these two scrolls. Half of you will get the heaven scroll and half of you will get the earth scroll. Your job is to make it to the tower in less than five days with both. Just so you know, there is no quitting in the middle, you are going to be in the forest for five days, no question about it. Now, in this test, everything is allowed, including killing, just try not to go on a murder spree. Now, you will each be given a form to sign in order to take this exam stating that you are doing this of your own free will and that I'm no longer responsible for you. You have to sign this in order to take the exam because if you don't and you die, I have to do paperwork and that'll make me very angry. She finished cheerfully, making everybody sweat drop at her flippant attitude towards the potential deaths of the genin. What will we do for food? Whined Choji. This is a survival exercise. Find your own food, there's plenty of animals and plants in there. Just make sure to eat them before they eat you. Now, there are three basic rules. One, if you don't make it to the tower with both scrolls, you will be disqualified. Two, if one of your team dies, you will be disqualified. Three, if you open the scroll before you reach the tower, you will be disqualified. Know that sometimes a chunin will be asked to guard classified information, in order to become one, you need to be deemed trustworthy. That's it for explanations, you have a half hour to hand in your forms and pick a gate. One last piece of advice, try not to die, said the proctor, prompting the group to disperse. Inside forest, one hour later, it had been a half an hour since the start of the exams and with no sightings of enemies, Team 7 was getting bored. I still don't believe why you didn't want to give the scroll to Sasuke-kun, Naruto, no one can beat him, so the scroll will be safe with him. Commented Sakura to Naruto, who simply scowled at her attitude. I gotta take a leak. Said Naruto as he walked away into the bushes. Around five minutes later he came back with a rather smug smile, and the team continued on their way. After 15 minutes of traveling, Naruto suddenly stopped, and tilted his head to the left, like he was hearing something. What's wrong Dobi? You scared? Asked Sasuke, still pissed about what Kabuto's card had said about him. But, instead of answering, Naruto took out his Kukutu scroll and opened it. He then went through several hand signs and slammed his palms on the scroll, releasing a large amount, which then formed four clones that ran into the woods. What did you just do Dobi? Asked Sasuke, wondering why he had such a stupid teammate. Well, Tem, when I went to the bathroom earlier, I was attacked by one of the AIM genin. During that time I was, knocked out, and, our scroll, was taken from me. The scroll was actually a cage Bunshin disguised as a scroll, and when he met up with his team, the clone, dot how do I put this delicately, liberated theirs. I simply made those Kukutsu Bunshin, black blood clone, in order to retrieve it. He explained as he put the blood scroll back into his Howry. Liberated, asked Sakura, who was still an idealist, and whose only response was a blank look. Wow Dobi, you actually did something useful. Whatever Tem, I, Naruto began saying, before a massive gust of wind blew him away from the others. When he finally stopped, he was upside down against a tree with a massive and hungry looking snake staring at him. Asterisk sigh I hate this place, he said as he did a shunshun body flicker to escape to a nearby branch barely avoiding the snake's venomous bite, which instead hit the tree and began to dissolve it. I fucking hate snakes, cage bunch and no jutsu, shouted Naruto making a single clone, that then leapt at the snake only to get eaten. Get ready for the worst heartburn you've ever felt you son of a whore, shouted Naruto as he made half the ram sign, causing a white light to shine through the snake before it was torn in half by an explosion and disappeared into a puff of smoke. A summon. I don't know who summons snakes so that doesn't help, but I bet it was whoever made that gust of wind. I should go and help the others, but I'm sure they'll be fine for a minute or two, I can wait for my clones to come back with the scroll and then I'll go and help them, he said to himself as he sat down to wait. About ten minutes later, he was rewarded with the sight of his clones coming back with a slightly bloody heaven scroll. What, you couldn't clean it? Asked the original, getting a shrug from the lead clone. I'm made of blood what the hell do I care? He has a point, it's slightly disturbing, but still a point. True, acquiesced the blonde as he dispelled the clones, and placed the blood back into the containment scroll, 
and placed the heaven scroll into one of the hidden pockets of his howry. Five minutes later, it was a rather disturbing sight that Naruto came across when he finally found his team. Sasuke and Sakura were beaten and bloodied on a branch, while the snake-smelling Kusa Genin stood about ten yards from them. Sizing up the situation quickly, he made two clones, one of whom stayed with Naruto, the other got the Kukutsu scroll and sneaked off to the other side of the clearing. When Naruto heard his clone shout, Kukutsu, Kai ga Kochiku no Jutsu, Kitsune Black Blood, Blood Construct Jutsu, Fox the other two Naruto's jumped to the branch that Sasuke and Sakura were on, making Sakura yell at him. Naruto, what are you doing? That's Orochimaru of the Sanin. He already beat Sasuke-kun. We have no hope of defeating him, we have to get out of here, we have to escape. As she was doing so, the original slammed his hands on the branch, and shouted, Kuchio's no jutsu, summoning jutsu, getting a puff of smoke and a red toad the size of a horse, wearing samurai arm, leg, and shoulder guards as well as a pair of hakama pants, and a sash with a ninjutsu in it. Hello Naruto-kun, wa. No time for conversation now Gamatsuba 8. This is kill or be killed, I'm fighting Orochimaru and I need some oil. Interrupted Naruto, getting a nod from the toad, as all three prepared their jutsu. Kaden. Gamayu Enden, fire style. Toad oil bomb, shouted the Naruto clone, as he started spewing fire. Gamayuden, toad oil bullet, shouted Gamatsuba, spraying out a highly flammable oil. Futon. Gamayu Enden, wind style. Toad oil bomb, shouted the original, as he breathed out a gust of wind. When the three techniques met, they combined into a fiery inferno, turning everything for fifty yards in front of them into a burning hellscape. Did we get him? asked Gamatsuba, when they ended the technique, before his left arm was cut off from behind by Orochimaru and he dispelled. Well, 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 Naruto-kun. I'll admit that Jiraiya has done pretty well with you. Unfortunately, you have to survive in order for Sasuke-kun to advance, so I have to let you live. Now be a good boy and stop interfering, said the Sanin as he punched Naruto in the stomach making the boy vomit blood and collapse on the branch trying to remain conscious. He then turned to Sasuke, and told him while going through hand signs, Now Sasuke-kun, I think it's time for me to give you a little gift. Orochimaru's neck then elongated, shooting towards Sasuke and he sank his fangs into his neck. Fate was not with Orochimaru however as Naruto's brief distracting of the Sanin had allowed him to get his bearings enough to pull of a Kawerimi substitution with the first thing he could in order to escape. This circumstance led to Orochimaru realizing, as the smoke cleared, that he had not bitten Sasuke. Instead, he had sunk his fangs into Uzumaki Naruto. Orochimaru's neck then elongated, shooting towards Sasuke and he sank his fangs into his neck. Fate was not with Orochimaru however as Naruto's brief distracting of the Sanin had allowed him to get his bearings enough to pull of a Kawerimi substitution with the first thing he could in order to escape. This circumstance led to Orochimaru realizing, as the smoke cleared, that he had not bitten Sasuke. Instead, he had sunk his fangs into Uzumaki Naruto. What, the Kayubi brat, damn, I don't have enough chakra to give Sasuke-kun the seal after stealing the faces of those genin the snake genesis rebirth, and now this curse mark. I'm going to have to give it to him at a later date. Well, well, well. It looks like I'm going to have to give you your present at another date. Just remember, if you ever want power, come to me. Said the Sanin, as he sunk into the tree branch and Naruto collapsed, unconscious, as a symbol of three curved lines appeared on his neck. Sasuke then sank down to his knees as Sakura ran to him and checked him for injuries. Sasuke-kun, are you all right? Get away from me, he told her forcefully, as he shoved her away from him. Oh okay Sasuke-kun, she said, as she went to check on Naruto. He's all right, just unconscious. We need to go somewhere we can keep an eye on him while he recovers. Naruto's mindscape, drip, drip, drip. The sound of dripping water made Naruto realize that he was in his mindscape. Realizing this, he decided to visit Kayubi. He then walked through the cave system towards where he knew his tenant's cage to be. However, as he was walking, he noticed that certain parts of the walls and floor had changed. They had started to resemble flesh. As he neared the Kayubi's cage, 
he noticed that he was not the only one there. Hello Naruto-kun, I must say that this is a very interesting place, stated the snake Sanin, who was standing in front of Kayubi's cage, just out of reach, examining the seal, making Naruto go wide-eyed in fear. What the hell are you doing here? He asked, getting a chuckle. Oh, don't worry, I am just a fragment, meant to stay with my servants and slowly subject them to my will. Do you like the changes I've made with the place? Asked Orochimaru, indicating the fleshy surfaces. You sick bastard, how the hell are you changing my mindscape? This place is a place of will. The only reason the Kayubi here hasn't taken over is because of the seal. I however, have no such restrictions. In fact, I have an advantage here due to the seal I gave you. At this point, the man drifted off and examined one of the rocks in the area which had a strange engraving on it in the shape of three curved lines that went in a pinwheel shape, interesting, a cursed seal of earth, just like Kimimaro, one. Anyways, I am free to do whatever I want here. Now that you're here too, it will be easier to make you subservient to me. Now, why don't you be a good boy and just let me look around? Asked the Sanin with a sick grin, ignoring the fox's growling. Get out of my head you twisted fuck. Oh, and here I was hoping to do this peacefully. Said Orochimaru, before he appeared in front of Naruto in a burst of speed and began to beat the genin unmercifully. Orochimaru then proceeded to unleash a devastating combo that Naruto only survived because he wasn't an actual physical body, and with every blow, more and more of the place became flesh. When the pale man stopped, Naruto was a beaten and bloody pulp leaning against a pillar that slowly started to encase him. Well well, that was rather easy, it looks like I have a new servant, stated the smug Sanin, as he watched the genin be encased in flesh. Not yet, Tem, you seem to have forgotten one thing, said Naruto, who was trying not to shudder at the feeling of his hands and feet being incased in the fleshy prison which had started crawling up his shins and forearms. Oh, and what would that be, Naruto-kun, asked the grinning man, we're not the only ones in here. Naruto said simply. When these words registered in the man's mind, his eyes widened, but it was too late as a gigantic claw pierced his abdomen, revealing that Naruto had been sitting against the fox's cage. Kayubi then brought the claw with the struggling Sanin to his face and told him, Normally I hate snakes, since they're so annoying, but I won't deny that they are damn tasty, before shoving the man into his mouth and slowly chewing. Ugh, this guy is so disgusting that I'm getting sick eating him. Dot and that is a literal impossibility. Kayubi told Naruto as the area slowly turned back to its normal cavern appearance. What now Kayubi? Asked Naruto as he freed himself too. How the hell should I know? The only reason I could think of that you're here is that the pedophile did something to you and that's how his, fragment, got here. I think you're still here, though, because your body needs time to recover from its injuries. Now, what are you going to do about that, Earth Seal? of his. After examining the seal for a while, Naruto nodded to himself and told the fox, it's an amplifier. It amplifies everything. Emotions, exhaustion, strength, everything. It looks like there are other things here. I don't know what they do, but I'm certain that now that the snake is gone they're not harmful. I can now use it without fear of anything but being power drunk and chakra exhaustion. So, since I ate the pedophile, this seal is nothing but beneficial. The, fragment, must have been here to slowly convert people's allegiance to the snake. It makes sense to give your servants something that gives them power, but the more they use it, the less free will they have. Although, those with lower chakra reserves will probably hit empty within minutes of activating the thing, but you probably don't need to worry about that thanks to me, said the fox, getting a nod. It continued with Naruto trying to find out more about the seal, bouncing ideas off of the fox. Finally, it was time for him to leave, as he began to feel the pull of consciousness. With one final look at the still half-flesh cave, he realized something and turned to Kayubi. I think I forgot, so I'll say it before I go. Thank you Kayubi, I don't know what I'd do about the, fragment, without you. He said with a smile, as he winked out of existence, catching the fox off guard. Damn brat, I am the Kayubi no Kitsune. You're never thankful around me, you're terrified. Real world, the first thing that Naruto did when he woke up was stand. As he looked around, he saw the three sound genin standing there with Sakura, Lee, 
and Sasuke on the ground, Sakura with several bruises, and Sasuke and Lee bleeding out the ears. Well well well, look who it is. The pedigree. Come over here so I can kill you. Shouted the sound genin with death on his shirt. Zaku. Enough, we're going to kill him, so there's no need to speak with him. Admonished the bandaged sound nin, as he examined Naruto, who was staring at the thick lines going up and down his hands, originating from his left shoulder. Whatever dosu, I, started the now identified Zaku, before getting interrupted by Naruto. Kai Damyuku, blood artery, 3, said the blonde, making smaller and fainter lines appear under his skin before he disappeared. What the hell? Where'd he, started Zaku once again before he felt a strange feeling in his chest. When he looked down, he immediately wished he hadn't, as an arm was sticking out of his chest. The last thing that Zaku saw was the arm exiting his chest. When the boy fell, it was revealed to the terrified crowd to be Naruto behind him with his right arm below his elbow slathered in blood. Damn, that was brutal. I don't really feel remorse either, just. Satisfaction. Must be Orochimaru's leftover taint. Oh well, I'll just finish the job here and we can be on our way. He he killed Zaku. What are we going to do Dosu? Shouted the last member of the auto team, trembling. It's all right Kin, no one is able to withstand my URK. Started Dosu before he was lifted of the ground by his throat by Naruto, who had a blank look on his face, but wide eyes, making him look like he was curious about something and examining it. After about five seconds of watching him struggle, Naruto flexed his hand making a resounding snap go through the forest clearing. P please. Th the scroll is in D Dosu's P pocket. Please, let me go. Begged the terrified girl, panicking at how easily her comrades had been killed. Naruto simply glanced at her before looking back at Dosu's body, which he was still holding in the air. He then nodded, ended his technique, dropped the dead genin, and started going through his belongings, taking all of his kanai and shuriken, explosive notes, all of his scrolls, which included an earth scroll, and even the gauntlet on his arm. He then straightened up and turned to see that the girl had left, and that quite a few more people were in the clearing, all of whom were staring at him in horror. Naruto-kun, are you alright? Asked Tenten, who had appeared, along with her white-eyed teammate and Team Ten. Not really, I still need to do something, he started, before disappearing and reappearing in front of Sasuke. When he got there, he punched Sasuke in the face, then blocked the half-assed retaliatory swing, wrapped his arm under and around Sasuke's so that Sasuke's hand was on his shoulder and his hand was on Sasuke's. He then punched the black-haired teen in the stomach, and when Sasuke bent forwards in response to the punch, he torqued the arm that was around Sasuke's, pushing down on the shoulder and using the arm as a lever, getting a loud pop, as his shoulder was dislocated. Now I'm alright, said Naruto cheerfully as the lines on his body began to recede, and Sasuke screamed and began to clutch at his shoulder while on the ground. And Naruto, I picked this up after you fell unconscious, and I thought you might like it back. Sakura told him, holding out his Kaketsu scroll and glancing between Naruto and Sasuke, wanting to help the Uchiha, but not wanting Naruto to get angry at her as well. Thank you Sakura-chan. Naruto exclaimed cheerfully, as he put the scroll back in its proper place beside the other, and walked away ignoring the bodies and Sasuke groveling on the ground. Sakura then rushed over to the boy and hovered over him, trying to make it look like she was doing something, when she actually had no idea what to do. Why the hell did you do that, Naruto? shouted an irate Yamanaka Ino, as she trembled at the scene she just witnessed. You could have simply knocked them out or something, you didn't have to kill them. I didn't have to kill them. Perhaps not, but they hurt my comrades. Dot and Sasuke. Let me tell you what Jiraiya told me, murder, torture, theft, blackmail extortion, and many more things that would send any normal civilian to jail or daily occurrences for shinobi, and if you can't take it then you need to find a new line of work. What do you mean, and Sasuke, isn't he on your team? That means that he's you comrade too. Observed Choji, before freezing at the look of pure anger Naruto directed at him. That bastard used me as a shield against an S-class missing nin. He is no longer my friend or my comrade, he has to earn that right. Said the blonde icily as he unconsciously activated the curse mark, making the thick line spread from his neck again, before he took a deep breath and they shrank back. I'm sure it was just an accident Naru, started Lee, before he was interrupted. I don't care. That was the last straw. He insults me at least once every half hour, 
He tries to steal my jutsu and clan secrets, he actively tries to harm me in spars, and now this. I am going to request a new team as soon as I next see Gigi, so that no matter what, even if I don't make Chunin, I won't run into him as much. You can say that I'm being stupid, or that I'm being irrational, and you might be right. But I won't be on a team with him. While what he did was unyouthful Naruto-kun, your retaliation was unnecessary. You could have simply told Hokage-sama about it and Sasuke-kun would have been put in a trial. Stated Lee, who then grimaced at the pain he was feeling in his head. Here, Lee, let me fix you up. Said Naruto, as he pulled out a slip of paper. He then began to trace his finger down the cloth, using it as a pen to write a seal. When he was done, he walked up to Lee, and told him to lay down. When Lee complied, he placed the seal on the green boy's sternum and started to channel chakra into it, getting a green glow, instead of the normal blue. I I feel better, Naruto-kun, said Lee, unbelieving that Naruto was using medical jutsu. It's nothing special, just a seal. All of my clan will be able to do it in the future. He said evenly, taking off the seal and placing it in one of his hip pouches. He then turned to Tenten. Do you think you can fix Sasuke? I don't trust myself at the moment not to do more harm than good, he asked getting a nod. The girl then walked over to Sasuke, held out a kanai, and told him to bite down. When he did, she gripped his shoulder and, with another loud, pop, put it back into its socket. Sasuke then lay on the ground for about five more seconds, before getting up. And the first thing he did was rush out and try to punch Naruto out of anger. But just when he was about to, Naruto whirled around and blocked the strike with his palm, shocking all present, and making Sasuke feel like he was punching a brick wall. Kai Jamyaku, blood vein, said the blonde, before he once again punched him in the stomach. Sakura, can you help him out? We need to go to the tower and that idiot may slow us down. S sure Naruto, stammered the terrified girl, going over to Sasuke, only to have him push her away. Get away from me. What do you mean we have to get to the tower Dobi? We lost our original heaven scroll in that fight against Orochimaru, he yelled at Naruto, only to get a sigh. Naruto then revealed that he had both a heaven and an earth scroll. I told you I liberated one from an aim team didn't I? He told his soon to be ex teammate, getting a scowl. Whatever Dobi. Sasuke told him, as he left in the direction of the tower. Someone really needs to give him a reality check, and I hope I'm the one to do it. Naruto mused to himself, wailing off after Sasuke with Sakura trailing behind, arms still slathered in blood. At the tower when they reached the tower, the first thing they noticed were several different sets of doors wrapping around the tower's base. Each doorway had two doors that were shut and had a piece of paper to show whether or not the door had been opened. Picking an unopened door, the three of them entered to find a large and empty room with a plaque on the opposite wall. Without heaven. What does that mean? Wondered Naruto, looking at the plaque. It looks like there are missing words here. They could be telling us to open the scrolls. Said Sakura, making Naruto hand her a scroll. Alright, let's open them up. Said Naruto, who opened his with Sakura following suit half a second later. When they were open, Naruto immediately realized that they were reverse summoning scrolls, and shouted, let go of the scroll, prompting Sakura to do so along with him, making the scrolls land in a curiously perfect, X, shape, before a burst of smoke appeared, revealing Uruka. Congratulations on passing the second stage of the Chunin selection exams, he said cheerfully, before getting glomped by Naruto. Uruka sensei, how are you? Why are you here? Is it over? How are Kihi and Asagao? How is Haku chan? What does that plaque mean? Naruto asked rather rapidly, making Aruka chuckle at his antics and answer to the best of his abilities. I'm fine. I was allowed to greet you to tell you that you passed the second stage, they are fine, and you might see her sooner than you think. As for the plaque, it is the motto of the Chunin, written by Hokage Sama himself. Heaven refers to the brain, and earth refers to the body. When you lack heaven, seek wisdom, be prepared, that's basically saying that if you aren't smart enough, then gain knowledge and prepare yourself for your missions. If you lack earth, run in the fields, seek advantages, which means that if you're weak, the three males then simultaneously looked at Sakura, who had an expression of equal parts sheepish and pissed, then you should train your body. If you have both heaven and earth, then you can succeed at even the most dangerous of missions, he told them seriously. What would have happened had we opened it beforehand? asked Sakura. I would have knocked you all unconscious. 
I must say though, I'm surprised that you guys made it here so quickly. I mean, it's only noon on the second day. You're the fourth team to make it, after Asuna team, one of the Kiri teams, and team 8. He said, shocking the trio that so few had managed to pass. Well, if you'll follow me, I'll show you to your rooms. He said, only to pause when Naruto didn't move. What's the matter Naruto? We need to talk to the Hokage. He told the man, baring his shoulder and showing Aruka his curse mark, getting a terrified look and a nod. Follow me. With the Hokage 25 minutes later. Sasuke and Sakura had just finished explaining their perspectives on what happened since they had entered the forest to Kakashi, the Hokage, and the final two Sanin. Apparently when Naruto had lost consciousness, Sasuke had made Sakura carry him so that he could fend off any threats, when he just didn't want to do it. At camp, at dawn, they were attacked by the Auto team, Sasuke telling Sakura to stay out of it because he had felt that he was more than enough for the weaklings, and proceeded to get his ass handed to him on a gold platter, courtesy of one boy's gauntlet, and the other's wind jutsu. Sakura then tried to fight, only to be taken down within 10 seconds by the female on their team. As she was held by the girl they had heard get called, Kayan, Lee suddenly appeared and pulled Sakura out of the other female's grip. He then fought the rest of the auto team, and, while he fared better than Sasuke, he was still defeated. It was at that point that a disturbing amount of chakra began to exude from Naruto, and he proceeded to slaughter the two boys. They then had their conversation with Team Guy and Team Ten, and left for the tower. I'm a little surprised at you Naruto-kun, I would never have thought you capable of such brutality, but, I would suppose that curse mark would have affected your judgment. But I can't allow your attacking Sasuke to go unpunished. Therefore, when you get back to the village, you will be forced to pay a fine to Sasuke. Said the Hokage, to the shock of everyone but the smug Uchiha though everyone's emotions quickly changed at his next words, and you, Sasuke, I can't have you using comrades as shields, and attacking them, even in retaliation. You will be placed on probation for the next year, and if in that time you so much as hurt another Konoha Shinobi's feelings outside of a spar or sanctioned event, you will be taken off the roster and have your chakra sealed away. With these words, Sasuke snarled at the man, releasing a surprising amount of ki, before he left the office, doing his best to break the door on his way out. Now, Sakura-chan, would you please leave the room? Asked the old man, though everybody knew that it wasn't a request. When she did so, the first thing that Hiruzen asked was to see the curse mark, making Naruto remove his top, showing his shoulder to the adults. Interesting, it's different than Anko's. Mused Jiraiya, though he immediately got back to the issue, we have to seal it immediately so that it doesn't affect you. Said the man who was then taken aback by the response. I can't let you do that, Aero Sanin, said Naruto, surprising all of the adults. He then waited until they calmed down to explain himself. The corrupting aspect of the seal has already been taken care of. He finished, then told them all what happened in his mindscape. So what you're saying is that you went into your mind, found a fragment of Orochimaru's soul, fought it, got your ass kicked, and were about to become his servant, before the Kyubi ate him, and now all that happens is that you're more sadistic and get exhausted easier when you use that thing? Asked Kakashi, getting a nod from Naruto. So that explains it, mused Jiraiya, making everybody look curiously at the super pervert. The reason they're so hard to get rid of is the fact that they contain a soul fragment. It would explain why it kills so many of its wielders and why it causes so much pain on occasion. Naruto, since you won't suffer any ill effects from using it, may I examine yours at some point and time? He asked getting Naruto to nod. Naruto then hardened his resolve and dropped a bombshell on the assembled group. I request that Sasuke or me get taken off Team 7. WH what? Why? Asked a visibly shaken Kakashi, never having expected something like that. Because, Sasuke and I will never get along, he abuses me verbally, and attempts to do so physically, he tries to steal my jutsu and clan secrets, and now he pulls this. This team was doomed from the start. Maybe if I had never met Kayubi, I wouldn't care, but that changed me. I'm no longer the idiot who let people walk all over him. Naruto replied heatedly, leaving no room for argument. Very well Naruto, I hope you don't mind, but I'm removing you from Team 7 and placing you under an apprenticeship with Jiraiya, effective immediately. Said the aged Hokage, getting a nod from Naruto, Tsunade, and Jiraiya and stuttering disbelief from Kakashi. Now that that's settled. How about we go somewhere that we can examine that seal of yours? Asked Jiraiya, 
getting a nod from Naruto. Tower in the Forest, main arena end of Chunin exam's second stage. It had been a very eventful few days, with Naruto talking with the other Konoha competitors. He wasn't able to talk to Haku, who he learned was there with Tsunade, though, as they had both been busy. He also spent time finding out who had made it to the tower, eating the terrible food provided, and helping Jiraiya research the seal. He also chuckled at the memory of Sasuke's attempts to get Jiraiya to teach him instead of Naruto. Flashback no Jutsu Naruto was having a pleasant conversation about his future training and his cursed seal, which he couldn't seem to use after that first time, with Jiraiya, when Sasuke suddenly came up to them. Train me. Demanded the boy so suddenly that it took a few seconds for the two of them to realize what he said. Sorry brat, I only teach one at a time, and the gaki here is my apprentice. Replied the man lightheartedly, getting a scowl from Sasuke. If that's a problem, then stop teaching the dobi. If you can actually make the dead last half decent, then imagine what you can do with an elite. I said no brat, now go do something else. Go ask your sensei for training if that's what you want. Jiraiya once again tried to make Sasuke go away, but only succeeded in pissing the boy off further. My sensei is not a sanin, you are. I am an Uchiha, who better to teach me than one of you? Asked Sasuke, struggling to keep his temper in check after the conversation he had with the Hokage. This is the last time I'll say it. No if you want a sanin to train you, you're better off asking Tsunade, though I'll doubt she'll do it considering she's training that Haku girl. Why would I want her to teach me anything anyways? I'm a ninja, not a medic. I need jutsu so I can kill my brother, said Sasuke, his voice almost loud enough to be a yell. Watch your tone Uchiha. If I wanted to teach you, I would, but I don't. Not now, not ever. Now, be a good little boy and go ask your sensei to train you like I just said. My apprentice and I have things to discuss. With this, Sasuke simply glared death at the man for about 10 seconds before he stormed off muttering about useless old men. Flashback no jutsu. Kai 7 teams were present and in single file lines, Team 7, Team 8, Team 10, Team Guy, Kabuto's team, the Suna team with the Jinchuriki, and the Kiri team that applauded Naruto in the first stage. First off, Mitarashi Anko said, drawing everyone's attention to the space in front of the small crowd. Behind her, Naruto could see people that he presumed to be the Jonin sensei of the teams that passed, Ibiki, Haku, the Hokage, and the Sanin. I'd like to say this. Congratulations on passing the second test. You've all done well. So now, I pass on the torch to Hokage-sama. He will explain the third test. Nodding, the Hokage walked over and stood where Anko had been standing. Before I explain the test, there is something that I'd like you all to know. It concerns the true reason for this exam. Why do we have allied countries taking the exams together? The answers that are most often given are to promote friendship among the countries and raise the level of shinobi. I don't want you to be confused about the true meaning. The exam is a replacement for war among the allied countries. If you go back in time, the current allies were enemies who fought each other over who would rule. In order to prevent wasteful fighting, the Chunin exams were made into an international event, Hiruzen said. I thought this was about becoming Chunin, Sakura said. It is a fact that who becomes Chunin is dependent on the Chunin exams, but the exam has another side where each country's shinobi risks their own lives to protect their land's prestige. Watching this third exam will be leaders and influential individuals from many countries who make up the clients of shinobi. The leaders of the countries will be there to watch each of your battles. If the strength of a country is clear, then that country will receive more clients. Conversely, if the weakness of S country is clear, then that country will lose clients. This will signal to potential enemy countries that our country has this much power, so it will send a political message to the outsiders, Hiruzen said. But why do we have to risk our lives in battle? Tamari asked. The strength of the country is the strength of the village. The strength of the village is the strength of the shinobi. And a shinobi's true strength is born only through life risking battles. This exam is a place to see each country's strength and to show off your own strength. It only has meaning because lives are at risk, and that's why those that have come before you have fought in the Chunin exams for this dream. That is meaningful, Hiruzen said. But why do you say stuff about it being for friendship then? Tenton asked. I said it in the beginning. I don't want you to confuse the purpose of this. By losing life and establishing balance, that is the shape of friendship in the world of the shinobi. Before we begin the third test, 
I will tell you one more thing. This is not just a test. This is a life risking battle with your dreams and your country's prestige on the line, Hirazan said. Can we get on to the life risking battles now? Gara asked. Yes, I'd like to explain the third test, but, Hirazan said. Actually, I am sorry, Lord Hokage, from here on as the proctor, will you allow me to explain everything? A sick looking special Jonin said, coughing occasionally. By all means, Hirazan said. Hello, everyone, I am Gekko Hayate and I will be the proctor of the third test. Before the test, I would like to do something. What? Kiba asked. It's a preliminary round for the third test to decide who gets to participate in the main event, Hayate said. Preliminary? What do you mean? Shikamaru asked. Why can't all the people here participate in the next test? Sakura asked. The first and second tests have been far too easy this year, we have a bit too many people remaining. According to the rules of the Chunin exams, we have to have a preliminary round to reduce the number of participants for the third test. As Lord Hokage mentioned earlier, there will be guests at the third test, so we are limited in time to have the fights. Hayate said. So anyways, those who aren't feeling well and those who feel like quitting after hearing these explanations, please step forward now. We will be starting the preliminary round immediately. At this point, Kabuto raised his hand and said, I'd like to leave. I still haven't recovered from that attack from the sound team. Getting a nod from Hayate. As he left, no one but the Junin saw Ibiki grin and leave as well. We can begin the preliminary then. This preliminary will consist of one on one fighting. You will basically fight as in a real life confrontation. Since we now have 20 entrants, we will conduct 10 matches. The winners will advance to the third test, Hayate said. There are basically no rules. The fight continues until one of you dies, is knocked out, or admits defeat. If you don't want to die, then quickly acknowledge your defeat. If I decide that the winner has been clearly established though, I will jump in to stop things. We don't want to pointlessly increase the amount of corpses after all. And the object that controls your destiny is, this electronic scoreboard. It will show the matchups for each battle. Now, let's announce the two names for the first fight. An electronic scoreboard was revealed above the statue of the ram hand sign that was behind him. Yamanaka Ino versus Umiko, would everyone but the competitors please go to the balcony, so that we may begin. When everybody did as they were asked, leaving Ino and the female Kiri Nin in the pit, Naruto quickly moved to talk to Haku, who was standing by Tsunade and Jiraiya, who giggled every now and then during their conversation, writing in his little notebook, before it was taken away from him by Tsunade and destroyed at which point he cried like a five-year-old for about three seconds before whipping out another one and doing the same. How have you been Haku? He asked. Haku then looked at Tsunade, glanced at the woman's hands and feet, and shivered. I'm fine, Naruto-kun. How have you been? I've been wonderful Haku-chan, can you tell me how Kihi and Asagao are? They are doing fine. Konohamaru-kun seems to be influencing Kihi though. Since he skipped class twice, she replied getting a dark mumble from Naruto, which in turn caused Kihi to shiver somewhere in the village and rush back to the academy for some reason, ignoring Konohamaru's question of where he was going. Haku then turned to the lower level, where the fight was about to begin and asked, who do you think is gonna win? This caused Naruto to fully look at the girl, who stood at around 5 feet tall and was rather well muscled. She had short brown hair, green eyes, and a rather round face. In regards to her clothing, she was wearing a rather loose long-sleeved light blue top, brown shorts that went past her knees, and several belts all of which held some kind of weapon, whether a wakazashi, a tanto, or just a kanai pouch, as well as a bandolier of around seven throwing knives around her chest like a sash. Umiko, no doubt. If I know Ino, she'll be like Sakura, and only train when her team does so, so she doesn't get dirty. He told Haku, getting nods from everyone in earshot. Hajime. Wap Thud, 4, Winner, Umiko, told you. Lee vs. Sarugi Masumi, Yahoo Gai Sensei, I will win this match and prove my youthfulness, 5, and my Nindo to the world, screamed Lee as he jumped down to the arena, followed by Kabuto's teammate. The match was rather interesting, with Sarugi catching Lee in a weird chokehold, only for the green boy to break out of his hold and proceed to beat the boy into unconsciousness with several kicks to the head and gut after Guy told him he could take off his weights. Subaku no Tamari vs Abirame Shino this fight, in Naruto's opinion, was extremely boring. 
Whenever Shino attempted to send his bugs to attack Tamari, she would simply use her fan to blow them away and cut them to ribbons. She eventually got in a lucky hit with her jutsu, and sent Shino into a wall, effectively knocking him unconscious. Gara vs Akado Yoroi When the proctor signaled the start of this match, Yoroi rushed at the Suna Jinchuriki, and when the sand rose up to defend him, Yoroi simply raised his hand and took out all the chakra from within, making it fall to the ground uselessly, startling the Suna team and allowing Yoroi to lay his hand on Gara. When this happened, Yoroi's hands turned from the traditional blue, to a sickening yellow. Gara then pushed the Konoha Nin away with his sand and held his head in pain. You. You tried to take mother away. Mother wants your blood. He screeched, before he flooded the arena with sand, catching Yoroi, before crushing his hands, then his legs, then his arms, and then finally killing him, greatly disturbing everyone, getting a 10 minute break while the blood was cleaned up and people got their nerves back under control. Hayuga Hanada vs Hayuga Neji This fight had barely started before Hanada quit, though everybody noticed that she did so when she noticed that Naruto wasn't even looking at her, and was instead caught up in talking to Haku again. Nara Shikamaru vs Haruno Sakura I wonder who'll win this one, the civilian with a few parlor tricks, or the lazy genius? commented Naruto, making everyone within earshot look at him with various emotions. What the hell do you mean, civilian with a few parlor tricks? asked Sakura, pissed at what the dead last was saying about her. Just what I said, Sakura. My eight year old siblings have more chakra than you, both know more jutsu than you, I'm pretty sure Kihi is physically stronger than you. Asagao has the same level as chakra control as you, and they've only been able to access their chakra for a few months. Quite frankly, I'd rather go on missions with them, than with you. He told her, every syllable running a proverbial stake through her, until she was laying on the ground with a storm cloud over her head, as somewhere staring at her, and a few at Kakashi, with disappointment, and at Naruto with incredulity. Proctor. I'd like to forfeit, she said wearily, as Shikamaru, sighed, glad that he didn't have to do anything to win his fight, and that he could sleep since his turn was over. Akamichi Choji v's Subaku no Konkuro, if you win, I'll buy you all the meat you can eat. Asuma bribed his genin, getting a loud shout of, meat, from the boy as he jumped down to the arena along with the black clad boy from Suna. Are you ready? asked the proctor, getting nods, Hajime. Well it looks like I'm going to win said the Suna boy arrogantly, I wanted to fight that blonde bastard or the stuck-up Uchiha, but I get stuck with a fat ass. At this point Team 10 were completely silent, three of them sweating, and one of them with their eyes downcast as the slowly simmered in their rage. I. I. I'm not fat you bastard, I'm pleasantly plump. Screamed Choji as he placed his hands together in a ram seal, Ninpo. Baika no Jutsu, Ninja Art. Multi-size Jutsu. With this, Choji was enveloped in a cloud of smoke and when it cleared, he looked like a large ball with limbs and a head. He then withdrew himself so that he was a perfectly round ball of Akamichi. Nakudan Sensha, human bullet tank. He then shot towards the Suna Nin, causing Konkuro to simply jump away repeatedly while throwing Kanai at the plump boy, though they were knocked away by the air current created by his rapid spinning. This continued for around five minutes until Konkuro had his back to the wall. Choji then struck the wall when his enemy jumped away, creating a rather large dust cloud. After about five seconds of waiting for the dust to settle, Choji came barreling out of the cloud, startling Konkuro, who jumped away, but accidentally dropped the wrapped bundle on his back, which Choji then ran over. Not even half a second after that happened though, Choji suddenly puffed back into his normal appearance with an extremely pained look and a kanai in his stomach. He must have impaled himself on one of the Karasu's, crow puppet, Kanai when he ran it over. I'm surprised that he only got stuck with one, considering how much crap is in that chunk of wood. Mused Tamari out loud, making everyone look at her. As it looks like Akamichi Choji can no longer compete, winner is Subaku no Konkuro, said Hayate, after about three minutes. Looks like I win, fat ass, said Konkuro as he walked up to Choji, making everybody wonder what he was doing. Here, the antidote to the poison on the kanai. He said, placing a small vial on the ground next to the boy, my old man will be pissed if I cause an incident. He then picked up his puppet's remains and went back to his original place in line as the medics looked after Choji, with Tsunade going as well, leaving Haku and Naruto where they were. Uchiha Sasuke vs Inazuka Kiba, Yahoo it looks like we get to have some fun Akamaru. 
Finally we get to put the Uchiha in his place, shouted Kiba as he made his way to the arena. If by, my place, you mean standing above you where you can like my boots, then yeah, I'll gladly take my place, said Sasuke coldly as he too made his way down, before getting stopped by Kakashi. Don't use ninjutsu, you're in enough trouble as it is without seriously harming another comrade, he said, making Sasuke scowl at him, but nod. When the match began, the first thing that Sasuke did was activate his Sharingan as Kiba went into his Beastman mode. Normally, I would use the claws Naruto gave me, but I promised Sensei I wouldn't against a Konoha Nin, so I'll just do this the old fashioned way, Suga, passing Fang, said Kiba as he began to rotate so quickly that he formed a small tornado. He then began to attack, but Sasuke's Sharingan allowed him to effortlessly dodge the dog loving boy. Hold still, damn it, shouted Kiba angry that he was missing his target. He then stared Sasuke in the eyes, and immediately regretted it when the boy's Sharingan began to spin, indicating a Genjutsu. Kiba quickly bit his hand, drawing blood and breaking the Genjutsu before it truly started, but it was too late since Sasuke had closed the distance and kicked Kiba in the chest, sending him flying back, then whirled around and punched Akamaru, who had jumped to bite the Uchiha towards his master, getting a heart-wrenching yelp. Akamaru. You bastard, you'll pay for that, shouted Kiba, giving Akamaru a small pill that made his fur grow red, before going down onto all fours, with Akamaru jumping on his back. Jujin Bunshin, man beast clone, continued Kiba, getting a puff of smoke and a perfect copy of himself. The two Kibas then ran towards Sasuke before they both did the same attack, Gatsuga, Fang passing Fang, creating two horizontal tornadoes that, once again, Sasuke dodged but this time with a little difficulty. Why won't you hold still? Asked Kiba as the two of them broke off their attacks. Let's see how you dodge this, shouted the boy, as he pulled out two smoke bombs, before he and Akamaru once again rushed to attack. It was this time that Sasuke was unable to see what was going on so he was unable to dodge, making it easy for the two Kibas to attack, and finally hit, him. Yeah, we got him screamed Kiba at the top of his lungs as they stopped their attack to see what had happened. When the smoke finally cleared, it allowed a shocked audience to see a slightly beat up Sasuke with blood coming out of his mouth and a rather large bruise on his left arm. That all you got kibbles? asked the Uchiha, as he once again looked Kiba in the eye. It's enough to beat you, you bastard, retorted the boy as he once again went on the attack with smoke bombs and Akamaru, though this time Sasuke seemed able to see though the smoke. What? How is he doing that? I'm only able to find him through my nose. How is he able to dodge my attacks? Kiba wondered to himself, before he stopped his attack, and decided to rush Sasuke while still within the smoke, ignoring Akamaru's frantic, barking, six. Fate was not on his side however, when Sasuke suddenly kicked Kiba into the air, he then appeared behind Kiba and unleashed a taijutsu combo on the boy, before kicking him to the ground, where he became unable to move, barely holding on to consciousness, a move that Sasuke had dubbed, Shishi Renden, Lion's Barrage. H how did you do that? There was no way you could have seen me in that smoke, yelled Kiba from his place on the ground. I put you into another genjutsu when you looked me in the eye the last time. There never was any smoke, I was just waiting for the opportune moment, responded Sasuke, walking away as he was declared the winner. Hazuka Kenji vs Tenten the team from Suna all made it to the finals, it would be most youthful if a full team from Konoha went as well. Do your best Tenten, and I know you'll do as proud, shouted Guy, as he grinned and gave Tenten a thumbs up, a sparkle appearing from both his tooth and thumb. As soon as the match began, Tenten jumped back a few feet, getting in a position where she could attack or defend at a moment's notice, much to her sensei's approval, and examined her opponent. He was about three inches taller than her, but scrawny, had purple eyes, white hair, and was wearing beige khaki shorts, from which hung several water bottles, with a form-fitting sleeveless purple top. I don't know what this guy does, so it's best to play it safe and keep my distance, thought Tenten, before she was forced to backpedal as her opponent Bull rushed her. As he charged her, she began to throw several different weapons at him, all of which he dodged, until he was around three yards from her, where she nailed him between the eyes, making Kenji dissipate into a puddle of water. A clone? When did he pull that off? Where is he? Were the frantic thoughts of Tenten as she began to look around for her temporary enemy. 
When she had turned her back in order to look for Kenji, the white-haired teen suddenly formed out of the puddle and once again charged Tenten. Thinking he was just another clone, she simply slashed at his chest and went back to searching, only to be shocked as he reformed once again and began repeatedly punching her in the face and stomach. What's going on? What is this technique? If it was a clone, then it would have dispelled when I attacked it. Thought Tenten, before she got over her shock enough to begin striking back, slashing a kanai across Kenji's throat this time, once again getting a puddle of water before it, once more, reformed into Kenji. I bet you're wondering, what is this technique? It's my clan's Suika no Jutsu, hydration technique, with it, I'm able to transform any part of my body to water at will, making physical attacks all but useless. From what I can tell, you're a weapons master, considering your use of the mirrors in the first test, and the fact that you've only used weapons against me. I'm your worst possible opponent. Something like that is possible, was the combined thought of pretty much every person who hadn't heard about the Nidame Mizukage. Damn, I don't know if I can beat this guy. I don't have any explosive tags or elemental jutsu or any jutsu at all besides the Academy 3. All I have is a bunch of scrolls filled with my weapons. Damn, Guy Sensei said only training with my weapons would come back to haunt me. There's no way I can beat this guy except, maybe catching him off guard, but that ability of his makes that impossible. Proctor San, I forfeit as I can't possibly win this match. Tenton told Hayate getting a nod of understanding from everyone present, including Tsunade, who had reappeared about halfway through the match. Now would the final two competitors please make your way down? Uzumaki Naruto vs Akabino Sora. I hope that this battle can stand up to the last few. Mused Kakashi to himself, getting nods from the people in earshot. When the match began, Naruto took the time to analyze his opponent, who, as it turned out, was the one who sat next to Naruto in the first test. Sora was a rather broad teen with brown hair in a topknot, a rather large nose, small blue eyes, and was wearing black pants, a short-sleeved brown shirt, bandages around his neck like Zabuza, and had tattoos that Naruto could tell were storage seals on his right palm. I'm going to have to repay you for taking my things in the first exam, Naruto Senpei. He said grinning, showing his teeth to be sharpened, and confusing everyone who heard him. Why did you call me Senpei? Asked Naruto. You beat me in a contest, I don't care if it was just poker, you still beat me, so I called you senpei. Explained Sora, getting a slight sweat drop from everybody except Guy and Lee, who found it, youthful. Well that's not weird or anything, remarked the Kayubi sarcastically. Sora then charged at Naruto, swinging a left hook aiming at Naruto's throat, which he ducked. Naruto then blocked a follow-up right with his forearm, then lurched forwards in a headbutt which was dodged. Sora then went for another right, which was dodged, then used the momentum to spin around and land a roundhouse left on Naruto's face. When he got back up, Naruto took out one of his kaketsu scrolls, opened it and started going through hand signs. When he finished he slammed his hands down on it, saying, Kaketsu Cage Bunshin, Black Blood Shadow Clone, 7. Making another Naruto appear out of the scroll. He then rolled it up and placed it back into his haori and stood next to his copy. Kai Jamyaku, Blood Vein, said the original. Kai Damyaku, Blood Artery, said the clone at the same time, lines appearing on both their bodies, under the skin, though the Jonin and above saw that the lines formed different patterns on each. With that, the Naruto clone ran to attack the brunette, with the original not far behind. The clone then jumped up and attempted to punch Sora, only for Sora to dodge, making the clone hit the ground, forming a rather large crater. How long has he been able to do that? Crap, I can't get hit by that, I'll have to take it out. Thought Sora, as he tried to punch the clone away in order to make some room for himself, only to be blocked by the original Naruto, making him feel like he just punched a brick wall, though he did manage to get away. Sora then channeled Chakra into his palm, getting a puff of smoke, and a gasp from those watching. That's the Kabutowari. Is he one of the Shinobi Gatana Shichinen Shu, seven ninja swordsmen? Asked a shocked Kakashi, getting Naruto. Haku, and all the Jonin to widen their eyes in shock. Sora grinned again as he hefted a rather strange weapon. Well, that's not the right word, he hefted a rather strange pair of weapons, a huge axe and hammer that were connected at the bottom of each by a strap. That's right. This is the Kabutowari, the helm splitter, the blunt sword, the sword that has the greatest offense of the seven, capable of crushing any and all defense. I got it after my uncle, Akabino Jinin died. 
he trained me in its use since before I could walk, 8. With that, Sora charged at Naruto again and began swinging at Naruto, the clone backing away to wait for the opportune moment, and the real one dodging and parrying. It wasn't until Sora got a lucky overhead swing in that something interesting happened. Naruto, seeing no other choice, blocked the attack with his right forearm, shocking everyone present, before Sora grinned, and smashed the hammer into the axe half. For about half a second, nothing happened, then the axe began to dig into Naruto's arm, cutting through it and his haori. Naruto, realizing the danger, shoved his arm to the side, redirecting the attack and getting Sora off balance, then punched the boy in the stomach with his left fist. After that, the clone started to viciously attack the brunette, buying the original time to make a cage bunshin, shadow clone, and for it to start healing his arm along with the Kyubi. I understand those techniques now. The one your clone is using is a pure offense technique meant to boost attack power to the max, while the one you're using is a defensive ability meant to increase your resistance to attacks. However, the offensive one leaves you vulnerable and the defensive one leaves you weak, and you can't use them both at the same time, thus the clone. If they were the same, then I would be paced right now, and you wouldn't have been forced to make that clone, showing that it's two separate abilities. Your abilities are quite terrifying aren't they, Naruto Senpei? Asked a grinning Sora as he exchanged swings with the clone. He then did an overhead swing with the hammer, striking the ground, shaking it and making the clone stumble enough for Sora to hack through it with the axe end, making it dissolve into a puddle of blood, which the second Naruto clone, who had finished healing Naruto's arm, began to manipulate trying to keep the boy moving. Damn, with that weapon and his skill with it, I have to end this quickly. I don't want to kill him, so that rules out my swords, the kaketsu, my wind just you, and my summons. I would try and trap him, but that sword would probably let him escape, and makes it impossible to use taijutsu. I've never used seals in battle before, so I'd like some practice first so I don't do anything permanent, so that rules that out. The only thing I can think of is a low-powered Rasengan spiraling sphere. The original then ended his Kai Jamyaku, as it took up a lot of concentration and began to focus chakra into his right hand. When it was finished, Naruto did a one-handed shunshin, body flicker, appearing behind Sora, catching him off guard, and slammed the technique into his opponent's spine. With that, Sora was sent flying, before he hit the wall and slid down it unconscious. Winner, Uzumaki Naruto said Hayate, as Tsunade took Sora away to be treated, as Sasuke seethed at Naruto's new found strength. With this, the preliminaries are finished, will the winners please reassemble in front of me? asked Hayate, as all of the winners headed back down to the arena. Once they had all been assembled, the Hokage, Jiraiya, Tsunade, Haku, Anko and Hayate all stood in front of them as Hayate spoke, to those of you who have earned the right to compete in the finals, congratulations to you all he said before turning to the Hokage, Hokage-sama, if you will, he asked with a wave of his hand. Let me explain the third test, as I said before, these matches will be seen by many important people, as such I want you all to fight to the best of your abilities. This is also to show off for your countries, which is why the finals will be in one month. This break allows you preparations that these preliminaries did not compensate for, the Hokage said as the genin listened carefully. This time is used, not only for yourselves in the capabilities of fighting against your opponents but also so that we can inform the right figures and have them all travel here. This time allows for you to know yourself and your enemy. Before this, you fought with no comprehension of your opponent's ability, now you have information and your own observation to calculate into your fights. Of course, there are those who have shown everything they can do to you and those who have hidden their potential, this month is to allow for you to rest or improve so your fights can be the best show that our clients wish to see the Hokage said as he took a deep breath of his pipe. Now then, let us decide the order of the finals, please take a piece of paper from the box that Anko-san is holding. The Hokage said as Anko stepped forward and stopped in front of each genin, allowing them to pick their piece of paper. Please tell me your number, starting with you, Anko said as she pointed at Lee, who was at the end of the line. 5. Said Lee. 6. Konkuro answered. 7. Said Tamari. 4. Gara answered. 2. Said Neji. 3. Said Umiko. 1. Said Naruto. 10. Said Kenji. 8. Said Shikamaru. 9. Said Sasuke as he held the last paper up. The Hokage nodded, very well. Anko san please show them their matchups. He asked. 
Anko then held out a clipboard showing the matches. Match 1. Uzumaki Naruto vs. Hyuga Neji Match 2. Umiko vs. Subaku no Gara. Match 3. Rock Lee vs. Sabaku no Konkuro Match 4. Tamari vs. Nara Shikamaru. Match 5. Uchiha Sasuke vs. Hazuka Kenji Match 6. Match 1 Winner vs. Match 2 Winner. Match 7. Match 3 Winner vs. Match 4 Winner. Match 8. 3 Way. Match 5 Winner vs. Match 6 Winner vs. Match 7 Winner. With this you are all dismissed, but are there any final questions? The Hokage asked. Since this is a tournament, does that mean only one person becomes a chunin? Shikamaru asked immediately. No, this tournament is judged by multiple judges. Myself, Kei's Cage Dono, and some of our clients are a few to name. If someone is determined to possess the qualities in which we believe declares them fit to be a chunin, then that person will be promoted even if they lose in their first match. The Hokage answered. So, that means we could all become chunin, Tamari stated. Or none of you. The Hokage countered, to continue in the finals means you get more chances to impress the judges. He said, if that is all. The Hokage waited a few more moments, then you were all dismissed until a month from now. He said as the genin then filed out of the room, their teams meeting up with their teammates as the genin left to prepare. To be continued. If we hit 200 likes, then we will post part 2. Also remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.